It is Championship Sunday here at CWL Anaheim, presented by the PlayStation 4, bringing you guys coverage, of course, here from the Bravo stage. Myself, Lando, as well as Fox, getting ready to guide you guys through a loser's bracket matchup taking place between Opti Gaming and Rise Nation. Yes, this is an elimination match. These are two teams that have made it all the way through to the last day of the tournament. Opti Gaming has been undefeated in map count up until their matchup against Luminosity, which is where they found themselves here facing off against Rise for their tournament life on the line. So we're going to take you through a quick walkthrough of some of the maps in this series. Indeed, of course, our first map going to be taking place on Scorch for some hard point. Map number two will be Throwback Search and Destroy. For map number three, Precinct Uplink. And if it comes down to it, Throwback Hard Point for map number four. And if it comes down to that very, very intense game five, it will be Retaliation Search and Destroy. But let's go and talk about our first map, Fox. When it comes down to Scorch Hard Point, what should we be expecting as far as how this map kind of plays? And what are some players to be looking at based on how this map plays for either side, Optic and Rise? Well, really, all eyes have to be on the side of Formal and Scump for Optic Gaming. Right now, we've seen Formal transitioning from that NV4 roll over to the K-Bar, letting Crim6 take that NV4 roll. They felt that it made more sense and that he was the more aggressive player and that he would have more uh, versatility to do what he would like to do. And you have Scump, one of the best submachine gun players of all time, right? Oh, yeah. The E-Rat on a map like this, that's going to be devastating. Absolutely. Well, of course, we do need to highlight some of the players from Rise Nation. Definitely be looking at Aqua. I think it's fair to say this guy has been slaying out for his squad, not just for this tournament, but throughout the entire season of Infinite Warfare. Facento has been putting up some big numbers along with Felony as well. So we'll see if Rise Nation can try and hold on to what should be a very heavily slaying heavy battle between both of these squads. It's time to load in, and we're going to hop on board with the Ginger Ninja himself, Scott to round out this game number one. Yeah, and this Optic Gaming roster, up until recently, uh, they're not used to playing from that loser's bracket, right? There have been teams such as Luminosity Gaming and E United finally coming up and challenging them, and now we're seeing Rise Nation, another, another roster that was able to challenge them quite a bit last year in Black Ops 3, facing off here at CWO Anaheim. The kills are opening up in favor of Optic. Scump coming through with the NV4 is actually being a difference maker here on Middle Map, and now all that's left is to read where the new spawns from Rise Nation are coming from. They're pouring in from K and the warehouse on to mid. Funny watching through the wall runs, of course, trying to advance their position scoreless so far. Just as I say, that Rise Nation finally able to at least get a few seconds on the board. Facento now trying to lock down some time, but Skunk come, fires actually back with two quick kills. And it looks like there's going to be a team fight won there by the side of Rise Nation, but only for the time being, as rotation will start to go back toward Turbine. It's going to be the side of Opti Gaming, who's currently in possession of those spawns. So Skump starts this game off 4-0. That's going to award him a Scarab here, and you see him in position, still running that NV4 off the break. He has yet to switch that class, finding lots of initial kills here. The aggression comes in onto Elbow, and he's overwhelmed by the high-flying players of Rise Nation. Yeah, very smart play there from Rise Nation, working as a unit to try and take down the side of Optic Gaming. They're going to have to use that quite a bit if they want to take down this particular squad. Scump running from the skies yet again, this time with an e rad in hand, not going to play too much favor toward him. And now Crim6 challenging in a one-on-two gunfight, not going to work out. Rise Nation doing a great job at singling out every Optic player there. Yeah, so that was a really good push from them. They hit that high wall run, but then they also sent some players coming low. So Scump can't target all of them at once, especially with different levels of elevation. Really tough gunfight to win, especially when you're outnumbered. So let's see how Optic Gaming ops the push this. It looks like with this, just, just this little bit of time left, they're actually going to give it up to Rise Nation and try and rotate over to the big 60 hardpoint. That is the hangar here on the top right corner of your mini-map. They'll be met by only one Rise Nation player. That's going to be Facento, who's trying to sit in a corner and stay alive, but Karma catches them, and that's going to leave them a little staggered and give Optic Gaming a bit more time on this new hill. And Optic does, like you said, have that rotation here over toward hangar. I noticed that Felony Curling sitting on that four spree. Aqua as well had that a uh, little bit of a force spree going in his way also. So they are going to have some streaks to work with if they want to try to use those to break this particular hard point. It would be the time to do it. Formal shutting down Felony through hallway. It looks like the rotation coming toward the back. That's actually going to be the Rise Nation player starting the final end. But Scump's holding his angle toward the back. Great start here from Scump. Being able to use both the MV4 and ERAD. I mean, two completely different weapons, and it seems to not really be making him struggle at all. Right, we're seeing Opti Gaming with their attempt on a big 60 hard point. So far, they have been unbreakable in their setup. Rise Nation, they're trying to push in from the front, but you see the green wall is just too strong. They can't break through it. And now the last player in hallway has to wait for his final teammates to spawn up from security and push with him. But he dies alone. So again, we have Rise Nation on another staggered push into an Optic Gaming setup. 
And when I did cast over Rise Dation, uh, actually earlier on in this tournament, this is a hill where they held almost perfectly, holding it down inside a drill. There's been a few teams who have kind of been doing a great job at locking down hard points that aren't always the expected ones. When it comes down to the money hills, of course, you expect squads to be holding those down. Those were heavily contested. We've actually seen teams like Rise Dation, like FaZe and E United as well, have done a great job at kind of holding those off hills. And we'll see what Rise Dation can try and do, holding down some of the early seconds and trying to get back in this game. Scarabs, everything used, but no, Optic is forcing their way on. Karma being one of the front lines. He'll drop oh. quick, but three go down for the side of Rise Nation, and it looks like it's going to be player number eight. That's going to be Facento trying to hold the line for his squad for as much as possible, but Scump is there for the challenge, and Optic Gaming now with a little bit of a lead. More streaks become, beginning to come down this time from Felony. So that was a three-on-three -three gunfight right there. Rise Nation was set up well on top of Drill, but Optic Gaming didn't care and came straight through with a very clean break. Rise Nation off the spawn. You can see they're fighting back a bit here because they're spawning towards Turbine. That's the favorable side for this hill, so they do have a bit of an advantage. Still, Optic Gaming finds himself leading by about 10 seconds, and Rise is looking to close that gap. And Rise getting very close to taking the lead right now. Of course, constant flanks and a great pinch coming in there from both Felony and Looney throughout that hard point, of course, as we get ready to reset here back toward that middle bridge. It will be a slim advantage for the side of Rise Nation. About five or six Ooh. points at that could definitely be changed in a matter of moments. Thought he was going to win that gunfight there, but Skump getting the better of him. Karma and Skump pushing that E-Red pressure towards mid, but they're actually going to back up a little bit. He feels the Rise Nation push coming, and being outnumbered, you see Looney there is able to find the double kill with the supporting cast of two Rise Nation players just next to him. Felony still has access to the Scarab. No reason to use it just yet. They're still trying to establish some kind of map control here, and Aqua dies as soon as he gets into the engagement. GD does. Optic Gaming players trying to force the issue forward right now. It looks like it's not going to be working out for them toward the best as far as the spawns are considered. Of course, 20 seconds going down when it comes down toward bridge. And they could actually even tie this game up. But like we said, player number one, that's going to be Crim6. And a pretty decent angle player just to his right. Question, can he win the gunfight? Yes, that's a big gunfight one. And player number two actually on the opposite side. That's going to be Skump wins the gunfight as well. So the rotation battle being won by both Crim6 and Skump guaranteeing their team now huge spawns when it comes down to Turbine here, Fox. Yes, Turbine spawns are going to be a huge deal for these next 60 seconds. Of course, it's another money hill. This is our second time at this one. The rest of Optic Gaming was actually pushed up pretty far from Skump. They were holding more towards middle map, but that's fine because Skump has these spawns. When they die, they're just going to spawn up right on top of him and can get into phase two of their setup. Now, Rise Nation staggered way across the map. You see one in warehouse, one in security, one still fiddling around in cave. This is, they're in no position for a break right now. Yeah, and Aqua's going to be trying to challenge this one and not really going to look too likely. Of course, picking up some kills left and right. What are they doing? Pretty decent, but nice shot there coming in from Aqua. Unfortunately, can't pick up the kill in the end, but a nice 1v1 engagement. There Actually won there for Looney, so he'll be able to at least grab what should be Quite a few seconds. Player number four, the last one to challenge his question is his formal try, and does he back up? Looks he tries to back up, but it looks like an Arise Dage player will be there for the stop there. So last few seconds going over to Turbine as we rotate here back over toward Hangar. So I thought for sure that Looney was going to be caught on that flank, but it seems like he caught them off guard. The distraction of the rest of the Rise Nation players ended up paying off and awarding them with some scrap time due to the gunfight win from Looney. So now, as we rotate over to another Big 60 hardpoint, we see Optic Gaming finds himself in the initial setup again, while Rise Nation is outnumbered and out of position, still getting staggered all across the map. Look at your mini-map and see how far apart these guys are. They seem to be on different waves right now. I mean, when it comes in a hard point, you have to force the issue as a team, and this hill does not make it any easier. Such small corridors to try and enter into, and especially when it comes into the slang ability that Optic Gaming presents, you're just walking into a reticle at every single point of view, and Optic is doing a great job at locking down oh, quite a bit of seconds again. right now in Hangar. And at this point, Fox, I mean, what is Rise Nation trying to do? Is it the rotation or they need to try to fight this last thing in battle? It seems like they keep trying to uh, they keep trying to leave, have someone sit in a corner and just wait, right? Sit close to the enemy team set up and wait, but they can't seem to do it. And this is going to be definitely their last attempt at a push. Should the players die, they definitely just want to get set up around drill. It looks like that's what Facento is going to do. They get a good spawn for it, so they need to just get a good setup and find this hill time. Turbine to hangar. A lot of time being granted for optical Rise Nation. You're going to need a pretty decently sized hold here when it comes down to drill and formal's trying to delay that one ftl jump gets rocked quickly falls after that one gunfights continuing to go down throughout the map but it looks like it's going to be optic gaming who actually is going to find some easy control for the time skunk receiving shots and actually hearing calls from either side players coming in from the opposite angle here toward drill and it looks like it is going to be formal the last alive toward that hard point excuse me as it will be rise nation finally getting some much needed seconds 
All of Rise Nation rushing in from Cave. They find themselves in control of Drill, but Opti Gaming does have the stronger side of this hill, which is the security side. Or, well, typically it was one of the stronger sides. Now we're seeing more teams prefer Medic. But regardless, they're coming in from that side. They do find the time on the hard point, and Rise Nation's being pushed out towards Cave. This one's starting to look less and less likely if you're a Ryan's Nation fan, but crazier things have happened in the past. But looks like the last five seconds being granted off the side of Drill, and it will be going to Optic Gaming as well. Rotation coming back in here toward that middle side bridge. Karma trying to clear out his base. Last player alive is going to be Felony there, and Karma just can't finish off the gunfight. And it looks like it is going to be only 10 more seconds needed. A nice four down for Ryan's Nation, but it might be too little, too late. Rise Nation trying to take control of mid-map. They realize a lot of the Optic players will be coming from Turbine side. Aqua looking for that first engagement, ends up finding a second one, and he can't connect with shots on both of those players. So now Optic Gaming winning those gun gunfights should be able to close out the map here unless the camo play from Aqua comes in, but not enough time. Optic closes out map one, and the Optic fans around Bravo Station are letting them hear it. They absolutely are a pretty tightly contested game toward the beginning, but we end up seeing that hangar control, that turbine, the money hills for this map definitely go in Optic's way. That's when they started to, in some cases, grab that massive point advantage. And it's difficult when you're obviously playing against a, a side like Optic Gaming. It's not just they're good at rotating. They're also a very talented gun, gun skill team as well. Yeah. So not an easy play there from the side of Ryan's Nation, but Optic Gaming takes the hard point, as I would most likely predict uh, that that would take place. Yeah, and it's also not easy when you're getting caught out by yourself and then your team has to fight three versus four or, you know, a play that you were trying to set up was getting foiled from the get-go. Really difficult hard point to win against a difficult hard point team. So Opti Gaming will take that one. And now we move into throwback search and destroy. The players on Rise Nation are some very storied search and destroy players. So I do want to highlight what these guys are capable of in this game mode. They've been able to do well in their stage one playoffs group in this game mode as well. So I do look to see them make a little bit of noise. However, on the side of Optic Gaming, it seems like even though they had that poor placing at Stage 1, I still feel like this team uh, hasn't fallen off and, and too hard, right? They're still a championship caliber team. They still definitely have the capability of winning this event. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just seems like there's some new challenges afoot in the form of Luminosity Gaming, right? Yeah, I mean, it seems like, honestly, I think to kind of bring up and kind of give a little bit of a story as the players actually get ready to load in here for mat number two, I think it was a little bit of an, an awkward play. And I think we, I actually ended up talking to Proofy uh, inside of the green room, and he was kind of going over a few of the issues that Optigaming was having. And it was like, you know, they had a pretty easy pool, to be fair. I mean, they had a 3 0 I mean, there should be 4 0 12 0 their entire pool, not even dropping one map, but then their first matchup is against one of the top teams in the entire yeah. game in the side of Luminosity. So in some cases, I think it was kind of a caught off guard type of, of spot for them. It's going from, you know, a pretty easy situation to having to be at your very best, but I think it's also kind of a question to the Optic Gaming players as well because there's been a lot of interviews, a lot of talk after that fourth, pl fourth place finish at playoffs is that have the teams caught up yet again? Is this, a, is this kind of a replication from last year at Black Ops 3 where they started off the year absolutely incredible? You know, they were winning hard points like crazy and then all of a sudden teams start to catch up. Yeah, it really seems like uh, that is the case. I mean, they had a very easy beginning to the tournament, so they're going to boast a, an impressive map ca map win percentage of 12-0, 100%. And in the moment they face any sort of a challenge, they go to game five, get knocked to the loser's bracket in the first round of the bracket stage. However, Opti Gaming is definitely a team that has been able to make these loser bracket runs in the past, so I do look to see them put up a fight here before they go out or before they win the tournament. Who knows? This is definitely a team of championship caliber form. So in this matchup against Rise Nation, we're getting into the search and destroy, I still got to say yeah, that it's, it's favoring Optic Gaming. I think they're the stronger team. Mm -hmm. They haven't exactly had the best practice over the past two days in terms of their tournament matchups, but I don't think that's going to slow them down in a meaningful way in this series specifically. Okay, so you got, you got Optic Gaming coming in this match number two? I do. Okay, I can, kinda go, I can definitely go along with that. I think one thing that we need to be looking out for Rise Nation is definitely kind of like that. We said that prior S and D, you know, play that these guys are known for. We talk about guys like Felony. I mean, previously an S and D star for the longest time, kind of risen through the competitive scene, and obviously found his way on a top squad in Rise Nation later throughout his career. And obviously he's currently on them now. But these guys have made their story throughout Search and Destroy, even back in the day throughout Advanced Warfare, both Vicento and Aqua as well, finishing second and actually runners up at AW Champs, was because of that Search and Destroy play. So these guys have been in the situation before. They've been down. They're pretty familiar with the Optic Gaming guys. I think at yeah. this point it's fair to say. So, well, I, I also do favor Optic Gaming. I think if this was, in some cases, a map, if, if, if after the first two maps, and you were to tell me that it's 1 1, I would expect to see Rise Station most likely take their search and destroy. And one thing you got to keep into account, too, is that these guys are playing on the Bravo Station. They're in a 
sea of Optic Gaming fans. So round after round, whenever Formal Scump, Krim Karma do anything of significance, Rise Nation will hear about it a second time. Oh, yeah. And that's got to be stressful. That's got to be working at your mind as you're playing in the game. I mean, something similar happened just last year with a very similar roster against Optic Gaming. They were upset. It helped. It hurt them throughout the rest of the map, and they ended up losing it. So yeah. I think uh, every time I see like an Optic player like, adjust their headset, the crowd absolutely goes wild. So I mean, they can just do about anything, <laughs> and, the, and the crowd will definitely give them some feedback. So like we said, guys, map number two <laughs> loading up. Optic taking map number one in pretty dominant fashion. We'll see if the Search and Destroy can be the same or if Rise Nation can respond. Fox, I want to know what players should we be looking at at the start, at the start of this first round? Well, as you mentioned, anything the Optic Gaming does, Optic Gaming roster does, set, tends to be pretty ridiculous. So I think I'm looking for Scump. The moment he scratches his ear, I'm about to go crazy, right? Absolutely. No, but Optic's pushing up towards mid. We do have Scump playing a close quarters angle with the E-Rat alongside Crim6, and they're going to win a lot of these gunfights, and Scump wins the one against his teammate as he team kills Crim6, and Aqua is left all alone in a one versus three on the opposite side of the map. It's not going to be an easy round for Aqua, but trying to catch these players one by one off guard. Fires a few shots in the side of Formal, but regardless, can't pick him up in the end. Optic Gaming most likely knowing an idea as far as the positioning is from Aqua as they're actually getting ready to he met up not most likely not a case where Aqua is going to walk away with this gunfight. That's exactly what's going to happen. As it's going to be Optic Gaming taking round number one. Three of those kills coming with E-Rads. Actually, four of them. Now we're seeing Fumo run the E-Rad quite a bit this weekend in a lot of these engagements. And uh, he definitely has been looking really strong. I mean, even uh, on, on maps specifically, like Frost Uplink, where you see two and three E-Rads pretty frequently, just it, it's odd seeing our main AR player, someone that takes priority with that assault rifle ever since Call of Duty Ghosts for any roster he's been on, running one of the more aggressive submachine guns in the game. So it's been interesting to note throughout the weekend there. And it looks like Rise Nation will be the team to push up towards middle train here. Getting tagged up by the grenade. Formal sees the damage incoming and finishes the job with the NV4. That's a big kill to open up with. Rise Nation responds with two. But Landon, the gunfights are still going down around mid as no one has been able to get map control. Do they have not? Looney trying to win this 1v1 engagement. It's not going to go his way. Scump will close that one out in a two-on-one situation. Optic Gaming now taking two rounds in a row. But we do talk about the beginning of that round. Formal with that MV4 near top. I mean, he almost actually has a sniper rifle with that thing. It's so hard to challenge him. And when you realize that he's in a spot like that, it's almost like you just got to kind of call him out. And it's like, guys, we need to re we, we need to like engage on him in some way because I'm not going to do it because this guy is just too good up top. Yeah, and those ERAD players jumping up to try and challenge him mid-range. If, if you're looking for a fight with uh, Formal's MV4 mid-range and you have a submachine gun, you're going to have a bad time. But we see them get punished for it very swiftly there, and we're looking over towards Bike Path for our next set of engagements. Ooh, and Formal finding a nice nade there on Felony. Just like that, he had to get another situation where the Rise Nation players are questioning, how are they dying so quickly? How are we dying this fast? And now Facento left in a one-on-three scenario with an all-to-do. He needs to get some momentum for his squad after losing that round number one. Actually spots two players, finds Crim6. He's able to back inside of Bowling. At least a dip out for the time being, but this is... A situation where he's gonna have to pick these players off and he is going to be on the offensive as well. So we'll see, actually I'm gonna go on board with Karma. Does he spot that bomb is the question. I don't believe he does. So Sento still on the offensive. Gonna have to make a big play here to get Rise Station back. And this is a situation that Pacento's in. He wants to just find as many one-on-one -on -one engagements as he can. That's why he ran all the way around the map to try and juke them out a little bit, catch them off guard. But you can see he couldn't find those, those uh, ending shots there onto Karma and the, the trade comes in, Formal's just able to take him down. Do you think it's the aggression, or do you think it's just Rise Nation not playing together as a squad, the reasoning why we've seen Optic take these first three rounds this quick? I mean, we're seeing Optic get those first bloods really quickly, and it usually comes in pair, a pair of twos, right? And we're all also just in the early stages of the Search and Destroy, so there's enough time for Rise Nation to respond, but there's just two kills happening at the same time every round, and that's tough to, tough to work, from, work through. Absolutely. Well, this could be a swing round in some cases. You see a few players using... Those aerial line sights from the side of Rise Nation. Shots being exchanged early, but no kills going down. Just as I say, that karma, the bomb carrier, ends up dropping. Nice first blood found from Looney, but quickly responded there from Crim6. Scump, sparring went over toward that side. Might try to re-engage. Aqua sitting toward that back. Lemon Felony starting to back up after receiving some shots. Two on three. Man disadvantage yet again for the side of Rise Nation. Formal getting that bomb down, and he will be only 50 points away from that scarab. He's going to find himself a Scarab. He still has the FTL jump to escape if he needs to, but Rise Nation nowhere to be found except Felony catches Crim6. There's going to be some Optic Gaming players looking for him here around middle map, but they actually lose him, and oh. they're finding themselves in a one versus two engagement. Scump caught off alone, gets taken down by Aqua and Felony, and now it's all left to Formal. 50 points from the Scarab. He's trying to make it work, trying to make it happen. Double teamed, and no. 
two he does versus, not connect. Yeah, the two versus three coming in there from Rise Nation, greatly played from them as well. Back to back to back to back rounds where they've come in a position to clutch and they're at least able to get this one down. A major swing round, Rise Nation finally getting some signs of life. Granted, it wasn't a crazy amount, but at least they got it when they needed to the most. You're gonna see Felony, nice shots there. Of course, earlier ones coming in from Aqua. Just needed one more bullet to shut down Formal. Yes. And with that, that's going to be the defuse. And I just wanted to clarify there, Formal did not get the Scarab from the bomb plant. He will not have score streaks going into this round. He does, however, have access to the FTL jump. As the remainder of his team and the remainder of the players in the lobby are still halfway to their payloads. FTL jump, of course, filling up a lot faster. Opening gunfights going down on middle map. In Aqua already left in a one versus one. A pretty quick round, and Aqua's going to clutch up Ooh, the one versus big. two. Big play there coming in from Yuli as he's able to find both of those players. Medium range with the NV4. This is why this man can be so lethal. Finds one, quickly turns on formal as well. Great communication, most likely, and a great intuition as well. Right. That's now going to grant Rise Nation two rounds in a row. They're back in this one. Yeah, he hesitates any longer, and the odds of him winning that round go down significantly. I think Formal would have been able to hunt him down, but he reads the jump out of the window and is able to take him down with a clean double kill. So let's look at this through their eyes of Optic Gaming as they are on the offensive side. They're going to be a more, uh, more active on this bomb side here. You see they're only met by one Rise Nation player as the rest of them wrap back over from Lime towards Barn. And I think Optic is sniffing that right out, and they want no part. They want no part of that one, Landon. And you're not at all. So, of course, you see the uh, bomb rotation here coming over toward Aim. Scarab still curious as he's not found anyone as of yet, kind of making its way over toward A now, as, of course, that one's finally going to be destroyed. So with that, Rise Nation has realized that that rotation over toward A is most likely one that has happened, and Karma tossing a nade out. Rise Nation now knows that bomb is going here toward A, it seems. So Karma getting that bomb down. We'll see how Rise Nation vins to try and play this one. No one dropping yet. We'll see how the retake works out. All right, so there are some Rise Nation players on the opposite side of the street, but Optic Gaming has the advantage of playing around that bus for the long range. That's why you see Facento here trying to get some distance, doesn't check his corners, and Karma punishes him for it. Aqua is able to win the next engagement. Although he can't push up because he's so tagged up. Formal working off of that communication finds him, and we're seeing the coordination from Optic Gaming this round paying off for them. Balloonie one versus three. Doesn't have a whole lot of time left to work with to try and get that defuse down. Or to get the defuse off, excuse me. And this one is just not looking likely anymore. This is going to be another round here for the side of Optic Gaming. Looney just trying to get as many kills potentially toward those score streaks, toward that payload as possible. So he'll maybe shut down Formal, but no. Formal actually used the FTL jump to try and stay alive. And actually, he's going to blow up due to the bomb there. So that's a big play in some cases. Formal rocks the FTL jump to try and escape the gunfight. That equals that player, I believe it was Looney, who ends up going down to the bomb. And Karma gets a kill there because he planted the bomb down. Yeah, and Formal was trying to stay alive because of the streak that he was on. He had two kills right there. Uh, so with the bomb detonation and the kill going to Karma, that's going to be more towards his score streaks as well. It's kind of a blessing in disguise there if you're, yeah. if you're Karma. Awesome. It doesn't normally happen, but uh, thank you, Formal. Thank you for staying alive there, pal. <laughs> you know Karma's laughing that off right now. Let's take a look at Formal and see some of his progress to his score streaks just for a second. Just 250 points away. He's going to be looking over mid. He's been the warden of mid lane thus far. But a lot of the gunfights are going down here as Rise Nation makes an offensive front towards the B the barn at the B bomb site. Felony has the bomb, but can't really make too many moves towards the objective just yet. He's able to take down Formal, but no one from Optic Gaming is there to trade. So Felony lives to fight another gunfight here. He does indeed. Aqua does have that active kill. Of course, we do talk about the streaks as well. The Scarab earned, but active camo much more important. Definitely wouldn't be a Awful decision to try and use that if he is in a position that needs to for it to come up. Players coming toward the back, both Crim6 and Karma. Two versus two, a huge round when it comes down to this. If you are Rise Nation, just to try and bring yourself back into this game. Cannot allow Optic to get toward that map point. Karma, then making his way through Grandma's along with Crim6. Then fights getting ready to be engaged here. Player number one toward the back is going to be Felony. Does he call out? Does he spot Crim6? Yes, he does. Firing some shots. Trigger discipline. Not exactly found there. Scrim6 is going to realize those shots are starting to come in. 2v2, how does this one play out? How does it start to go? But Aqua is now going to be left all by himself. Felony ends up dropping, but can he stay alive? Yes, Aqua actually rocks the active camo, waiting for Crim6 to try and engage. And Aqua just goes to go ahead and backs out. Oh, that's communication And this isn't going right to be enough there. time for Crim6 to actually get the defuse off. This one should be one from Aqua, but can Crim6 win the gunfight? No, it's not going to happen. The active camo comes in, the one versus two from Aqua, as he's going to clutch in a number of different situations. He needed a payload. 
but it's definitely a worthy one to use at this point. So big play from Aqua right there. He knew for the second gunfight he was absolutely going to have to pop camo, even if he didn't get into the gun engagement. Karma definitely saw him use the camo and is going to call it out to Crim6, but it still works out for Aqua either way. He can run that clock down. So great play from him and what is another one versus two clutch this game. Aqua trying to keep his team in it. Of course, you see nine and four on the other side. Formal 10 and four for Opti Gaming. This is where he shines, the NV4 at range. And so he'll actually get picked off. Nice shots there from Felony. So he'll pick up Formal, bringing this one back to a level playing field, but only just for a minute. Facento shutting down Crim6. Two versus two. Yet again, now make it a one versus two. Nice pick there coming in from Scump on Aqua. Now we'll see if Facento can try to replicate Aqua's performance in one versus two situations. Yeah, I mean, Aqua, I don't know if he's going to be able to do that one. They are very, on very opposite fronts in terms of uh, performance in the search and destroy so far. That's why we saw Aqua able to use his camo so early on, and you see right there with Facento being outnumbered. He's not exactly going to contribute what Aqua's been able to put up in the past couple of rounds, being outnumbered. He should fall very quickly to Scump. Five rounds to three, Opti Gaming only needed one more to make this a 2-0 advantage in favor of them. Of course, this is a best of five, so they at least need to take the next uplink, but Rise Nation, they need to hold on to this. They cannot be down two to zero coming into an uplink versus a very talented slaying team like this. But here oh. comes the round, two drop immediately, now make it all three falling. Aqua, the last alive. Grin, he's done it before, but can he do it again? Can he at least let Rise Nation stay up a little bit longer? Players coming from every which angle, but actually able to escape for the time Aqua, 10 and 5, can you make it 12 and 5 and try and stay alive for another time? Oh. Finds one, tries to find the Almost. second, but it's not going to be there. Optic Gaming will clutch up in a one-on-one -on -one si situation. Aqua with an all to do and just couldn't find that last player. Such a difficult angle to try and make it happen, but Formal and Aqua, both players leading in kills for their team, and of course Formal coming out on top, but that's going to be Optic Gaming now, who takes the advantage again and again in this series, as they're now going to be up two games to zero. Landon. I, I think there has to be at least four of those six rounds that Opti Gaming won, where they just opened up with two and three kills oh, yeah. on middle map. They were uh, Rise Nation was not winning those gunfights, and obviously Opti Gaming, when they find those engagements, they're just going to work their way into the Rise Nation base. They can set up flanks, they can continue to be aggressive right in their face. It was ridiculous, but we see Opti Gaming is leading 2-0 against Rise Nation in this elimination match at CWO Anaheim. So we're going to see how this series concludes after this commercial break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, to CWL Anaheim Open, presented by the PlayStation 4. Myself, Lando, as well as Fox, currently guiding you guys through a loser's bracket matchup going on between Optic Gaming and Rise Nation. As we get ready to head in toward map number three, we kind of talk about what has been this series so far. And to be honest with you, Fox, it has been destruction from the side of Optic. Yeah, and this search and destroy is very one-sided. Rise Nation didn't have any signs of life outside of what we saw from Aqua, who had two 1v2 clutches that, that game that were definitely impressive throughout the map, but it just wasn't enough for them to win. A lot of those mid-map engagements are going for them. Now, we also backtrack a little bit. Let's take a look at the hard point. That was a bit more competitive up until the middle stages of the map. It wasn't really anyone in particular taking over. It was just Optic Gaming as a team, winning a lot of these team fights, staggering Rise Nation, wasting more of their time and hardpoint as you know is a very time-based game mode so that's going to be difficult for them to come back from and they're going to find themselves up in this series 2-0 rise nation fans out there you have to cheer on your team they are one map away from elimination and optic gaming the north american call of duty world league juggernaut with some of the most winningest players on the roster look to be in a good form to move on to the rest of the tournament they do indeed, and of course, an uplink in the past has been where Rise Nation at times, this, you know, this core group of guys has succeeded, but it's going to be a very difficult task when it comes into facing off against this Optic Gaming lineup. I can actually recall a few times uh, back when Optic Gaming had been in a previous MLG tournament so far through Infinite Warfare, where actually Precinct Uplink was one of the maps where they would start to kind of rival on for it. I, I believe they ended up taking on Elevate two different times where Precinct Uplink came up in the app, so they kind of ran through them. So this is a map that Optic Gaming is kind of used to playing when their backs are against the wall as far as the loser's bracket is considered. So with that, I think they're pretty confident when it comes down to this, but I think it's it's a good idea to kind of talk about what does Rise Nation need to do? It's not what Optic Gaming can do because we know what they're going to try and provide. The slang, everything, the communication, the teamwork that they have is absolutely unparalleled unparallel, at times. What do you think Rise Nation has to do? Who needs to step up? How does the map work? I want to I want to kind of dive into this as, as the map gets ready to load in because it's an interesting discussion. And I think a lot of people are curious, like, how do you beat this Optic Gaming team when they're up 2-0? to zero? When they have the confidence, it's difficult to take them down. But in your opinion, what do we need to see from Rise Nation to at least force them at number four? Well, the Rise Nation, I think we just need to see more slang potential from the team, right? We're not seeing them win these crucial gunfights, and then we're seeing them fight things outnumbered. And so, actually, we could take a look at some of the statistics from this series. We have the KPM and such up on screen for you guys to take a look at. If you look at it, on the side of Skump, he's going to have a 1.22 KD in hardpoint versus Aqua's 1.07. So these are two of the better respawn players in the lobby. This is our G Fuel key player matchup, and that's why we're highlighting just how strong these guys can be. You've seen what Aqua's been able to do in oh, Search yeah. and Destroy, boasting that 1.24 KD. We saw that in the Search and Destroy we just played. He had those two massive 1v2 plays, and it just wasn't enough for his team to win. So yeah. while this is our key player matchup, we still need to see a full team effort from Rise Nation if they want the hopes of bringing down Optic and reverse sweeping. Oh, for sure. And one thing that we obviously need to talk about is the uplink KDs for both of these players. 1.22 there from Scump, of course, the mode that we're getting ready to head into, and a 1.19 there from Aqua. Of course, your main slayers when it comes down to it. And that's obviously our key player matchup presented there by G Fuel. So with that, those are definitely two slayers to be looking at when it comes down to this matchup. We obviously talked about the, the lack of slam that Rise Nation has had at times. And when it comes down to Precinct, we talked about the MV4 play with Aqua up to this point I mean, this could definitely be another map where we see him have another all-star performance but will it be enough is the question for his squad because in the past it hasn't been yeah and even when rise nation was back in black ops 3 and having their struggles in uplink aqua was actually one of the higher statistic players in kd in yeah. uplink and his team still struggled in all respawns and uplink specifically so I, I just don't know what to expect from them. This is going to be a very, it's very difficult map for them to win. Their, their backs are against the walls. They're moments away from being eliminated from the tournament, and they're going up against one of the strongest respawn teams in the game that already is up 2-0 on them. So it's just it's a t it's a tough thing to be looking down at. Plus, they have thousands of fans who are literally right behind them right yeah. now, prowling on every single mistake. Yeah, we're that they breaking records make. with CWA Anaheim, aren't we? We are indeed. We've got a crazy amount of fans watching this live. Of course, I want to thank you guys as well for watching online as well here at the Bravo stage. But still, it is time to hop in here toward our map number three. It will be Uplink on Precinct. Can Optic Gaming close out the 3-0 and continue on their loser's bracket run throughout Championship Sunday? Or will Rise Nation at least force the game number four and keep their hopes alive? That's going to be the question to be asking as we load in here toward the beginning moments of this first half. 
I'll be looking on board with Aqua, one of our key player matchups, of course, presented by G Fuel to see how he can try and bring his team back and is going to have that MV4 in hand just as we thought. Uh, and if you're Rise Nation, you're already scared the moment you walk in the venue and just see a sea of green and then let alone the four players that are draped in green across the stage from you. So their backs are against the wall, one map away from elimination. Can they bounce back, clutch up and reverse sweep, or will Optic Gaming close out the series? Formal finds the player that had the drone is going to maintain middle map control, and this is going to be a big thing. If you can just keep a player here and remain a nuisance, the enemy team can't even get any offensive drives going. Sure, and Carmen actually getting a nice melee there as three do fall quickly for the side of Rise Nation. Formal coming around the side. This is going to at least be a one point play, but Formal wants the two point dunk within 40 seconds. Optic Gaming has already fired away two points and is already up by one advantage. So yeah. we're going to see what Rise Nation can try and provide because the push is coming in again here. Fox Crumb Six now has the drone. There's no support from Rise Nation. They can't even get toward the drone at this point. And this is going to be another two point oh, play no. and quick succession. Pass coming over toward Formal. They want to try and increase his streaks, okay. and it looks like. We have an issue. Odd play there from Rise Nation, but at least we can maybe try to get a reset. I don't know. I, I, I was trying to play that <laughs> off like, oh, this is great. But looks like we did have a controller malfunction there for the set of Rise Nation. So Optic, it looked pretty good. But, just a uh, small tech issue. We're going to get these guys tech, situated yeah. and taken care of in just a moment. I mean, in a tournament where we got the scuff booth and hundreds of pe thousands of people with controllers, I'm sure it's not going to be an issue, right? These guys will be fine in just a moment. But that uplink did not look too good for Rise Nation starting things out. Yeah, let's that's talk about that. Yeah. yeah, that's the opposite of the way you want to start it out. You do not want to have Opti Gaming rallying points against you in a game mode like uplink. Right, and of course, the controller malfunction could have came into play as the reason sure. why we did definitely did see that. But in that opening engagement, we saw Aqua going up against Crim6, and I don't think Aqua is the player who had a controller malfunction because he was aiming down on Krim, and Krim just completely outgunned him there from that slight angle. And that was kind of, in some cases, the beginning run that Optic ended up making. So I think they would have definitely got at least that first two-point play in regardless. Right. But still, I mean, if you're Rise Nation, it's kind of like, Okay, thank God we have a timeout. Let's try and reevaluate this one. Let's get our let's get the communication going. What 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 mistakes did we make and what do we need to improve on heading in to a replay of this? And while we find our while we find ourselves in this 2-0 situation of Opti Gaming above Rise Nation, just want to give you a little bit of an off-stream update for any of the European fans that might still be out there watching, any of the North American fans that like the European teams too. Epsilon and Splice is currently going on where we find Epsilon up 2-0. Now that's a very similar situation from what we've seen in the past where Epsilon was able to 3-0 Splice twice and the grand Blurring finals him, yeah. of a tournament. So that's a really big moment for those two teams. It absolutely is. And of course, a lot of surprising results so far here at CWL Anaheim. And we'll see if Rise Nation can try and make another one of those upsets. Most likely not going to be the case, but we'll see what happens. Of course, we still got to have some face in the Rise Nation crew, but either way, we'll see what can take place. So of course, we have the map review up on screen here. Just a quick recap again, we are 2-0 at the moment. OptiGaming looking to finishing things out here on Pre-Seek Uplink. They're definitely no slouch when it comes to this game mode. But Rise Nation has the player up Aqua, our G Fuel key player, that can put up some impressive numbers. Huge plays, and I think he's going to be a very high-impact player, player with that NV4, too. That opening engagement that he lost to Crim6, of course, not a very good sign of what's to come, but that's just one gunfight. I do expect him to be able to contribute throughout the remainder of this map. And, of course, as the players kind of reload, kind of refresh themselves, we'll obviously be seeing how that play most likely happens again. So when we load into the map, I want to go on Aqua's screen again and see if that gun engagement happens and see if he can maybe try to win that one versus Crim6, yeah. kind of take away the mistakes he might have made in that particular first gunfight. But still, it is going to be difficult, obviously, if you are the set of Ryan Station. Of course, we did kind of talk about, you kind of mentioned as well, what they need to do to beat this Optic Gaming side. Yeah. It has to come from the slang. Aqua can't do it all alone. You know, we have shining moments from Felony in that hard point. We see good moments from Aqua at times. We see Facento going off at certain tournaments. It's great, but you all have to do it at the same time versus squads like Opti Gaming, like squads versus Luminosity, and even teams from Europe like Epsilon and Luminosity, or excuse me, like Epsilon and Splice. You have to all be going off at the same time. It has to be a consistency thing. And if you're Rise Nation, it's just such a hard thing because, I mean, you guys are talented, of course. I mean, there's obviously no reason why they aren't here right now is for that exact reason, but you've got to be consistent great, and that's going to be the issue I think that we're, they're going to have versus Optic So I also wonder if we see the opening strategies change. I just have a hard time believing that Crim6 and Aqua go to the exact same positions, especially because the gunfight went down. Aqua lost it and it resulted in two points. I just have a feeling something's going to be switched up. Maybe someone will throw a different grenade and we'll see a different opening push. But let's talk a little bit more about these two teams in Uplink. I think it's really scary to have to go against an Optic Gaming roster when all throughout Black Ops 3 in this game mode, they were so terrifying and known as a team that would capitalize on mistakes. Not once, but two 
win three times if they saw the opportunity to it. They're good at setting up for these spawn traps. They're good at manipulating what you can do and limiting your options so they can continue scoring over and over again. And we even saw a little glimpse of it there in the beginning of the pre seek dump link. Oh, yeah, that's what makes Optic so good. I mean, we've seen very talented slaying teams kind of get that drawn forward and, and obviously get the slaying done. But this team is so good at kind of setting up for the future plays, kind of realizing, yep. hey, if we establish control, if Formal stays, stays alive in this particular situation, if he doesn't shoot that player, kind of passes it over to his teammates to allow for future plays, that's what makes Optic Gaming so good. Right. They play for the future. They play for what is to come, not what's in front of them at the moment. And Lennon, that kind of foresight is what sets this team apart from so many competitors in Call of Duty Esports. That's what sets Optic Gaming at the top of so many different teams in the Call of Duty World League. So, with the most winningest player on the side of Optic Gaming in the form of Crim6, we should see if they can close this series out or if Rise Asia can bounce back and show some signs of life. Indeed, we will, of course, early gun engagement starting to go down already. This time, Optic Gaming United getting this much of a score off the start. We'll see what they can try and provide. Drone going to be in their possession for the moment. Aqua actually finding two, so kind of making a little bit of an improvement on that beginning first side. As we see that drone reset back toward middle. Early gun engagements going down. Both these teams playing with quite a bit of aggression. Pacenta waiting patiently around the corner here. He catches Crim6, who actually found a double kill, shooting two players in the back. Not a good situation to be in. As most of the kills go in favor of Optic, just one player stands and scumps away. He waits patiently around the corner, and Looney sprints into the drone carrier and is punished abruptly for it. Crim6 is here with Skump. They can try to get this push to go down. Players entering inside a ticket. Skump tries to reevaluate the situation. Unfortunately, too many players, too much health, and that's going to end the offensive push that Optic Gaming was trying to provide. Be expecting this area near Statue to be a huge choke point for either of these squads, especially for the side of Rise Nation, to try and get this drone forward to. As one point tosses off of that wall run, as well as those aggressive plays in using... Those signs as some cover. Felony picking up a big kill. That one actually going to be on formal. Now switches over to the MV4. Trying to be a lead blocker right now for his squad. Unfortunately, they can't actually grab the drone. And if they don't actually grab it soon, the drone's going to reset. Sento quickly realizing that grabs that one and resets the drone armor as Rise Nations look to try and reevaluate this push. Drone timer reset. Several Optic players around the corner, so that's why they're not moving it up. They have to look for those kills, but they still can't find them. Formal, Skump, turning the corner, gunning them down, and now on an offensive front with the drone of their own. One just around the corner in orange. That's not going to be an easy gunfight to win. A mid-range gunshot engagement from Felony onto Karma. He's going to come out on top of Formal, punishes them for that one. Skump putting some shots onto a second player as well. And really, just so many of these team fights are just going heavily in favor of Optic. I mean, Facento finds this double kill, but so many of these team fights, they just they start off winning. They do indeed. We'll see if Rise Nation, Rise Nation can try and rebound. No pun intended there, but the one point toss coming in. Will it follow through? And yes, it will. Beautiful shot actually coming in from Looney, receiving some shots from the side, but regardless, is able to fire in that one point play in the end. So nice plays there coming in from Rise Nation, only a one point advantage, but still seeing some very aggressive play out of both these teams. I fully expect to see quite a few more of those scores before this first half concludes. So we are seeing in the first three minutes of this game, Crim6 is currently sitting at three and seven. Optic Gaming has had many moments where they They've killed plenty of players on the side of Rise Nation and have not been able to capitalize it on a score. So credit to Aqua and the rest of the, op excuse me, credit to Rise Nation and especially Aqua for their contributions in stopping those offensive plays. And we'll pick up that drone. Might have an opportunity to make a play happen, but the two versus four for the time when Formal had the drone in his hands, not going to work out for them on that front. Just under two minutes remain in this first half of some precinct up with Felony trying to light it up. He'll actually go on a three spree. That's big. He's actually going to try and reset that drone in a smart play at that. Gets the call. There are quite a few Optic Gaming players just around the corner from him. So a nice offensive play as far as the kills are concerned. A nice defensive play getting that drone off the map. And that's just the kind of communication you expect from a Rise Nation squad. They understand that they have to play the numbers game. They have to keep, a, keep account for everyone on the map so that they can avoid making mistakes like dying and getting shot in the back and having them take over the drone. Offensive play coming up. Pacento lines up the shot, sinks it into the face of two Optic players. And Optic has yet to respond with any points in the board in the first four minutes of this uplink. Yeah, clean four down is what Optic Gaming got put on and Ryan Station was able to make a play of it. Slang leading down to offensive plays. Now Karma with the drone in hand, making his way through Middle Street, having a few players in his line set, but doesn't have any lead blockers. Actually goes, tries to go for the one point play and Karma is actually able to get that one off. He the has three players right sitting in front of him, Fox, and he's still able to get the one point play off. That is 
That is an objective mastermind right there. That was a great play there coming in from Karma. Yeah, and Aqua Team killing Luna, de Looney definitely added to the issue that Opti Gaming was, uh, that Rise Nation was faced with. That was the offensive front of Opti Gaming. Now, Formal and Karma trying to make a difference here in the enemy base. Formal is still alive, watching that alleyway, but Looney shuts him down. Skump, though, is able to respond. Arm in the rim. Karma finds two more points. 30 seconds left in this half. There is enough Ooh. time for another drive. Optic is looking to make it happen, Landon. Okay, Karma, Karma's starting to light it up in the base right now. Finds three, can't find the fourth. The Crim6 is here. He wants at least one more play, but he wants the two at the end. Oh. And Optic are going to continue to fire in a few more points for the end of this first half. They're going to be up five points to two. And the drone might not be ending here. Formal with that one. Potentially trying to go for a last second oh, buzzer no. beater. The Rise Nation players are here, but can he get the one point to off, toss off is the question. But no, Rise Nation finally will respond. And thankfully, a sweat off the broad type of situation if you are Rise Nation. A flurry of points there coming in at the end as Opti Gaming after the first half will be leading 5-2. to two. And see, that's exactly what I was talking about. Once they get set up, if they're in any sort of a situation, a spawn trap and continue to capitalize on that point, they're going to do so. Opti Gaming was able to find that second dunk and almost found a third one. Unfortunately, lost the gunfights in the closing moments, but here they are in the second round with Elite Crimson winning that opening <laughs> that engagement looks familiar. again. That definitely looks familiar to our uh, before our reset earlier on, but oh, just as Krim. I said, that four go down immediately. <laughs> Crimson lighting it up, finding, I believe, around three kills, four kills for Crimson to start the second half, and he's starting to light it up, trying to be a lead blocker right now for Skump, tries to extend the arm, passes it off, actually to Karma, perfect communication, a great toss coming in, as that one's going to lead to a two-point play, but on the other end, Felony, on the overextension with Ryan Nation, they're not satisfied with that defensive loss. They're going to, they're trying to make that one an offensive one Ooh, and a up. nice response. A great toss there coming in from Felony as now it's going to be Opti Gaming now up by two possessions. Aqua right there had a big kill into Crim6 who was sitting back and waiting for the drone to come in and wait for the interception and try and gun down the drone carrier. So excellent escort play by Aqua and then of course we have Felony following it up with that one point play. Now Opti Gaming finds himself on the offensive front. Met by three Rise Nation players and a Scarabout on the map. That's going to take down Karma. Lighten their push a little bit in the drone carrier. That's Crim6. He's well aware that he can't push it any further. Yeah, Rise Nation flexing their muscles in some cases, trying to hold down the set of Optic at least for right now. Of course, three minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half. Potentially the last three minutes and 40 seconds of this entire series. Of course, if you are just joining us, Optic Gaming took those first two maps, the Search and Destroy, as well as the hard point prior to that one. They're trying to close this one out in a 3-0 sweep. Remember, the loser of this match goes home. And Rise Nation, like I said, potentially only three minutes and 30 seconds mm. away from leaving Anaheim empty-handed. And it looks like, speaking of hands, Crim6 now with the drone in his ones. Ot Overdrive actually gets rocked, but is it going to be a wasted play? Tries to go for the one-point play. Not going to be there. Felony, the last person to try and stay alive. The rebound coming in from who? Nobody. Scup is going to be there. Can he get the dunk? Yes. He's going to fire oh, this one no. in. The team fight won from the side of Optic. And Scup fires in with a two-point play along with the kill after. We talked about him being one of the key players we're watching out for into this upling, and that's exactly why. Doing things on the objective as well as in the slang category, but the points will not that's end. It, Formal man. with a nice toss there as well. 10 to 3 optic now and prime control to most likely close out the 3-0. Yeah, close that curtain. Rise Nation, it seems like they just ran out of steam. This entire series, their problem has been losing team fights when there's two and three players all in the same engagement. Optic Gaming comes out in a very clean way, and we're seeing it reflected here in the uplink score. 10 to 3. Rise Nation not able to respond. There's just oh no one my. winning the key engagements, and when you got Formal doing things like that with the FTL jump, how do you even want to play the rest of the map? Formal currently sitting at positive 7, trying to make it positive 8 there on Looney. Being a lead blocker right now for Scump, and it might be too little too late, but Optic oh, trying to Krim, fire in please. as many points as possible. <laughs> Krim6, Karma, all of them responding in kills, and Scump just wants a two-point play, and he's going to be able to fire that one in pretty easily thanks to that support coming in from his teammates. Krim6, have mercy. There's still two minutes left in the game. You don't have to be doing all this. You're leading by, two, you're leading by almost ten points right now. We see another offensive play coming in from Rise Nation. There is enough time to come back. It's just incredibly unlikely with the way that Rise Nation is looking. They have access to the payload. Some plays can come up. Let's not count them out just yet, but you really have to be looking at that scoreboard and thinking, how does Optic Gaming screw this up? Yeah, you most likely think that's not going to be the case. Of course, Looney with that overdrive can definitely lead to a two-point play, at least at the oh. That was a good young fight win right there. At the end, and Aqua, of course, with that active camo as well. So they do have the major payloads to work with. Baloney is all by himself, tries to go for the ball swipe, actually misses two, not oh, no. three times, but might as well try to go for the one-point play. Who cares? Felony, Facento are there, and despite missing three, 
drone melees. He's able to get the two-point play in regardless. So Ryzation not out of this one just yet. It's just so unlikely that this one would go in their favor. Pacento now tossing that one over toward Aqua. He also uses the active camo. This is the two big payloads that they tried to eat and use, but no, it's not going to be there. Optic is there on the defensive front and formal escaping with that drone right now. Yeah, that was just a desperation play right there. It was two versus four with Optic Gaming all just ahead of them. I don't even think they would have sunk the one point play from that camo with all four players there in range for the interception. But with the clock ticking and working against Rise Nation, 45 seconds left to completely turn around what you guys have been doing this series. It's looking like Optic Gaming is about to eliminate another North American roster. Indeed it is. Last 35 seconds and all Rise Nation can do is contemplate what exactly we did wrong. How did we lose to this team? How did it how did it kind of come down to this? As it will be Optic Gaming who is going to 3-0 sweep Rise Nation and advance themselves in CWL Anaheim. Rise Nation unfortunately we will be waving goodbye to them as Optic Gaming will eliminate them. Rise Nation did have a good performance so far though at this tournament. Have to give massive credit to them. But it will be Optic Gaming who does move on in this case. Optic Gaming eliminates our CWL Las Vegas champions in a 3-0 fashion. And what looked like a complete stop on the side of Optic Gaming from Game 2 to Game 3. Rise Nation didn't look like they stood a chance at any point in time. There were some redeeming qualities where they had these big plays that would result in points. But it just wasn't enough. It seemed like Optic Gaming... Optic Gaming was just, they didn't even have to put 100% into it at time, and they were just outgunning and outmanning Rise Nation at all times. Yeah, honestly, Optic Gaming just looked to be more like a, a complete team, I think it's fair to say, yeah, when it came easily, down to it. Easily. I mean, at, at times, like you said, during the hard point, during the search and destroy, like, I mean, uh, Aqua was trying to carry the load for his teammates, but it just wasn't enough. I, I mean, excuse me, Optic Gaming was just a more complete team when it came down to the overall selling ability and when it came down to their chemistry and their teamwork, I think exactly. it's fair to say. Exactly. It was a much greater team effort from the side of Opti Gaming. When you got superstars lining that talent, that uh, that then that talent lineup, it's really hard not to produce something like that. So we of course see Opti Gaming taking down what was previously a championship caliber roster in a 3-0 fashion, and that's going to be the end of the series. It was a very solid performance uh, out of Scump, our G Fuel key player in this matchup here. We saw Aqua having a few moments, but it seemed like he couldn't even get past Crim6, who throughout this entire tournament, since, he, since he's picked up the NB4, has been a huge threat for Optic. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that really quick as we get ready to head to a commercial break really fast. As far as the matches to actually be watching for the side of Optic Gaming, of course, going to continue on to this loser's bracket. When it comes down to future matchups, how has that really changed the overall morale of this Optic Gaming team, kind of switching Crim6 into the MV4 and in the MV4 role? Well, when you got players that are sort of more comfortable with their weapon as it, as it compares to their role, there's just going to be greater synergy and greater production in terms of kills from all of them. I was talking to Crim6 actually before the tournament started this Thursday uh, about what some things we can expect, what are some things we can expect in the meta this weekend. And, and he was saying, of course, you're going to see lots of ERADs. He was mentioning that with his team specifically, him and Formal needed to switch weapons because his words exactly were, this is stupid. Why am I, why are you the K, why are you the NB4 if you're like the most aggressive maniac out of all of us, you know? Formal is someone you want to ha let have that versatility and move around the map. So why limit what he can do with the NB4? And so we're seeing Crim6 and them switch, switch up the weapons. And I got to say, with that 12-0 map count in group phase, they're at least stomping teams that are definitely weaker than them with very little rebuttal. And of course, you guys can see really quickly the final score. We'll have to really go over it at that point. It's just a hot 3-0 coming in from the side of Opti Gaming. And of course, I believe they are going to be playing the winner of E6 and TK. I've yet to hear confirmation as to how that series is going. But if you are the side of Opti Gaming, of course, you are still feeling pretty confident. I was actually in the, in the green room with quite a few commentators kind of discussing, uh, analysts as well, kind of going over things with Merc, with TP as well, and kind of discussing things. And they were saying, this is by no means a run that Opti Gaming can't make. I mean, they've had very difficult right. record runs in the past. But no offense, of course, to E6 or TK, but those are teams that are definitely beatable when it comes down to how Optic Gaming plays. So if Optic can kind of play that consistency, even use the, the roles that they've recently switched to, like you said, Crem6 rocking the MV4 as of late, Skump starting to make more happen, and Formal having incredibly consistent plays so yeah, far throughout right? the entire tournament, this could definitely be a loser's run where Optic Gaming might not have too much of a problem. The question is going to be, though, with, so, with this tournament starting off with so many easy matchups that Optic Gaming should very easily win, Will they bounce back and be able to take down those tougher opponents? When they were faced with Luminosity Gaming, they weren't able to do so. So, guys, we're going to cut to a commercial break as that series concludes, and we'll see you again shortly here on the Bravo stream with some more Call of Duty action.
Welcome back to the Bravo stream here at CWL Anaheim. I'm joined by Dirk. I'm Fox. And we have another elimination matchup between Optic Gaming and Enigma 6. These are two teams that finished at the top of their respective pools this weekend. All throughout the tournament, they've made it to the final day. But they still find themselves in the loser's bracket. And only one team can move on. Optic Gaming is coming off of that 3-0 victory, Dirk. And Enigma 6 is coming off of a Game 5 win against TK. Yeah, a team that you might not be used to hearing on Championship Sunday for right. quite some time. While, I think huh? dating back all the way to COD Champs as well as back to MLG Orlando as well. But TK took them the distance. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at the loser's bracket here to see how things are going to fold. So now you're seeing at the top we have Red Reserve and Cloud9. That will be a match that will be going on there off stream. And that will go into the loser's round six. And then Optic Gaming taking on Enigma 6. The match you guys are about to see, the winner will be taking on Splice. And this is going to be a very big deal. Optic Gaming and Enigma 6 have a history of going the distance. Enigma 6 also coming off of their more recent roster change of picking up royalty. They haven't streamed their scrims that much. They've been a difficult team to follow in their progress of improvement. There's been a lot of talk of them just needing some players that can keep up with the slaying of General. Proto has definitely filled in those shoes and now they have royalty who they feel definitely gives them that presence. And I was talking to some of the casters and analysts and they were talking up Proto quite a bit. Yeah, he's definitely a guy has been performing all weekend long, but we have to give credit to the new guy, to Enigma 6. Royalty has been going off. He was a reason why they were almost able to get that reverse sweep yesterday against Evil Genius. If they weren't able to come out on top, but map number one is underway. It's going to be breakout hardpoint between Optic Gaming and Enigma 6. Royalty acting as our front line here. He actually finds a trophy system. I thought that was going to be an excellent flechette grenade, but the defensive Optic Gaming ready and willing and prepared for it. He's just kind of not able to find too much of an engagement around here. Very late to the opening gunfights at Optic Gaming. Takes an early positioning advantage, but not much comes from it. Still nobody inside of the hill yet, but now you're going to see General push inside as he does get the assist there over towards Loading Dock and Proto. He's going to be able to find himself a two-piece. It was on a five streak, but is going to be shut down, so that is going to earn him that scarab as well. But now General, this is all they need to do here. Just pick a corner and just sit inside of the hill. You're going to see the rotation start to come in from Optic Gaming, trying to slay out through middle before they move over to that cell block side. And they did an excellent job of cleaning up the Enigma 6 players, but now you see the early rotations are going in favor of E6. Optic, Enigma 6 still fighting around mid. Proto and Cade come out on top of Formal. It's very often that difference maker. Proto shuts him down though. Erad working to its advantage at that close range. And now Enigma 6 is going into the second hard point with the initial setup as well as a 20 second lead. And Optic is on the offense. That was a big kill to take out Carmen. Now it's going to force him back towards that middle map area. So let's see how the setup uh -oh. is looking for the side of Enigma 6. You see the push coming back from that back road side and Scump is going to be the first player to get that break. Now this should be Optic Gaming's hill to take here, but they have to worry about General. He's utilizing that outside wall and he goes inside of the hill, but Karma's going to pick up a big two-piece to shut that one down, but Enigma 6 players continue to be a nuisance inside, and just like that, Enigma 6 is holding strong. Cade, keep it going. Cade and Proto pushing through the duo. They do find some time. They clear out Optic Gaming, but Optic is still spawning P3. They're spawning so close, and all they have to do is run across middle map if they want to contest, but it looks like the play call is to instead prioritize Grave. I think they had an idea that General was spawning up behind them, but it was too little too late. That's three kills in a row from General, one of the strongest players and most consistent players on this roster, and he's taking point, doing some damage to the green wall. Him and Proto right now just carrying the smoke team in the grenades. slang, but look at Proto, 11 and 12. The smoke grenades, I believe, are going to come in from the side of Optic Gaming. Cade going to be the lone player inside of the hill, trying to get this set up to force those spawns out in back garage, and they are getting exactly what they want, but they need to get Crim6 away from here. He has the MV4 in hand. He is going to be challenged by Proto, but when the man is this hot, he's going to be hard to stop. Now 75 away from getting those Trinity Rockets. 12 and 2, Proto needs to stop here soon if Optic wants any hope of coming back in this hard point, but he's still pouring it on. Seconds away from the bombardment. He re-challenges Crim6. I think he got a bit too eager there to finish up that kill. He had more than enough time to just back off and try and force those score streaks, but Crim6 with a big kill to finally dump some cold water on this man. 89 to 4 is the score. Optic finally going to get the scrap times here from Graveyard, but now the rotations are coming in. Karma is going to get the big kill there on Cade, but look at the middle map. Two more players from Enigma 6 are going to be pushing, and just like that, Optic Gaming is going to be able to take them out, forcing them to spawn.
spawn across map. They should be able to get a good hold on here. Let's do a quick run through on the side of Enigma 6. Proto has those Trinity Rockets. This can almost guarantee a break here on Commissary. And with how many outdoor hills we have, that Trinity Rocket is definitely going to be a big factor later on. We see OptiGaming is currently in position. This is a situation where he could call it in, forcing the run back towards Elbow. As you can see right now, Karma will do just that. He can't afford to die to this Trinity Rocket, but they do have to give up their map pressure if they want to stay alive here. And you see the hover come in there. Now the players are starting to flood from the side of Enigma 6. Kate is going to be inside the hill. One player hits that wall, and that is going to be Crim 6. And now he is joined Ooh, by his big. other green brethren inside of the hill, and they get the break there. The final 20 seconds looks like it should go towards Optic Gaming. The Enigma 6 player is currently stacking over towards this shower. The shots are going to come in. That's a key to Formal to try to jump forward and get that kill. But Cade has that EMC in his back pocket. He finds one. He's not going to be able to find the second there. But now we are going to begin our second set of hill rotations in five seconds. So Optic was able to respond to the Trinity Rocket by still getting the hill time afterwards and fighting off Enigma 6. There was a team kill onto Royalty from General that definitely hurt them a bit. But good on Optic Gaming for staying poised and understanding that score streaks are going to be coming in from a player that was originally 12 and 2. So now we're right back to the be beginning of our rotation of hills on Breakout Hardpoint. All teams are going to be fighting for control of this top platform. Last time we saw E6 come out with a 20 second lead. We did, and Proto is going to be in the lower hut. The man is continuing to go on the spree. 17 and 7 is currently what he is sitting at. Scump is going to be, what, be the player inside of the hill for Optic Gaming, but the pinch is coming in from Enigma 6. It's going to be Royalty to get the first kill there to break this Optic Gaming setup, and Cade is going to be joining him as well. 20 seconds left before we do rotate, and Enigma 6 is in perfect position to force Optic Gaming to spawn on the other side of the map still. You see General doing what he does best, getting in that groove on a three kill spree, getting right up in the enemy face. General, staying in position on showers, just as you said, big power position to have, especially if you can stop that rotation from Optic Gaming. Last time they came through with all four players, taking off the anchor and just swarming that side entrance to the hill. This time's a little different, though. Enigma 6 is playing a little bit farther back, and Proto completely just buffers that entire push for his team by getting a big double kill, and that's going to delay this Optic push even more. Optic has been struggling to try to break this up that Enigma 6 has on this hill, but you see the distraction by Crim6. Now two players are going to be hitting that wall run. That is going to be Formal and Scump. Formal is going to be able to find two of his own. Scump finds a third there, and the break comes in, but the spawns are still heavily in favor of Enigma 6. It's going to be Proto trying to do some damage out here. He slides in. He spots a couple players. He's going to be able to draw the first blood there, but Royalty is going to get the team kill there on Proto. Formal with the casual double. Enigma 6 still responds in a big way with several kills, but they do lose map pressure here. Proto trying to flank to get this list last bit of scrap time. His position has been given away. The Optic player has to know where he's at. Crim6 turns around and guns him close range with the NV4. That's a big win, and Crim6 has been on point with that this weekend. Yeah, and you see Enigma 6 loves to favor this cave side to make the enemy team spawn in that back garage. So that's the setup they're trying to go for here. Kate is going to be leading the charge, but Crim6 and Karma are going to pick up two kills there. And you see the uh -oh, kill just start to light up green. The green wall is in full effect here. Karma is starting to heat up as well as Crim6. The teammates for so long currently sitting at three apiece oh, as Crim6 does fall. See, Karma's got the advantage of Father's Day. He's sudden these people finally goes down. E6 is able to stop him on the four streak, and it looks like they're able to take over the rest of this setup, but Optic Gaming isn't going to quit. They're coming up from Cave. Formal loses a big gunfight onto General, and that's just going to give them that map pressure. And on this money hill, you want to see Optic take it here soon. Otherwise, this game could get out of hand. See General doing all his candy. He's going to get very aggressive one more. He's going to be on a four sweep, but now he's going to be taken down. So Scarabs are going to be there for the side of Enigma 6. But the question is, when are those going to come into play? You see Optic Gaming heavily focusing on those early rotations, but Royalty gets a big two-piece to try to break that. They have back heli pack control. He spots that player in elbow, and he will be taken out. No, General loses that gunfight to Karma there, but he is the lone Optic Gaming player inside, and you're going to see these Enigma 6 arrows start to flood in. First player inside oh. is going to be Kate. He finds one. Is he going to be able to find the second player? Both jumping around. Can oh. Cover come out of the top? And he Please. does. And he secures the point for Please, Optic sir. Gaming. Oh no, Karma. Karma don't do it to him. 175 points from his next score streak. And this man, in the past minute or so, has just been on fire. He's finally taken down. And Nick with six has been quick to stop him before he gets past the scare both times. That's very good for them. And now they also find themselves in control of the hard point. Optic Gaming are spawning up way across the map towards the cell block. And they have a, a pretty long distance to go if they want to get to comm commissary. I think they're going to give up on this one. I think they're going to move over towards middle map and just try and play for people on the rotation. We're seeing Proto continue his terror. Currently sitting at 27 kills, but so much time in commissary going over towards 
towards the side of Enigma 6. Now we think back to that first rotation. Optic Gaming was the one that dominated this hill, but it has been all Enigma 6 since right from the start. Proto and all the rest of his teammates do fall there. Now he's left last alive here in Loading Dock. He has that camera ready to go, and they have broken that 200-point mark as we enter the third set of rotations. So we're seeing something out of Fulmer that we don't typically see. I definitely think this is a bit of an outlier map for him. He's going 12 and 21, while Karma is actually beating him in the kill column. That's not something we see from him, and I don't expect to see him repeat that performance. He pops the FTL jump to escape and destroys Proto, but that's not without Enigma 6 responding. The trades come in, Enigma 6 still has the man advantage, and Cade is flying high with an NV4 double kill. And you see how much Enigma 6 is out slaying Optic Gaming. Like you said, uncharacteristic performance from Formal, currently sitting at 13 and 22. You look at Scump as well, sitting at 17 and 22. But look at Proto, the man that we've been talking about in the pregame as well, as well as General. When these guys are clicking like they are, this is the reason that they have the lead. 213 to 139. 10 seconds left on this. Early rotation in favor of Optic Gaming, and they should be good to hold here, but you're going to start to see what they can do to break this one. Now, keep in mind, this is one of Enigma 6, more weaker maps, where you see him get the big break here, and just like that, Royalty in general take back Cell Block. 25 seconds separate Enigma 6 from closing out this map, and they're in a good position to close out the map on this hard point with their setup. Optic is way out of position. Oh, that's a big win from Formal onto General, being tagged up less than a bullet away from dying. Him and Crim6 are pouring it on through this wall run here and Enigma 6 is going to have a pretty big fight coming up around the corner. General and Cade working together to do so. The beatdown comes in and Enigma 6 still finds themselves in control of the point but it's not over yet Dirk. And Proto is going to go ahead and decide to pop that camel now just five seconds away from taking map number one away from Optic Gaming and they will do just that. 250 to 140 Enigma 6 takes map number one. Enigma 6 coming out in a big way with Proto bullying the competition from start to finish. We saw some big plays out of Karma, and that's just an interesting thing to note about Optic Gaming is that they don't, that's not how the team works. The team does not work around Karma statting in respawns. We usually see Formal, Skump, Crim6 doing it, and Karma playing around them in a very meaningful way. Yeah, and just one of the big takeaways from that game, like you said, the performance from Formal, something that we never usually see from him. That is one of Enigma 6 more weaker hardpoint maps in Breakout. They actually held Cell Block a pretty good. Usually, whenever a team first rotates, it's so hard for them to break. They have the constant mindset that we need to flood straight down middle and try to make something happen. But look, they looked like a completely different Enigma 6 on Breakout. Oh, Proto especially was just bodying anyone on his screen. We saw so many double kills, huge engagements being won. Uh, General was having some big gun, big gun fights as well, and they were just working and trading as a team very effectively. So as we get into Crusher Search and Destroy, we're moving on from a respawn to a much slower game mode that is Search and Destroy. You get one life per round, first to six wins. You want to plant that bomb. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this one does play out. Momentum going to be in full swing, but we know something about Optic Gaming. These are guys that we cannot count out at all. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out here. Like you said, this rivalry goes back all the way to advanced warfare between these two teams, and both of them have that heart to never, ever give up. You see Optic Gaming, every single time they get dropped down to Loser's Bracket, they're saying it's just believe. Just as straight up as it is, just believe in us and we can do it as well. Right. But they find themselves down 1-0 here to a hot Enigma 6. It's going to be hard to bounce back, but if there's a team that can do it, it's going to be Optic Gaming. And remember, guys, this is an elimination match. Every map counts, and Enigma 6 is currently up 1-0 over one of the best teams in the world in the CWL right now. So. That's got to be pretty scary if you're an Optic Gaming fan. You're looking at Proto, and you're hoping that either Formal or Crimson 6 can come online to shut him down. It seemed like in map number one, Karma's performance, he had two big streaks that he went on, just didn't seem to be enough to swing things into their favor. So we'll have to see how things unfold in the next map here. But really quickly, I think that it's important that we look at some of those individual maps while the players are getting prepared for Search and Destroy here. Let's take a look at the box score. You can kind of see where things went out of control for the side of Enigma 6. Yeah, and you see the uh, big highlight, the cell block is going to be number two, the 78 to 33 difference. We saw how well Enigma 6 was able to hold it as well as break the Optic Gaming setup. Now, Rooftop was kind of a toss-up. We didn't see many players jumping into the hill at around until 40, 30 second mark inside of that one, but Enigma 6 was able to take that, and Commissary was one that Optic Gaming was able to hold, but we saw how slow of a start they did get off in Rooftop as well as cell block. And the key players we are highlighting here is going to be Karma from Optic Gaming. 24 kills, most kills on Optic. Let's say that again. Most 
most kills on Optic Gaming, usually right. that's formal completely dominating in that 1.0 KD with 40 seconds in the hill. Then you look at General, the man, he didn't put up the numbers that Proto did, but he did what he had to do. Like we always say, General starts to get in that groove. Once you start seeing him on that little arrow on that minimap, start to push forward to get that pressure onto the enemy team. That's when General is at his best, as well as adding on 112 seconds of hill time. And this is re a really good situation for General. I think this is probably the best set of guys he's had around him for some time in terms of uh, a Raj that can compete with this top talent. He has people that can keep up with his slaying to where he doesn't have to solo carry the whole game. He can just be consistent, but he has a great supporting cast around him. Proto and Royalty really keeping up with that kill potential, and it's working out in big ways for Enigma 6. I mean, and you've seen the improvements, right? I mean, Enigma 6, the last time we saw them really performing at that high level was all the way back in Vegas. Now they bring on Royalty, and these guys are looking stellar. Just one player just shows how much they can really start to change a team. And then when you bring in a guy like Royalty, who has the past history of being great, uh, going all the way back to, I believe, in Ghost, as you can go back there as well. It's Warfare as well with Epsilon NA. So we'll see how Royalty continues this one. Search and Destroy is a game that he carried Enigma 6 in as well yesterday against Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and E6 is coming off of a, a much tougher matchup they had. They went to Game 5 against TK, so you know they have to be warmed up for what could be an even more difficult matchup here against Optic Gaming. On the side of Optic, we have Crim6, one of the most winningest player of, players of all time. Karma, incredible clutch factor. It's just a stellar superstar-packed lineup. And Enigma 6, definitely newer faces to the Call of Duty scene in comparison to them. However, through the eyes of Enigma 6, we see that they get the bomb down, and now Optic Gaming has to retake the site. Evan K is going to be the first player in there, but you see the slide in come from Optic Gaming. It's going to be Karma drawing that first blood. It's going to be pushing forward onto crates. Now they are able to spot one player, but Proto in general are going to be able to pick up kills of their own. Now it's going to be Formal and Crim6. The sniper is going to be out for Formal, but Crim6 does drop. Now a one versus two situation here. Formal gets eyes on Royalty, but he's not going to be able to pick up the kill there. So Enigma 6 is going to be able to close that one out, gets the bomb down as well, and take round number one here. Yeah, and we see right here Royalty's able to ch catch him with that slide. Such a d Oh, he actually doesn't even slide, just a quick crouch. Easy shot, high sensitivity, Royalty snapping right onto the body of Formal. So now we move into round two. We see Enigma 6 wins their first offensive round by getting that bomb plan. And now it's Optic Gaming's turn to use some of these offensive executes. See how they go here. Karma is going to be the bomb carry. See one player over in A, that is going to be Crim6. And you see the three pushing over towards B. It's going to be players 4 and 2 from Enigma 6. It's going to be General and Royalty setup. working no. side by side. A 1-1-2 one, one, setup from the side of Enigma 6. They're going to be met by a, a four-man push from Optic Gaming onto B site. These gunfights should work in favor of Optic should they choose to be aggressive. But the flank and the pinch is coming in from Enigma 6. Look at your minimap. That's Cade. He's still all alone, though. Not nearly as effective as having his team support on the other side. He's met by three players. Kills one and tags up the rest. But can he do it, Dirk? Yeah, now you see the pins come in there. You see Crim6 being the bait, and Skump comes around from that B site, and they are able to take him out. But you saw as soon as Cade came around there, the Optic Gaming players almost stacked up in a line of three for him to try to take out. But it was just an excellent, well-thought-out play, Crim6 being the bait, and then Skump coming around to finish off that kill. Now Optic Gaming gets around on the board, and it's going to be tied 1-1. Yeah, they're not giving him anything. You know the players are communicating that he's weakened, they got a shot on him, something like that, and they're going to go ahead and engage that as two versus one rather than feed him to 1v1 engagements. Kate is definitely someone capable of outgunning those two players. So now, take a look at the, uh, the uh, next round here and what the setup looks like for the side of Optic Gaming. It seems to be a 3-1 setup from mid, mid lane to bottom lane, but Op Enigma 6 is pushing all four players to the B site, just like they did on the first offensive round. Yeah, and again, B going to be completely wide open. Optic Gaming opting to give that one up, and Cade gets the bomb down. We're seeing almost a picture-perfect mirror matchup from what we saw in that last round. Cade going to be playing in this near right corner. So yeah, the slide is going to come in again. Once more, Karma Ooh. leading the charge, but immediately the trade is going to be there. So now a three versus three. Proto's going to be able to find one. Can he find a second there on Skump? He's not going to be able to. So Skump starting to heat up here. Four and one on a two kill streak. Has that scare, but he's making way towards that Trinity rocket. He peeks around the corner. He takes out Royalty as well. General is now left alive to try to clutch a one versus two. And he's going to be behind. Can he get the kill there? No, he's not going to be able to. Skump continuing, and he is uh, going to get that Trinity rocket as well. General hesitated right there. I think he was trying to wait and see if he could line them both up, but instead both options Optic players turned around, and that, that bit of intentional hesitation actually works against him here. Skump is now 75 points from the bombardment, and he's glowing gold. This is going to be a really difficult search for them if he can get that final score streak. With most of this map being outdoors, and they can just favor that outdoor side of the map if they want to, Optic does have a little bit to work with here. Let's see here, Skump.
making very good progress towards that reactive armor as well. Here, just round number four. Does have those streaks as well. 75 off the bombardment. We know how big that can be on a map like Crusher. The jammer grenade is going to come in, so now it's going to get the call out for the players to start to rotate around. It's going to be one player uh -oh. coming from middle map. It's going to be General. Was he spotted by player six? That's going to be Karma there. Big one-on-one -on -one gunfight coming down. Shots are going to be traded back and forth, but now it's a three versus three. Scumpy, six and one, getting that bomb down for the team. Let's take a look at what's the, uh, the action's unfolding up here. He's on a seven kill streak. Someone stopped this man. He's also fully streaked out, finding another close range engagement. He can't be stopped. Shuts down Proto, a player to watch in this series, but it still works out in favor of Enigma 6. That's got to be scary for Enigma, or for Enigma 6 right now. Even though they won this round, Scump has fully streaked out, so that could work out for them in the later rounds. See, it gets to a point, we're so used to formal being consistent time in and time out. He's sitting at 0-3 in a search and destroy. Didn't have the greatest hard point match either. Is he going to be able to turn it around? That's the question. I, I fully expect formal formal is definitely capable of, of, of doing something like that. Turning around what is a poor performance in the middle of the map. It's something that he's done in, against, you know, more prestigious matches in the past. So I think it's something he's capable of. Now the question of whether or not he will, that's just going to depend on how we see what we see from the side of Enigma 6. And speaking of which, we are on with them for this offensive round as they are once again favoring a four hit, nearly four hit to this B bomb site while Optic is all surrounding A. It's been every single offensive round you've seen Enigma 6 go to B, and that's because Optic Gaming completely gives it wide open. They've been playing heavy A Free defense. Bomb the bomb plant is going to be coming in there from Cade as well. The players are going to start to back up now. That's Proto in general at the front lines. You're going to see a streak come into play here. That one's going to be from Scum, and the break comes in. He picks up a two-piece there on Cade in general, and now it's going to be Proto and Royalty trying to fight for their lives. Royalty now left in a one versus four situation. That bomb is down, but he's going to be so hard to clutch this one, and Scum continuing his mad streak 11 and 2 for Scumpy. So I'm trying to figure out what's going through the heads of Enigma 6 right now. I know they have to know that Scump had score streaks and that he worked up that bombardment because he's the one that planted the bomb, right? So my question is, did they just hit that site and just they just want him to get rid of the bombardment quickly so they don't have to deal with it later on in the game? Or do they forget? I just want to know what the play call might have been right there because it didn't look like anyone was in range of just sitting inside when the score streaks came in. Two of them died almost instantly after the plant. Yeah, we saw the same defense coming in every single time throughout the game, but it worked out in their favor there with those streaks in hand. So a good play call from the side of the green wall here. Now Karma is going to have that bomb in hand. You're going to see a four-man hit from both teams going into this A site. The flechettes are going to be going out. One player is going to be sneaky here. That's going to be Royalty. We're going to jump on board with him. Should be able oh, to at least pick flank. up two kills here. He's going to be able to spot one. Crim6 picks up two. Now Royalty's left alive in a one versus two. He's going to be able to find one there on Crim6. Now it's a one versus one versus formal. Clutch kill bonus incoming. If he can get this last kill, that's a big bonus towards his scarab. It's pretty far from it, but the bonus and the value of these kills is what means the most here. Formal, who has yet to find a kill. Right now would be a big round to do it so they can have his team go up 4-2 in the map. You take a look at the mini map here. You can kind of see both these players don't have, they really have no idea as to where the enemy team is. They just know that they don't want to be get up, caught off guard. So checking all the corners they can, being as unpredictable in their movement as they can. But he still has to get that bomb and put it down. It looks like Proto is seconds away from doing it. Royalty, excuse me. Royalty, I believe, did spot Formal there. Formal is going to come out on top of that gunfight. You see the quick turnaround coming in there. Now Optic Gaming leads Enigma 6 by two rounds. The score is going to be 4-2. to two. You see Formal, maybe this is what he needs, just a clutch of one versus one to start to gather that momentum up to try to change the game that he is having. You see here, they're going to be going onto the defensive side. It's going to be Enigma 6 going back on offense. So let's see if they throw anything different here. Like we said, we've seen constant B hits from Enigma 6 on offense, and it looks like it's going to be the same. Cade is going to be your bomb carrier once more. He's staying at 5-5. Five five. They had the Scarabs in play as well. Making very good progress at Centurion. You're seeing the same defensive setup, and because Scump still has that Trinity Rock in his back pocket. Again, four hit from Enigma 6. Optic still has yet to respond to it. I think that they're just trying to, like, I think Enigma 6 continues to call their bluff and expect them to all be over at the at the A site, but this is just kind of odd play here. Most of the kills going in favor of Enigma 6. Three there. Scump finds one onto General, though, and now he finds himself in a one versus two, being outnumbered, and you know here he's out on the minimap. He should be shut down quickly. Sticky situation there for Scump as his teammates really all dropped as soon as that scare popped. And Royalty is going to be the player in your final kill cam. See him taking out Scump there in lab. And now they're going to get a round on the board. Now just down by one to Optic Gaming here. It's going to be you, Optic back on the offensive. If you are just tuning in, we're, we're at a very neck and neck search and destroy. Game two here between Optic Gaming and Enigma 6 on an elimination match.
This moment is huge for these two teams as they try to make their rounds toward the grand finals of this $200,000 Call of Duty tournament. Two of the best teams that we have to offer here in the Call of Duty World League are going at it and search and destroy. Lots of engagements are going down mid-map. General's going to pick up the first kill there, and then Optic Gaming going to pick up two of their own. General's going to rock the FTL jump. He's not going to be able to take out Formal. He gets a nice snap, and now it's going to be Proto left last alive, and Formal is going to be able to clean up that one too. Now Optic Gaming just one round away from tying up the map series 1-1. You can hear the OG fans roaring. They're finally getting behind their team. They want to cheer them on to close out this map and tie up the series. Enigma 6 fans at home, you want someone to shut down Scump. You want someone to have formal continuing to not produce in this search and destroy. But he's bouncing back. He got two kills. Scump is a blessing for formal at the moment. So let's see how things unfold as they still have access to score streaks and they're only one round away from taking it. General's gonna draw first blood there on Crim6, getting a very aggressive in that middle map, and now the next kill is gonna come in. That one's gonna be on Formo, and Proto takes him out as well. So now two players just left up for Optic Gaming at the start here in this search and destroy. It's gonna be Scump, the man who's on fire. He finds the first kill for the side of Optic Gaming. Let's see how this one goes. Two versus three. Karma finds one as well. So now it's just a two versus two. Optic Gaming cuts the deficit down to even. Opti Gaming has one of their stronger players alive at the moment, that's Scump and Karma, who's had a pretty decent series up to this point. So we've definitely been keeping our eye on. They have to win this two versus two, but they have to do it in 20 seconds, as well as getting the bomb defuse. Kane and Proto shut that dream down real quick. Bringing that round count up to four, five, working their way through that deficit. They hope to force the round 11, Dirk. There's so much pressure here on Enigma 6 to try to take this one because Optic Gaming is undefeated in Uplink this entire event. They have not lost one. So you know that has to have Enigma, Enigma 6 shaking just a little bit. A team that's hot on a game mode like that. So this is going to be a crucial win for them. Let's see what Optic Gaming plans to do here. Scump still does have that Trinity Rocket. The active camo is in the hands of Karma as well. And from the side of Enigma 6, Proto has that ready to go. So let's see if he decides to maybe get a little bit aggressive and burn that camo here. He's going to have General pushing out to middle map first. He's currently sitting at 6 and 9. Let's see how this one plays out. Optic Gaming playing base defense. It looks like they might be trying to go for a play to play around Trump, Scump's Trinity Rocket, and they do just that. He's getting the calls. He's going to hover it in the air. This gives him his team time to move across the map and make a hit onto that B site. That's exactly what they're doing. That bomb is going down while Scump picks up a kill on Proto. He finds the kill onto Proto. you got to wonder how Proto wasn't able to avoid that final rocket as they all rotate over, kills are going down and in favor of Optic. Karma still alive with his payload. Not much action in terms of utility on the side of Enigma 6. Cade looks for a big gunfight win onto Scump, who has been a terror for the team this thus far in the match. Finds a second kill, can't connect with the third. Optic Gaming ties up the series at 1-1, and that was a blast to watch through the eyes of Scump and Karma. And you're gonna, you're gonna see Karma there in your final kill cam, cleaning that one up. So now Optic Gaming fans at home, you can breathe a little. After that hard point win that Enigma 6 has, your team has tied this series up one win. to one. But now it's going to be going into uplink. And like we just brought up in that search and destroy, Optic Gaming is undefeated in that so far. Yeah, getting into our next game mode here, I'm going to be keeping a good eye on to Karma. And I'm also going to be looking for Proto to continue contributing. I think that Karma has been a good consistent factor for Optic Gaming. If they can get Formal to wake up, I think that this series becomes... 10 times more difficult for Enigma 6. But guys, we're going to cut to a commercial break, give these teams some time to, time to prepare for the remainder of the series, and we'll be back in a second with Game 3.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Championship Sunday here from CWL in Anaheim 2017, presented by PS4. I'm Dirk. I'm going to be joined alongside Foxy. We've already been bringing you guys some crazy action in this series that is currently tied up one to one. Enigma 6 looking very dominant in the respawn, looking pretty good in the search and destroy as well, to be fair. But when you have Scump dropping the numbers in those search and destroys that he does, it's going to be hard to stop Optic Gaming. But now Enigma 6 faces a very tough challenge. They're going to be going up against Optic Gaming and Uplink, a game mode they have yet to drop here at CWL Anaheim. Right, and to be fair to Optic, they came through this tournament pretty much winning every map. They were 12-0 up until their matchup against Luminosity Gaming. Steam rolled straight through Rise Nation, and now they're being faced with a new challenger that is Enigma 6, and one of the players that stands out to me is Proto. So let's go ahead and hop right into our key player matchup so we can talk a little bit about him, because he has been a monster in this series. He's been going up against Karma, who in both the hardpoint and in the search and destroy has been a very high impact player. In this G Fuel key player matchup, I want you to keep an eye on Proto's slaying potential, and I also want you to keep an eye on Karma's multi-kills that he's had around the objective, because he's been contributing a lot in that regard, Dirk. Yeah, and I think it's something to keep an eye on, too. We talked about Proto, as you said. You talked to the analysts as well as the other casters, and he's a guy to look out for. I think every single key player matchup that we've had for the side of Enigma 6, I think Proto has been the guy that we've highlighted almost every single time. You have Maybe to. Maybe one time as royalty, but when Proto is putting up those numbers that he does, I mean, the potential that we've seen so far this weekend, it's hard to not highlight him. Yeah, that man is nasty. Proto has been destroying, even through stage one, you can see just what this guy can contribute. I mean, he's just a monster. Who knew that when he joined this team, he would be able to keep up in, in slaying with so many top CWL teams, even on an international level, where he might not be very experienced. Yeah, now before we head into this uplink, let's do a quick recap here of that search and destroy between Optic Gaming and Enigma 6. You guys going to see the round count there. I mean, it was pretty split. You're just seeing a trend of win one for Enigma 6, two for Optic. Win one for Optic, and then, I mean, for Enigma 6, and then two for Optic Gaming once more. But it just went back and forth. Like we said, it was a nail biter, and Optic Gaming up taking it six to four. And then the player that we highlighted from Enigma 6, that one's going to be Cade. He finished that one with even KD of 1.0, finishing at eight and eight. And look at Scump, 16 kills in the search and destroy, six deaths. I think he had the bombardment in like round number five and he picked up two kills with it. He was absolutely going off in a 2.67 KD for him. And like we said, if Scump is playing like that in search and destroy, I mean, Formal wasn't even playing that great and they were able to come out to win, but it was just Formal picking up, slowly starting to pick up, getting those extra kills here and there as well. That's why Optic Gaming was finally able to take that Right, one. but it, the problem with them is it took so long. It shouldn't have even gone down that far, but with fail, fail, Formal, excuse me, failing to contribute up until that one one round that he won uh, that was just uh, that was just a very scary sight because Enigma 6 was looking pretty good on there and however Scump and Karma really able to cover up cover up that weakness and come out with a win in the end that bombardment in the Trinity rocket once one optic gaming some big rounds that game and actually with a score differential of two rounds those two rounds where Scump got the kills might have been the difference maker yeah it definitely was I mean it, it came right down to it like we said we saw the same defensive strategy come out from Optic every single time, and mostly the same offensive strategies coming out from Enigma 6, every, too. Yeah, every it round was just except a, for the last few. It was just A, site for Optic Gaming on defense, and B, on offense immediately for Enigma 6. And yeah. like you said, they tried to throw that curveball in there at the end. But now, let's focus into this next one. It's going to be, I believe, the throwback uplink. In your opinion, who does this favor? Are you going to go with Optic Gaming or Enigma 6? I look at Optic Gaming, but I, I feel like Enigma 6 does have the coordination to keep up with them. It's just that Optic Gaming has been so devastating in the past in this very game mode. We see that they're able to chain together mistakes that the enemy team makes and also big plays that their own team makes to just have a massive lead over their competition. I don't see too much in the corner of Enigma 6, so they just got to hope that they can make it to this hard point next up because this is going to be a tough map for them to win. Now, if there's a map for Formal to bounce back and it's going to be this one. This is one that you can control the entire game with the NV4 by getting into that power position on top of bridge. That's where you're going to see Formal getting into a lot of his engagement. It's going to be over by Lemon, by Diner, or on top of that bridge, Brunder right on top of the bike path as well. That's where you're going to look for Formal. Now, who's going to match up for him from Enigma 6? That is going to be the question. Is Proto going to be able to continue his slang? We've seen General bring out the MV4 at times as well to try to go head to head. But I think, I actually, it, I think it harms Enigma 6 when General pulls out that MV4. That's just my opinion because you're not getting that same aggressive play style that you're used to getting from it and that slang power. It kind of takes that away a little bit. I actually look on the side of Optic Gaming for Crim6 to do some damage with the MV4. He's been running it all weekend. He's been very devastating against really a lot of their competitions. Um, of course, Formal can go back and forth. We've seen some ERAD play out of him as well. So especially on a map like Throwback, I think we're going to see lots of subplay. And Royalty has the Karma 45 in his hands, a high fire rate SMG. 
that can keep up with the others at range. Let's see how much damage it can do. Yeah, that's one of the things that with the Karma, he brought it out yesterday, but it's one of those weapons that it has a, a, a different time to kill compared to the other submachine guns that in the game. Has a very high clip and a high, uh, high fire rate Magazine. as well, but it's not going to be able to do much when it comes down to those ERAD battles. So now the drone is going to be tossed forward there, and the two players are going to drop from the side of Enigma 6. Now, Kato Rolls, you have to try to fight off the push from Optic Gaming and four go down. Crim6 has that drone in hand. This should be a two-point play. You see the players from Enigma 6 there immediately choosing to overextend. This might be another relay for the side of Optic Gaming. Oh, they just gave Optic Gaming exactly what they needed, but these two players coming in from the tunnel can be the difference maker. It won't matter if they can't win the gunfights. Crim6 and Formal getting up in their face, fully prepared for the overextension due to the communication from the players still in Enigma 6's base, and they're starting things off with the bombardment. Dirk, I said this is exactly what you need to worry about with Optic Gaming. They are punishing Enigma 6 for their mistakes. In the first minute of this uplink, we see four points on the board, and Formal is already streaked out. We said if there's a time to turn it around his performance so far in this series, it is now sitting at 7-1. and one. He is going to be fully streaked out as well, making very good progress towards that FTL jump. Kate is going to be positioned in mid-map. Three players are going to be dead for the side of Optic Gaming. It's left for General to try to fight off that Optic Gaming push, but now they can make some forward progress with that drone. It's going to be in the hands of Royalty. So just until a few seconds ago, Cade, actually, or excuse me, Proto actually had as many kills as his entire team combined. Now you see them get that one point play in. It opened up off the back of Cade's two piece that he got on middle map. They're able to move through, put some points on the board. So let's see what they can do in the next three minutes. You see Royalty, he's off to a very slow start there. Does have a point to his name, but sitting at one and five. Like we said, it's just going to kind of get to one of those points is when do you put this karma away? When do you bring out the E-Red or the K-Bar to try to help your team there? You're seeing tagging up some shots, but all you're seeing is assists rain in. Scump is going to be in control of that drone. They're pushing straight towards Statue. One more player there to contest. That is going to be General. He shuts down Scumpy, but Crim6 is going to be there for the backup. The drone looked like it was going to try to go for the one-point toss, but it is going to fall short. A defensive stop from the side of Enigma 6. They toss the drone back towards middle map, but they still have to win this gun engagement to clear their base. They take out our key player here, Karma, who was trying to stay behind enemy lines and prove to be a nuisance, but Enigma 6 is keeping that pressure on. This is a team that is no stranger to aggression and to map pressure, and they can go gun on gun against Optic Gaming, but Karma with a two-piece will stop this play in its tracks unless Cade is able to respond like that. And you see Cade, he's right there with his teammate Proto backing him up while he has that drone in hand and very patient play coming from Enigma 6, but they're trapped in. The pinch is coming in through the window. It's going to be formal right behind him. He's going to get the beat down. Proto gets two, and now he's on a three kill spree. This could set them up for the one-point toss. He tries to throw the drone down at Crim6 to force him to grab it and to pull out his gun to win that gunfight, but he is not going to come out on top. We have now passed two minutes. Crim6 is going to throw that drone off for a reset. Crim6 stamps out that fire that was brewing inside Top Food. They're able to end that play and reset the drone and try and get on towards the offense. Karma finds two kills to open up an opportunity. We saw something similar with Cade. Let's see if Optic can replicate it, but on the opposite side of the map. They toss the drone for distance. It's thrown right back and Enigma 6. That was very well played from them and General is making the difference on middle map here. You're starting to see player 8. That's going to be General. If you look at the minimap, the amount of times you see him fly forward, the amount of two pieces that he has in this game thus far has been insane. He's been the big reason why the big breaks have started to come from Enigma 6, but they don't have much to show for it. The base defense for Optic Gaming has been absolutely stellar, but now you're going to see K try to dip and dive through this? that side and top green, but he's not going to be able to do that. And they're picking the tightest angle to go through for the side of Enigma 6. That's going to be so hard to get one point plays going through top green. It, that's, like a, that's an already difficult route to take it through, but then you're taking it into the face of Optic Gaming players that you know are going to be stacked up around fence and hay bales, and it fails every time. You want to see them kind of maybe push through that hay bale section itself rather than come out of that tight corridor as two and three players. We'll have to see if Enigma 6 can adjust to it, but with 40 seconds left in this half, they might not even have to worry about it going into the second round. Karma's going to go ahead. He looks like he's going to push through underpass, but now he does retreat. Ball is going to be thrown all the way over to Lemon. It's going to be General and Crew, but Royalty is now going to be the last alive. Karma picks up a big two-piece to halt that push from Enigma 6. Now in the final 30 seconds, it looks like Optic Gaming might be able to try to get a one-point toss off here, but it looks like it could be ending 4-1. to one. Skump able to finish the kill onto Karma. He actually looks away before the job is even done, knowing it's going to happen. Skump finds a two-piece. Crim6 with the support, and it looks like we're seeing another drone opportunity. Only one player in range to stop it, and that's Kay, who's now on respawn. Two more points on the board. Optic Gaming is looking fantastic coming into this second half, Dirk. What can Enigma 6 do to respond here? 
The only positive you can look at from the side of Enigma 6 is you can see the Optic Gaming players there on your screen. The one thing that they can do is they're going to be going onto the side where that spawn trap is going to be easier to get. This is the situations where you look at Proto, you look at General. These are the guys that you need to start going off and slaying inside of the look enemy the base. This is how the way Enigma 6 is going to come back in this one. It's not that much of a margin. Only five points separating these teams, and Enigma 6 is capable of this, but we said how dominant Optic Gaming is. Though being on the bad side, they're still going to continue that pressure and at least get one-point tosses off. They're looking at a sea of green and four hooks on the other side of the stage. Enigma 6 has a lot to work with, and team killing is not going to make it any easier. Drone in possession of Optic Gaming. It's cut pretty short because they didn't really have too much kill pressure on mid here, and as you can see with the kill feed lighting up yellow, they should be able to work their way through middle map as long as they can pick up the kills in the flank. General finds one. Now it's going to be three dead for Optic Gaming. One more player left That's to big. get deal with. And the beatdown comes in from General. And just like that, they get a dunk. And now they're set up for the spawn trap and the relay. But the streaks are going to be flying in. This is going to be from Formal. What better time to call in the streaks? They found themselves pinned in their spawn. But now it's going to be Optic Gaming bouncing right back. Formal fully streaked out. He has access to the bombardment. I mentioned that we needed to see him wake up after map one and two. He does just that. And using it to clear out the base to prevent the rally from the side of Enigma 6 is so big for Optic Gaming to continue that momentum that they had. They can try and force the issue mid, but Enigma 6 is already there. They need to wake up here soon. And yeah. Karma and Skump are well on their way to it. And Proto finds himself three Optic Gaming players around that corner. Skump does drop with that drone in hand, but they're able to trade out that kill immediately. Now look for them to try to get set up for the one point toss. Crim6 tosses that drone down, has the E-Red, so he's going to have the major advantage of any player coming inside. He's going to be able to get that kill, and now that gets him the overdrive as well. Crim6 with access to the active camo. Still needs some support here. He peeks the corner again, hoping he could get the beat down. But Cade, not falling for that, is going to be able to take him out and push that drone back towards middle map. So let's see how General follows it up with that two-piece. They should be able to move the drone up. Crim6 is a problem, though. Forwell is becoming one, too. As you can see, they're lighting up all gold on the scoreboard on the side of Optic Gaming. Three payloads to work with. And with Enigma6 trailing behind by three, that's going to be really difficult to respond to. When you see K getting some shots there, but Scum gets the nice turn on him. Now four players flooding straight through the middle of the map. They toss four for yards. Crim6 has that overdrive ready to go, and you start to see the payloads coming into action. They have the two main payloads that you want in uplink, active camo, and overdrive. The bomb armor is going to come in. Formal's pushing forward, and it should be a dunk here. Optic Gaming now leads 8-3. to three. E6, you're in trouble. Three minutes of play left here, and you still don't have your payloads while Optic continue to pour it on. They're looking like they're going to go up 2-1 in this series, but with two and a half minutes to work with, let's not count out the team that was able to stomp them in hardpoint this series. It's looking really good for Optic Gaming, though. It's going to be a tall task to take out the undefeated Optic Gaming in uplink so far here at CWL Anaheim. But now they do get three players down. So we'll see how this one does go. Just looking to play some defense. And now Cade is going to be the drone here. He picks that up, waiting for his teammates' support. Looks like they're trying to favor this middle map, but they Ooh, have to Krim. worry about Crim6, who's going to be over here by top bridge. Has that E-Red in hand as well. Spots the player in top green. Just needs to get some more shots in. Cade is one shot, and now he is going to be dead. Looks like Optic Gaming should be square here to get some more points. Karma toss that drone down. The teammate support's going to come in, but Royalty's able to shut it. And Crim6 gets the overdrive. He's going straight Krim. through. Getty, trying to go for the two-point play, and that one goes in as well. 10-3. Optic Gaming. If you want to know how to play with the E-Rat on middle map, watch the last 30 seconds of this match and through the eyes of Crim6. He finds those two mid-range engagements when Enigma6 didn't even know he was there and then continues to force the issue on the objective with overdrive and what looks like a, a game-ending play. Enigma6 has a minute and a half to score seven points and Optic has done a lot more with a lot less. Look at the slang coming from the side of Optic Gaming. You have Skump and Karma both dropping 27 apiece. Having a very excellent game there in the slaying department now with one minute and 20 seconds left. All Optic Gaming needs to do is just hold that draw. One player's on the hunt from behind. That's going to be Proto, but that's going to be traded out. But his teammates are coming in support from Blue. It's going to be General leading the charge. And is he going to get the kill there on Formal? No, he's not going to be able to. And he will be taken out there. The drone going to be tossed out once more. Enigma 6 trying to do everything they can to stay alive. Who has the streaks coming in this time? I wonder. It's going to be Crim6. He finds oh. one as Formal finds one with the K-Bar. A clean sweep of the Enigma 6 players. And that drone is going to be reset. The green wall. Are you satisfied? Look at what we're seeing from Crim6. Six and Karma right here taking over in this uplink. We're seeing a payload come out from Karma to pave the way for Skump with his ERAD and the drone. They continue to put points on the board. Enigma 6 is looking like they've never played uplink before on this map. OG is stomping them. And that has to be a good sign as we head into map number four, which is hardpoint. And that's been OG's bread and butter, Dirk.
That's really scary for E6. So many, I feel like, of Optigaming's kills came from those defensive stops. I mean, that was one of the biggest things that I can highlight. You saw in Nivea 6, they were struggling a lot, getting that drone and trying to run it straight through Ticket when they had no teammate support. It led them to Optigaming basically being gifted those defensive stops. Now, Proto just trying to get some points up on here, but right now, it's not really going to do much as the active camera. He's going to go in for the two-point play, so score is now 12 to 5. But it is going to be Optic Gaming taking the 2 to 1 series lead over Enigma 6. And we're going to be jumping into a hard point after this uplink. OG fans in the crowd, in the venue, are so ecstatic to see the team bring it back here after that horrible map one that they had. You can see just as close as they possibly can be. God could actually just reach over and tap Krim on the shoulder and say, hey, dude, good job. Great work, man. You see all the fans there. The, the green wall runs very deep. If you guys don't know, you see any pictures of them inside the venue, so even on the main stage as well, you see all the seats completely filled up. And then when they're on the side stations, it's hard to just try to maneuver around the venue because they like go a really all sweaty the, crowd of people. Yeah, they go to all <laughs> the way back to the booths of where everybody's standing too. So green wall runs deep. And I mean, that's what you expect when you have the number one esports organization in Call of Duty. Right, so let's take a quick recap for anyone that might be tuning in. You are witnessing what looks like an Optic Gaming close to the series. A strong search and destroy performance from both Skump and Karma turned into an even stronger uplink performance by the entire team. As Enigma 6 looks like they used all their steam in that hard point. What can they do here once we get into this Scorch hard point? We'll have to see. Winning two hard points against a team like Optic Gaming is a very tall order. But if E6 wants to stay alive in the series, they have to do just that and then win that game five. The reason this is going to be so great is because Scorch is one of those more cl like close contested maps other than Frost, but that's only for Uplink. It's one of those that caters to the aggressive play style, and you have two very, very aggressive teams in Enigma 6 and Optic Gaming. But the question is, are we going to see a game five? If, and, and if Enigma 6 is able to replicate that first Harper performance, it's going to be hard to stop. Proto is going to be the man. Our eyes are going to be locked on, like we've been saying throughout the entirety of this series as well. But I think it's general. He needs to just reign true on this map. This is going to be a man that needs to go off for his team to try to force this game five. Otherwise, they will be eliminated here at CWL Anaheim. And you know, the new guy, Royalty, I, ha I feel like we haven't gotten to talk about him that much this series. It doesn't seem like he's had nearly as big of plays as the rest of his teammates. There have been several shining moments for the likes of Cade, uh, Proto, and General. So let's actually take a look at the box score and see how that map progressed because oh, what a stomping from the side of Optic Gaming. You can see Proto did his best, but it just wasn't even close to enough. And we talked about, oh, Optic Gaming was on the good side. That's why they put on so many points. You look at the second half going onto the quote unquote bad side, and they were able to drop six there as well, giving them 12. And they were six struggling very hard on the so called bad side with one. Then on the good side, they were able to finally string together some dunks, but it only led them to get five points there. Foremost, the player that we highlighted got off to a hot start and was a big reason Optic Gaming stayed in the lead in this one. He was able to use that Trinity Rocket off the respawn, completely yeah. stop the setup that Enigma 6 had. He finished with 19 kills and a .95 kill to death ratio. But look, six scores to his name as well. That is going to be three dunks. And Dirk, let's talk a little bit about what makes these sides advantageous here. That's what Enigma 6 is working with in the second half. Uh, it's just so easy, not easy, but it's so favorable to get into that back bowling alley position to watch for those spawns towards blue and the one time that they were able to do it we saw those score streaks coming in from optic they couldn't rally those points and try and climb up that deficit that they had set up for themselves and optic just did it better on both halves yeah it's so powerful just because you get to a point where if you're a professional team and you sit there and you're like okay we know there's gonna be two players on our base now we need to overextend and in that time that it takes to go all the way through barn to try to wrap around through the enemy's underpass they're already gonna at least have two dunks in so that's gonna be four points already on the board and now you can try to attack through tunnel as well, but you're coming through such a narrow way. So that's going to be one of the hard things in this. But jumping into the hard point, it's going to be Scorch. Will Enigma 6 be sent home packing? And will Optic Gaming go through? That is going to be the question. We're going to start off this one with the green wall. And it's going to be on board with Formal. Elimination match here, guys. Optic Gaming is one map away from closing it out. Enigma 6 started off hot. They seem to have slowed down a bit as the players of Optic Gaming, namely Scump, Karma, Crim6, have just gone off. Proto opens it up with a double kill. And that's a very good sight for what, could, what is to come in this hard point. And immediately the flying is going to come in from Enigma 6. And we already see Proto off to a 3 and 1. On start general is going to be the lone player inside of that hill. See him getting in the nice line of sight. The optic gaming players currently split. You see one of three and two and four on the opposite sides of the map. Probably doing everything he can to try to hunt down this player in this back factory. He's going to get into an engagement, but it's going to be Skump coming out on top there. Now, Optic Gaming still trying to fight for control of this bridge. Currently, it's going to be contested with Formal inside of the hill and from the side of Enigma 6. That is going to be Cade. 
formal body him, gets that double kill on Tomatoes, patience wears off as he gets the team support. That was actually a really good play right there for Foreman to be able to take over mid-map, get his team that scrap time, and allow the rest of them to rotate over to Turbine without having to worry about too much pressure coming in from that middle doorway of Warehouse. Now if we take a look at their mini-map, Enigma 6 pouring it on from the top, sending three players into that anchor spot that's going to be so difficult for the remainder of Optic Gaming to handle, they clear it right out. Great play and awesome gunfight wins from Enigma 6 there. And we know how hard this hill is going to be to break here at Turbine. Look for General. This could open things up if Crim6 is able to win this gunfight. General gets all the way down to one shot, so he's going to retreat over here to Lava Pit. He's going to be able to get this kill. He knows Crim6 is coming around. Royalty picks up a nice two-piece inside, and he's starting to get things heated up. This is a guy who said we haven't really talked about him as much, but this could be the chance where he steps up and takes over the slang. But still, Enigma6 holding strong. You're going to see the Scarab come into play there from Formal. Not going to get much from it. Gets a little intel where the players are going to be, but an excellent hold here from Enigma6 getting close to the full 60 seconds. Yeah, that early break just spelled out the remainder of the hill for Enigma6. You see them mounting a big lead here. Optic Gaming realizes they can't push that anymore, so they set up on the opposite side of the map. That's why you see Formal able to kill Royalty who was running into his aim down sight assault rifle. They have the setup for another big 60 hard point. Green Wall, this is where your team can close this deficit and this is actually one of their better hills on this map. Yeah, if you look back to the last series they played against Rise, this is one that they got, I believe, close to 120 seconds just off of this hill alone. Scump is going to be the player inside, and when you have Formal and Crimson slaying outside, it's going to make Scump's life just easy. He hops outside of the hill. Nobody in there to collect the time for Optic Game, but one does go in. Now you're going to see the attack coming in from Skybird. It's going to be Proto leading the charge. No teammate support. He's immediately oh going to be gosh. taken out there by Scump and Karma, and you already see Optic Gaming is clawing back into this one. They should have the rest of the time unless player five, that's going to be K if he's able to do anything, he starts off with getting his first kill. I think this hill's so difficult for a lot of teams because it requires so much communication due to how many entry points there are and the little things that you can do to give your teammates slight advantage when breaking it. Optic Gaming has that communication down pat, so it's really difficult to sort of get the edge on them in any direction, and they're just able to hold down what looked like the entirety of the hill, finding their way, almost tying, tying up this game as they move over to Drill. Yeah, but Proto finds himself in a sticky situation. Put him has the meat in between the bread of Optic Gaming, if you shall say. Crim6 is now going to be inside of the hill. He's on a seven kill streak. Nine and four is what he's sitting in. He has that Trinity Rocket. One more kill should secure him this bombardment as well. Karma is going to fall inside of Observation Deck. Going to have some players watching from the back there, but Crim6 just needs to try to stay alive because that bombardment could be absolutely huge. He spots one. He's able to get it, and Crim6 is continuing his spree, but now he has earned that bombardment as well. But Enigma6 takes over the hill, but another flood is coming in from the side of Optic Gaming, it's going to be Karma getting the kill. Crim6 lashing out with that seven kill streak to award his team some score streaks. We saw just how strong they were able to be in the uplink for Optic Gaming. I expect similar usage here in this hard point, and he's not stopping. Pouring, on, pouring it on with the NV4, he was able to find a kill, but you see Enigma6 bites right back, finds the scrap time, and now we're right back to the beginning. Take a look at your scoreboard. Two evenly matched hard point teams on this scorch at the moment as we're nearly tied up in our second set of hills. Optic Gaming is set up nicely for this one, but we saw how well Enigma 6 could break it, and they got a lot of time off of this one. Compared to the likes of Optic Gaming, FTL Jump is going to be rocked there by Formal. He's going to be able to find one, but now the player is going to be inside. That is going to be Proto, and Scump is going to be there for support. Now Optic Gaming regains control. Spawns are going in favor of the side of Enigma 6 with 30 seconds left here in Bridge. Look for one more push. The pinch is starting to come around from Cade, but he is immediately going to be shut down. This is an elimination match. They want to continue to grow that deficit. Optic Gaming leading by 20 seconds, but Enigma 6 bites back regardless. And this, is ne this next hill coming up is actually one that E6 was able to hold very well after the initial break of Optic setup. But this time, they're getting both the middle hill time, and it looks like they're getting spawns toward Turbine, too. So let's see how they work with this advantage. And this player pushing in right here. You see the spawns get split, so now it's just a toss-up. These gunfights are going to be huge here on Turbine. Scump wins one. One more player is going to be inside of the factory. That is going to be Proto, but he's waiting for that teammate support. One player is going to be behind. That is going to be Karma, and he shuts him down. But more of the flood coming in from that bottom side. You see the three Enigma six arrows. First kill is going to go towards General, but immediately it's going to be traded out. Right there was a failure of Proto to read the spawns from Opti Gaming, and Karma took full advantage of it by firing into his back. And now they're continuing the flood down hallway. Crim6 all in his lonesome, can't win the gunfight, neither can Formal. And Cade finds a big double kill right there, continues to pour through hallway, and he wants to kill all of Optigaming by himself. He continues to spawn them way far out towards Cade. 
And that's so tough to fight back from as E6 is just milking the entirety of this hill once again. Yep, and now we see another great hold coming in from the side of E6. A royalty turns, gets scuffed, but one more player comes up to follow. That is going to be formal. So the remaining time on Turbine is going to be going towards Optic Gaming. You see the rotations coming in from Skybridge. One player is already going to be set up inside the hill. That's going to be Karma. But this is where Enigma 6 can try to get the break. It's going to start here with Cade coming from the backside. We saw Optic was able to hold this hill very well last time. Crim6 ended it on a 7 streak to be fully streaked out. However, the kill's going in favor of Enigma 6 here. But Formal finding that last one might be what puts OG over the edge. It's just Proto all on his lonesome here. The rest are flooding in from the front. Cade gets there just in time, Dirk. Yeah, but Crim6 is going to find a kill inside, but kills being traded back and forth between both teams. Now Crim6 just doing everything he can to stay alive, and just like that, Enigma6 is finally able to break the Optic Gaming setup, but now they have to worry about Karma in front. They are going to be able to eliminate him as well. And now Enigma6 getting some very good time on this 160 as a score for them, and rising to Optic Gaming's 142. Yeah, and I mean, we're seeing EG, E6, excuse me, not EG, responding to this hill a lot better than they did in the first rotation, where they, let, they just fed Crim6, right? They couldn't get into this hill to do anything. The gunfights were easily in favor of OG, and now we're seeing them fight back and get a decent amount of time here. And they find themselves with a 30-second lead coming into drill, so E6 might be adapting a little bit better than Opti Gaming here as we get into our third rotation. Crim6 does have this Trinity Rocket ready to go. This is one of those hills where you can decide to hover that, force the players into security, or force them into observation deck. So look for him to try to use that one off of the respawn as Enigma6 is getting some very good time to start off this drill hill. Go ahead and jump onto Crim6, see what he's going to do. That Tornado Rocket is going to come into play. Just going to hover it here. He knows getting the calls for his team. They double push the player inside security, and that is going to be Karma coming out on top. Two players drop for Enigma 6, and now this is where the break comes in for Optic Gaming. Formal comes Formal. around with the pinch, and just like oh. that, Optic Gaming regain control. The dirty double following oh with the triple God. connects with four. That's five kills. Formal is untouchable right now. Formal. A massive play to give his team control of the drill hard point. That and is, the crowd is roaring. You could not let that happen if you're Enigma 6. You let Formal get enough time to reload and pick up the 2 piece there, which made his streak 5. But the game is still continuing, and Optic Gaming has lost control. The 200-point mark is about to be surpassed here if they get the rest of this time. So let's see how this one goes. The Flood is going to be coming into middle map. It's going to be Optic Gaming, the first team there. Optic is coming into the third rotation of Hills with Formal feeling probably the best adrenaline rush he's had in the past couple of minutes. That was an awesome play out of him, and you wouldn't expect anything less from someone of his caliber. E6, though, using the camo to try and break middle hardpoint. They can't make anything from it. Optic wipes everyone except Royalty, but he knows he can't fight this alone. That's a waste of camo right there. They, they thought they had a play ahead of them, but it gets shut down so quickly. Some premature shots coming in there from Proto with that, trying to get the active camo player. That was Karma inside of the hill. But now Karma overextends in general, picks up a two-piece. Now this Hulk opt to give me push just for a little bit, but Formal is going to come in. The man is on fire, 27 and 18 for him. One more player slides inside. That's going to be Royalty. He dropped as well. Cade is going to be outside of the hill to try to contest, but now Optic Gaming have taken the lead, and it continues to rise. But this is going to be a crucial here. It could end here here for either team. So let's see how this one does go. Royalty is going to be set up in the lower part of the map. This hill has been E6's so many times throughout this map. Royalty looks to keep it that way as he pushes out elbow. Getting way too antsy, shaky shots. That sensitivity making him fly all over the place. Luckily, General and Proto are there to keep up. Enigma 6 realized their tournament life is on the line. 30 seconds separate Optic Gaming from closing it out, but E6 is in control. Let's see what Optic can do as they push in from security as the kills go in favor of, of, of E6. Optic spawns farther and farther out and this gets more difficult as every second passes. Enigma 6's setup here is just so great. They aren't able to get it. They're forcing Optic Gaming to spawn all the way in back rock. One player just sitting inside the hill that's probably soaking up the time but he has Cade, General, and Royalty slaying inside and out and Royalty picks up a two piece to halt that Optic Gaming push even oh, more. No. Now just close to closing this game out. If Optic Gaming contests we will be going to another hill but it's looking so damn good for the side of Enigma 6. Proto needs to get this kill arm scuffed the reactive armor comes into play. Is he going to have to pick up the kill? But we oh. will be going over towards Hangar at one second separate. No! It's going to be the game, and Enigma 6 stays alive. Enigma 6 close it out in a big way. They don't let Formal's five-piece get into their heads. They bring it right back and remain consistent on what was their best hill throughout that entire map. Optic just couldn't answer on that money hill. And in the end of what was an intense close hard point, E6 edges them out and forces the game five in this elimination match, Dirk.
it looked like Skump was just about to get enough time in there. It was separated by like 0.5 seconds. If I had to go off the straight off the top of my head, we were this close to going over towards Hangar where we've seen Optic completely dominate the entire time and they had the setup ready to go as well. Yeah, but heartbreaking it like, loss. It looked like they were kind of like betting on that they didn't have enough time or something because they were very slow on their pushes. Now granted they were spawning really far out, but it just looked like E6 had that under control from start to finish. They had the right mindset with Scum going to that reactive, just try to stay alive as long as possible, and he did, to be fair. But Proto had him there on that last gunfight, and that made them win that. But now we are going to a game five to see who stays here at CWO Anaheim. But that will be coming up after this quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. you're just tuning in here we are live at the call of duty world league anaheim open presented by the playstation 4 we're heading into game five between optic gaming and enigma six in an elimination match i'm fox i'm joined by dirk here for this cast and these two teams have had some crazy highlight worthy moments in this series and one of them was them pretty much just watching Formal play the game as he got a five-piece. Well, yeah, it looked it, like a five-piece at least. It definitely was, but then you can go ahead and get that all you want, but Enigma 6 came out with the win. And that's they still closed the map. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the things there, too. So, guys, we're going to quickly jump into a box score the previous Harpoon game before we do jump into this search and destroy. And, Fox, I just want you to look at this, and what immediately jumps out to you? Well, how about the fact that... <laughs> There's 130 seconds on Turbine. That is a laughable difference. Optic Gaming, that is just a, that, that hill specifically in this map was, was just a horrific disappointment for them. That can't happen. And you can see Enigma 6 takes full advantage of that, finds the end of the game. Despite some big plays out of the side of Formal and Crim 6, it just wasn't enough. 
And we see, uh, we see them close out the map there. A lot of hill time there coming from Proto. That was our key player, our G Fuel key player here in the matchup against Karma, who didn't really seem to contribute a whole lot in the hard point last map, but there's still an S&D to be played, and that's really where he went off this series. Yeah, and they, something that you don't usually see, the hill time on drill completely split 42 to 42. But you have to give it up to for Proto's OBJ work. Now, necessarily, we brought it up. Proto was just sitting inside of the hill, but his three teammates were completely outside slang. He was getting a lot of that time there in the turbine, posted up on the generator box, just watching to see on that wall run. But like we said, when you have your three teammates clicking all cylinders, it's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, you don't really have to do it. You don't have to shoot your gun. The only time I think I really saw him shoot his gun, and at least on that last turbine hill, was at Skump when he flew through with the reactive armor. Right, but getting into the search and destroy, guys, we're slowing things down a little bit. Going from a fast-paced, aggressive respawn, we're getting into search and destroy. So let's ex let's look at some of the players that we typically expect to contribute in these high-pressure moments. Because remember, Optic Gaming and Enigma Six are in an elimination match. Optic has had to make that losers bracket run. Let's take a look at Formal. He's someone that is constantly going off for them in these moments. He does not crack under the pressure. You've seen all his stats across the tournaments. Take a look at what he's doing right now. Just basically Matthew Piper, right? That's what we're typically used to seeing. KD 1.38 in Uplink, a 1.38 as well. Then in Hardpoint, he's going to get himself a 1.26. Had a slow start to this series, but he's been finally been able to pick it up. And I think that big turning point came inside that Uplink. He carried it over to the Hardpoint, but now is he going to be able to carry it into Search and Destroy? Right, and just to be specific, these statistics that we're looking at from Formal are across the entire tournament. This is not series specific, so very impressive stuff from Formal, who despite starting off slow has definitely brought it back from the uplink and on so I look to see what he can do in this game five here on the side of Enigma 6 though we've seen that Proto has been no slouch across many of these maps Cade is also contributing in a very big way despite not putting up massive numbers so I want to give him a quick shout out too from the side of Enigma 6, this needs to be the royalty show. He's the guy yesterday against Evil Geniuses who was able to make some big plays. He was able to clutch up in 1 versus 2, 1v1s as well. But it came down to the 1v1 with Parasite, which he did end up losing. But he went huge for them in that search and destroy mm -hmm. and sort of a, a win, move forward, or you're going to get bumped down to loser's bracket match. He did everything he could. He dropped double-digit kills as well. So this is my guy with the pressure with their backs against okay. the wall. So you're looking at the new guy. You're I'm expecting looking, royalty to do something here. The Canadian I, monster. I just really feel like, like you, you can't – I feel like we're doing a disservice to Cade to not mention the big plays that he's had. I mean, there have been so many double kills that he's gotten to stop the drone in Uplink. He had four plants in the Search and Destroy when Enigma 6 was hitting that B site over and over again. No hesitation to play that objective. I feel like he's been contributing a lot. Even in the respawns, stopping Optic Gaming on the rotation, he was always the player ahead, watching that cut as the front line. So I look to see him do some damage here in this S&D. Oh, it's going to be intense as the players do load up here. The map is going to be throwback. The game mode that we all know and love is going to be search and destroy. So much pressure on the boys from Optic Gaming right here after a rough st after a rough finish in the playoffs. Now coming into this, they could be going home to Enigma 6, but map number 5 is underway. We're going to start this one off with the offensive side, and the guy I said to watch, it's going to be Royalty. He will be the bomb carrier as well, and that B site is completely wide open. All wide open for the offensive play of Enigma 6. And Man, this is going to be the start of what should be a crazy search and destroy. It seems like Optic Gaming and Enigma 6 in the later stages of these tournaments always seem to put on a show. Crim6 starting things off with a kill onto Proto for first blood. You see, they have a bomb plant in a position where you can watch it from that back blue area. Now it's just a question, how are Optic Gaming going to attack this? You have Crim6 with an E-Rat, Skump as well. Karma has the K-Bar, so look for him to put down some shots. But this is where Formal is going to come big. He's coming around here on the flank. He spots Royalty. He takes him out. Two more players over by Blue. 20 seconds trying to get this bomb defused. You see the four walls of green go towards the side of Enigma 6. And just like that, they are going to take the first round here. Defuse is going to be going to Karma. The OG fans roaring after every round cannot feel good for Enigma 6. They need to respond here soon. They just need... The best thing for them is silence between rounds. Honestly, in a situation like this, that has to be demoralizing to deal with. It definitely does. And it all started there with Formal coming around on the pinch. He found himself two kills in that round. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the defuse because it would have been detonated by the time that he would have gotten there as well. But they do get the first round there on the board. So now let's see how Optic Gaming decides to attack here on offense. Again, Crim6 with the E-Rat in hand as well as Skump. Jammer grenade for Skump and the Flechette as well. Karma going to be pushing straight down onto this A site. The Flechette is going to go outside for him, but the four-man stack over towards mid is Optic Gaming's game plan. So far, no shots have been traded yet. No kills from Enigma 6 other than Cade's single kill last round. 
Karma looks to plant this bomb, but he knows there has to be someone nearby. Checking that corner, loses the gunfight to Proto, though, so he's going to maintain his strong position as well as eyes on the bomb. He needs to communicate that to the rest of his team. Kate is in a good position to protect it with them. Optic Gaming has a pretty big disadvantage to work with. Formal's getting himself into a position up in top ticky spots. One player, man, that's going to be General. Gets him tagged up to one shot. He's going to be forced to retreat, but that gets Scump to go ahead to try to get aggressive to take out General, but the health has been regen. See so, yeah, Formal and Scump are going to be able to do here. 40 seconds left to work with that bomb is down on the side of A towards Enigma 6's base. See how they're going to be able to play this one more player on site. The jammer grenade is going to hit. He's going to be able to take out Cade. One more player going to be directly around the corner. That is going to be Royalty and Proto. But no, just like that, it's going to be Enigma 6 getting the round on the board. There it is. E6 gets around on the board. And like I said, you just, you just want to hear golf claps at the end of these rounds. You really don't want to hear these OG fans screaming at you in such a high-pressure moment. And there it is as they get one on the board to tie things up here, Dirk. Formal's in a very sticky situation now with the MV4 towards that A site. You saw the pinch come in from Enigma 6. Great way to close out that round. So now tied up one to one as Enigma 6 heads back on the offensive. Cade is going to be your bomb carrier every single time for the side of Enigma 6. Seeing the hit onto A. The flechettes are going to go out as well. Royalty's getting very, very aggressive here. He's pushing straight up with that K bar, trying to find a player here towards this barn area. The first blood is going to be going to the side of Enigma 6. General finds a big kill. We got one E6 player behind enemy lines. He was going on a really slow flank here, but inevitably is able to find the kill and get two rounds on the board. E6 was looking good in the first, well, looking okay in the first SD on the offensive rounds, and they're looking to repeat that here in this search and destroy as we see Royalty closing it out in our round ending kill cam. A two to one lead now, like you said. If you're on the side of Enigma 6, you want to be winning these rounds because you know as soon as Optic Gaming gets a kill or they win a round, you're going to hear that crowd right behind you screaming and yelling for their team to try to pull this one out. Karma does have that bomb in hand. We're going to see a similar strategy. Two time are going to push mid. That's going to be Skump and as well as Crim6. They're going to be able to get some trades, but it's going to be Enigma 6 coming out on top of that one. Bomb looks like it might be going down, but no. Karma is just playing on that ace site, but now he's going to be left last line. Royalty. Royalty flies over That's top. That's an ace. And just like That's that. That's an ace. The Canadian Battle of Royalty comes out on top of this one over Karma. You're going to see him in your final kill cam. Royalty dons the crown, wiping away the entirety of the green wall and what felt like 10 seconds or less, making it look easy as he runs through them in that SD round. Let's take a look at his payload progress, man, as well as his score streaks. That's a big moment for him. See this, Royalty is getting very close to that reactive armor here in round number five. 125 off that Trinity rocket as well. See what he does here, pushing straight onto the site. This bomb is going to be going down. I'm wondering if Formal's able to get eyes on it, but General is going to come out on top in that MV4 battle. One more player around the corner. That's going to be Karma. Keep him and alive. just like that, one more player left alive for Optic Gaming. Skump finds one. Now it's just a one versus three. He turns around. He's able oh. to find Royalty. Can he find the first? He takes OK. Oh. <laughs> but no, the kills are going to come in, and it's traded, and Optic Gaming falls in that round. Their entire goal right there was to just get the quick plant, keep royalty alive. That's why you saw the NV4 player sitting behind him and looking over him. His life isn't important, it's royalty's life, and they do just that. Trying to continue those score streaks and that payload progress because an early reactive armor could mean the end of Optic Gaming's tournament run. This game five is the end of it for one of these two teams, and Enigma 6 has a massive lead built for them right now. Let's see if Optic is going to be able to bounce back here. The flechette comes in, the aggressiveness coming on from Royalty, but Scump is going to be able to counteract that one. Now, man advantage going towards Optic Gaming. See the two players positioned over by middle map. Karma has to go ahead to get this bomb down. Kate is laying down some shots, and Crimsix is going to come on top of that engagement. General, he's been on fire so oh. far, as well as Proto. Now Crimsix left in a one versus two. He fights one, but now it is Enigma 6 leading 5-1 to one over Optic Gaming in a win-or-go-home match. Enigma 6. Can they do it? Five rounds up against Optic Gaming's one in this elimination match. This is Optic's last chance. No more mistakes from here on out, but the lead that E6 has built for themselves, and not just the score, but payload progression, score streak earning. That's a lot to work through for five rounds straight, and General is approaching that bombardment. Let's keep an eye on this guy. So much utility to work with here. Can Optic Gaming do the impossible and come back? We've seen it in the past. 
Cade is going to be on that bomb site. He flows the flechette out, but if you see through the x ray, see all the players stacked there. Royalty is going to be able to find a kill, but it's immediately going to be traded out. So now it is a three versus three situation. The Scarab is into play. General is able to find one. That's going to freeze him in place More just streaks. for a little bit, but nobody is there for the More trade. Streaks. General has the Trinity Rocket in. He fires it down. He's not going to be able to pick up anything, but he is going to gather so much intel oh, for his team. This is a very expensive round from the side of Enigma 6. That's a Scarab and a Trinity Rocket gone, and he still doesn't even have the bombardment secured. So he needs to stay alive and find this bombardment if they lose this round. He can't do it. Crim6 with a big shutdown. He has to know how valuable that kill is. Traps the player on the bomb. That's a big stop right there. OG turns it around. The comeback. It all starts with just one round, and you continue one round at a time. Crim6 now just 100 off that Scarab there as well. And we have to go backtrack and talk about how much General just invested into that round. The Trinity Rocket as well as the Scarab. And they did end up losing. So now the side is switching. If you guys are just now tuning in, this is an elimination match between Optic Gaming and Enigma 6. Loser is gone from the tournament. Proto has that active camo, and General has the FTL jump to go as well. Let's see how Optic Gaming attacks this one. We're going to see the similar thing that we see in the last round, too. Two going towards mid. Karma, the bomb carrier, pushing over towards mid as well. Karma being the closest one to the Enigma 6 roster could be a little dangerous should they decide to get aggressive here. And it looks like that might happen here. One under underpass, player four, that's General. He catches him in his back. He doesn't have time to check the body for the bomb though. Proto with the camo play, spots a player on bus, has to win that gunfight. He does just that. Scump in a one versus three with the reactive armor, finds a clutch kill, Enigma 6 closes it out at 6-2. That is the end of Optic's run. And Optic Gaming, you are sent home packing. Enigma 6 comes out there on top. And we're going to get a look here at the final statistics for the side of Enigma 6. The player I said who needs to go off, but his entire team went off. Royalty drops eight kills. And we saw the aggressiveness every single time he was leading the charge for Enigma 6. A big reason they had those Ooh. success. Those first bloods are so crucial. Royalty just found his value in one match of Search and Destroy right here to this Enigma 6 roster. The new guy coming up in a big way alongside General, the team captain. They put so much into this series, and they're able to close it out against one of the best teams in the Call of Duty World League, shutting down one of the most winningest players of all time in the form of Crim6. This is a scary team on Championship Sunday. Make sure you follow the action here. But let's take a quick recap. As you can see, this is how the action unfolded. E6 off to an early start, and then Dirk, let him know what happened in this search and destroy uplink as OG stepped it up. <sighs> they definitely did. Six to four was on crush. There was a game that went right down to the wire, and the score shows six to four. But in the uplink, Optic still remains undefeated. I mean, and now we don't get to see him play anymore uplink here in this tournament. So still, they're undefeated in uplink for this one. They win that that's one a, 12 to five silver lining, right? in a dominating fashion. Then we go to Scorch Hardpoint. Another nail biter in Enigma Six came out on top of that one. Then the most recent map that you guys just saw was that throwback search and destroy, and it was all Enigma Six right from the beginning. Enigma Six crushes the, dream, the green wall as well well as the dreams of many fans for them to make that loser's bracket run this weekend. I encourage a lot of you guys that are watching to continue to follow this E16 throughout the rest of this tournament because that's a big statement to make to take down a team like that in, an, uh, in a game five elimination match. And they have to play against another tough opponent. Following that right up, Splice, our CWL stage one champions. That is going to be an interesting one to say the least. You guys see at the top there, loser's round six. It's going to be cloud nine going up against Evil Geniuses there as well. So now Enigma 6, they take out Optic Gaming. Now they have to go up against Splice. It's like they just can't get a break yeah. from all these great teams as well. But what a great Sunday hit has been just far, and we're just getting started. The strongest teams remain in the tournament, and Enigma 6 has to try and battle through the last few if they want that first place spot. Taking out Optic Gaming was probably one of their biggest obstacles, and now the next one is to come. That is the Splice European roster. So guys, I think that's gonna be it for us in this series. We're gonna cut to a commercial break before we get ready with our next series. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here live from Championship Sunday at CWL Anaheim 2017, presented by PS4. I am Dirk. Joined alongside me is Landon. We guys are going to be going to be bringing you a great match here. We have Cloud9 who struggled in day one, but they have found a resurgence and they have been climbing through the losers bracket. Three to one has been the map count for every match that they have played thus far. And Evil Genes has got the quick work in 3 to get knocked down to losers. Indeed they did. I want to go over this run that Cloud9 has been making. Of course, excuse me for looking down, but I just have to because the amount of teams is absolutely difficult to try and remember. So they take out ALG in game five. Last night, they ended up taking down FaZe in a 3-1 fashion. They beat E United in a 3-1 fashion. And they also just recently beat Red Reserve in a 3-1 fashion as well. And trying to extend that spree is this Cloud9 roster absolutely being a major nuisance when it comes down to that loser's bracket. Yeah, definitely. And on your screen, you're going to see the maps that we are going to be playing in this series. We're going to be starting off with Throwback Hardpoint. Then for Surge and Destroy, we'll be jumping right into Crusher. Then the uplink map is going to be Frost. And if we have to go to distance for four and five, it'll be a breakout hardpoint and a throwback Surge and Destroy. DB2, of course, loading in here toward Throwback Hardpoint hard point for map number one. Attack of the Saucer Clones. Be a good movie to watch. This might be a better one, though. Should be a fantastic series as we begin this one. Cloud9, Evil Genius is a best of five. Kicking it off here on Throwback and Dirk. Who are we watching to start us off? We're going to start off with Assault. Me and you stayed around to watch that phase match. And Assault had some choice words for Clayster. He's he been a man did. who had a slow start to the tournament, but he's been picking it up as of late as well. But First Blood is going to be drawn from the side of Evil Geniuses, and that is going to be from Nagafin. And nice shots there coming in from Nagafin early on. It's going to be starting off. Nice three and no. Of course, Nagafin not necessarily known to pull the MV4 at all times, but definitely doing work with it right now on a four spree and guaranteeing Evil Genius is a lot of early time right now. Unfortunately, it does drop, but that's going to guarantee you see that with, what the kills mean when it comes in a hard point. He completely clears out the entire left lane over toward Bike Path from his team's angle. That's going to guarantee EG a lot of seconds when it comes to this early train platform, which is a very difficult hard point to hold at that. And Evil Genius is getting a lot of good time here on the first one, but the spawns are going to be in favor from the side of Cloud9. Look for those rotations to start to come in, but you're already seeing it come on the wall run there. It's going to be Nagafin as well as Nameless. They're pushing straight into Barn, but they have players to deal with in the back. Some premature shots coming in from Nagafin there. Now the position is going to be given away. But look at Cloud9. They're perfectly fine. You say, you guys sit in there, and we'll try to execute a pinch. You see players one and three trying to come around, but Nagafin finds one, but it's immediately going to be traded out there by Egg and Priest and Exotic starting to go to work as well as the hill is being controlled by Cloud9. And some players that I definitely want to be watching out for either side, and I mean, honestly, for the side of Evil Geniuses, I mean, in some of the casts that we've had so far, Dirk, it has been the nameless show. Every time the EG has had their success, it's been due to the fact of that man there. Kind of acts in some cases as like a day from Epsilon. Nameless works the same way for EG. I'm also curious to see how Nogfin plays due to his fantastic start. His shot seems to be firing on all cylinders. So for EG, I'm definitely looking at both Nameless and Nogfin. Just as I say that, Ake, show me why. We should be looking at him as well. Seven spree for him, but you also have to be looking at the new recent additions to this roster, both Exotic and Priesta. From what I've been hearing and seeing from some of the analysts is that they have been absolutely going off, and Ake's showing why the veterans still do it just a little bit better as he's going to go on a nice spree and guaranteeing a lot of time when it comes down to Varn. But a number of different players to watch from Cloud9, but I've got my eyes on both Exotic and Priesta. 
definitely showing some glints of vintage Patty P there to start off this one. Had himself going on a nine streak. Now he's sitting at 11 and three and does have full streaks to go with too. But he's not going with the scare, the Trinity, the bombardment. He's gonna have that Trinity rocket, the scorchers, as well as the bombardment ready to go. And that can be def like really lethal. I mean, we see the scare coming to play at times, but that just shows how aggressive and how much more attacking you're gonna be. You're gonna see a similar setup from Nagafin as well on the kill streaks. But now this hill down up bike path is gonna be going towards Evil Geniuses. But here you see the Scorchers come into play, and Aix is going to find himself too. Nice play there from Aix, of course, using the streaks to go to use. 13 and 4 start for him. Not a guy that you're always going to see heavily when it comes down to the slaying battle, but he gets it done when he has to. The loser's bracket run has happened for a reason. It's been due to the fact of everyone, not just two or three players. It's been for the entire team in Aix. Showing why that's exactly the case is exotic. Starting to light it up when it comes down to bike path as well as the rotation will come in toward baseball field. It looks like the way that Cloud9 is rotating, they actually do get the scrap points as well as that next rotation. The assault's going to be the first play inside of the hill for the side of Cloud9. You're going to see the four-man hit coming from the side of Bowling for Evil Geniuses. You see the split, three going over towards that mid-cut, and then one pushing through the back of Bowling. Shots are going to be traded there, but Assault is going to be able to get the nasty kill there on Naos, and that shuts him down. But Evil Geniuses now has control. Assault got himself out of position to try to save his life, but now Parasite is on the hunt for him. You know, Assault does a good job of just staying alive for, of course, as long as possible until uh, Parasite's there to shut him down. But basically what happens there is he's trying to hold down his lane, but unfortunately, for the side of Cloud9, they weren't able to kind of hold every other angle. Assault can really only do so much when looking at a certain area on the map. So with that, it's going to be Cloud9 currently with possession for a moment. EG and them going back and forth right now. The MV4 battle is definitely raiding true as Parasite and Nameless cleaning it up at the moment. Priesta also drops Havoc getting involved in the kill feed. He's going to be on a nice three spree. So as the first set of rotations do conclude, it's going to be Cloud9 with a little bit of an advantage. They're going to be up 97 to 75. We talked about Nameless a lot yesterday and how much he was able to go off, but another person who was going off and doing everything on his own was Havoc as well. He was dropping high numbers in that slaying department. And it's just a question between between Havoc and Nagafin all the same time is just trying to figure out can these guys slay with the best one. Havoc has had that on display so far here at CWL Anaheim. Now we're going to be in our second set of rotations. Assault's going to be the player inside of the hill, but he will be taken out. That's by the hands of Parasite. Nameless now jumping off the top train, trying to get into this power position, but he's going to be shut down by two players from Cloud9. Yeah, when we do talk about this middle train platform, this hill plays a lot different. It's very hectic, a lot of gunfights going down, a lot of E-Rads as well. And that's exactly what we saw EG do when it came down to the first set of rotations on this particular hard point. We see Nagafin have a fantastic start, of course, in some ways kind of slowing down a little bit, currently sitting at negative 2, 11, and 13. But that's exactly what just one player can do for this team. You start to light things up, you start to hold down a lane, and you can easily grab a number of different seconds. And it really doesn't matter the hard point, at least when it's came down to Anaheim. A number of different teams have been showing up and really doing damage when it comes down to just about every single hill. But if there is one to highlight, it is going to be Barn. It looks like Cloud9 currently in possession of that hill, but only for the moment. EG trying to force their way forward. Havoc in a big gunfight versus Priesta, trying to find him. Priesta currently sitting at one shot, actually ends up getting found out. So that's now going to be the side of EG getting those spawns. And now it looks like they could even potentially take the lead with this hold. And the setup that they have going right now, you have Naga in position in mid-map, is sort of similar to how Epsilon plays this map. They have the one player sitting over there to stop anybody who comes to that push. Basically forces everybody over to blue, but now Naga falls, and you see the break start to come in, but the defensive play comes in from Havoc as he picks up a two-piece. Adding on to that is going to make it a five-kill streak, sitting at 20 and 10. One player to his left, he is going to get caught with his pants on. Exotic is going to be able to pick up that kill, but now you see a clean sweep of the players from Evil Geniuses, and just like that, Cloud9 takes the lead. You see Cloud9 immediately forcing their attention toward that next rotation here trying to make sure that, that while they do have control the next hill Priesta actually finds two nice play there but like I said Cloud9 trying to force the issue realizing that that scrap points over in Barn are important but they want to make sure they have control over this next hill that's going to be on Bike Street player number six Parasite the first one going to be inside of the hard point that's going to be for the side of EG so while EG took the lead for a time that's now Cloud Cloud9 starting to fire back Lead changes constantly. This has been a very heavily contested heads. Definitely budding so far at the beginning of this match, Dirk. Yeah, Exotic is on a four kill streak. He's going to be positioned over here in the middle of the map. Spots one top ticket. He takes him out. That's going to be Nagafin. Now one more player trying to play for the trade. It's going to be Havoc. And he whips out the E-Rad. And he's able to do Havoc dirty. Now continuing his streak onto six. And the setup from Cloud9 is great. But it's all going to start there with a big two-piece coming in from Parasite to break that setup. Yeah, you also can notice Exotic was double negative until that streak went on. So definitely play be watching out for exotic starting to show up from what i've heard he's had a fantastic tournament so far and 
Of course, the reasoning being why Cloud9 is currently in possession of that lead. EG trying to slim that one, just speaking of it, as it will be Nogfin grabbing those last few points. Rotation coming in toward baseball field, and here come the streaks. Aches using those, just trying to find at least a few players, trying to watch those anchors toward the back. Because actually three do go down, so nice play there coming in from the side of Cloud9. Parasite trying to find one. Exotic is able to find him. Nogfin trying to respond, but no, Assault has a fist to the face. Nogfin absolutely gets met with that one. And now it's going to be Cloud9 trying to rush their way on. This has been such a head-to-head -head battle. Gunfights going down constantly, many lead changes, but it's going to be Cloud9 who are currently in control of that one, along with the hard point itself. Control of the hill they are, and it's going to be Patrick Price inside. It's going to be Ax. He finds one on Nogfin who utilizes the FTL jump, but it's going to be quickly shut down. Now he's going to be inside of the hill, and you can see Cloud9 slowly starting to pull away here. Three players from Evil Genius just ready to make a push. It's going to be led there by Nagafin. He's on the ground, and Assault is going to be able to pick him off of the MV4. Assault finds one more as well. He was on a three kill streak before being shut down, but no way can Evil Genius get inside Cloud9, putting up a good defensive hold. Do they do? And of course, one player to be looking at right now from Cloud9 has definitely been Aix. 26 and 18 along with nearly a minute inside of that hard point. We talk about the communication, the leadership that he brings, and honestly, the, the talent that he's been bringing up for a number of different times. Of course, we do talk about Assault and Lacefield toward the beginning of this Cloud9 roster. Of course, in dropping Lacefield in some cases, along with Ricky, and brings on two other major young guns, some very talented players in the scene as well. Exotic coming from a number of different teams, of course, specifically like TK, as well as the Gosu crew recently. Priest as well coming from the Gosu crew, along with Panda in the past. So he obviously is a very good player when it comes down to kind of scouting out younger talent, and along with the gun skill that he provides, Aix really is the complete player. He definitely is. It's definitely a man's wing that you want to be under as the game does progress throughout the entirety of Infinite Warfare and as, as we head into World War II as well. But Aix is going to be the player doing that OBJ work inside. He has that Centurion ready to go, but look for him to bring that out when we do rotate over towards Barn, and they're getting set up. It's going to be Priesta in the back with the E-Ran. This is going to be a big, big gunfight going down. Nameless pops the camo. He's investing a lot into this. The reactive armor counter comes in, and and Priesta takes out Nameless. Beautiful play there from Priesta. The counter with the reactive armor works absolutely perfectly. But here comes one player from behind. Priesta trying to find this one as well. He's also able to drop him. And just like that, that's going to be the side of Cloud9 looking in a prime spot to potentially take this. But EG, they found a lane. They're trying to get inside. They're desperately trying to shut down the Centurion. And it looks like Nameless will be able to do that. Cloud9 now looking to try and retake potentially. Exotic sitting here over. Toward that silo side, tries to enter in while being one shot. Can he actually find this player toward the back? Just aiming at every angle possible. And it looks like the hill is going to be in control of Priest, avoiding a major gunfight. But EG is going to be there. Parasite finding that. And gunfights will continue to go down. Aix wins that fight. But Nameless still wants a piece of the pie. He wants to get inside of the hard point. Havoc will respond. A team nade comes in. Constant chaos happening right now in the map. And it looks like Cloud9 is going to hold on to this. They can't win off this hard point. They will get very, very close but they're going to have to be on that rotation, and EG, you have got to play perfect. Yeah, like you said, picture-perfect playing needed from EG here. Parasite's going to be the first player inside of the hill. Just two more seconds is what Cloud9 needs to take map number one. So far, so good. They're able to slay out inside, but now it's going to be Priesta trying to come in with the hot break. He's coming out from Ticket, but he's going to be shut down there by Nagafin. Assault's going to be able to find one of his own. Now three players drop from the side of Cloud9. Now Exotic is left by himself to try to contest, and if you're Cloud9 here, you make one last push of this, and you try to set up for baseball. You have a lots of time to give away. Actually, no, it's going to be 30 seconds. For some reason, I'm thinking the score is completely different. Assault utilizes that camel. They go in, but now the hold is going to be coming from Nameless. He finds another one, but the slide is going to come in. Priest there sees one more second, and just like that is going to be Cloud9 taking the game 250 to 203. That lead was just too strong. For the side of Cloud9, EG did all they could toward the end, but it was just such a massive lead built up for the guys on Cloud9 that EG really couldn't do too much there toward the end. It was a good active camel usage from Assault to try and get inside. He had some teammate support, but in the end, only two more seconds needed. It's incredibly difficult to get that one done. So major credit to the guys in Cloud9, though. And in quotes there, you have to put Aix as well as Priesta definitely doing the damage when it came down to that map number one as they obviously closed that one out, 250 to 203. Yeah, right down to the wires that that one went. And like you said, we have to highlight that play there at the very end, too, where Nameless popped that camo and it was counteracted by Priesta. That was just such a great play. Oh, yeah, the reactive armor definitely comes into use. He ends up finding, obviously, Nameless toward the side. And I think he ends up shutting down Nagafin toward that right side near back. Grandma's completely shutting down what could have been an EG spawn and manipulation. But in the end, it was obviously Cloud9 due to some major plays coming in from both Priesta and Aix at the most. 
uh, kind of solidifying that game for them. But also, we do have to focus our attention when it comes down to this next search and destroy. In some cases, this is not, and oh, excuse me, this hard point wasn't exactly what we'd expect to see EG take. So when it comes down to the search and destroy, I think they definitely feel more comfortable. And for the side of Cloud9, I would expect them to take this game mode. So with that, while I am, you know, it is a little bit obviously worrying for the EG guys to be down 0-1. This is a game where they definitely feel a lot more comfortable in. Yeah, I mean, they find some down 0-1 as well, and they're 0-4 on the day in map count. They lost to Search and Destroy to the Luminosity game, which is something important to highlight just because Luminosity Search and Destroy, this event specifically, it looked like it's going back to how it used to be. They've been very uh, inconsistent with it, to say the least. I mean, there was a time there where we started looking at Luminosity. Like, wow, these guys can play Search and Destroy pretty good again, but this event, it's looked a little shaky for them as well. So you have to think, what's the mindset of Evil Geniuses? We talked yesterday about Nameless kind of feeds off of that, that getting down and getting his team together and getting them hyped up. But let's go ahead and jump right into the box score from that last hard point game. See everything pretty spread evenly, but that money hill, we always talk about Barn, 93 seconds going towards Cloud9. Yeah, 93 to 51 when it comes down to Barn. I mean, that's obviously a huge hill to hold just due to the fact of the spawn manipulation that you can hold toward that back market side. Along with that, just the, due to the narrow entry points that, it, that Barn does possess, there's obviously three different angles that you can make your way through, uh, through hay toward back, uh, toward back fruit as well as coming in from field from silo. So it's a very difficult angle to kind of hold. That's obviously why it is such an easy hard point to hold if you are the defensive team due to those difficult lanes to enter in if you are on offense. But with that, of course, you can start to see a little bit of a breakdown for what we end up witnessing. And obviously, major players should be looking at 32 kills coming in from Aches along with 88 seconds, 1.39 overall KD for him. Not exactly what you're going to see always from Aches. But that's, like, like, that's what I said, Cloud9, they're here for a reason. They made this loser's bracket run due to all of them having their best moments. Yeah, then we highlighted Parasite there, 16 kills, 0.59 KD, not what you expect from him, but did carry the team in hill time as well. I think he sat at around 80 seconds in that one. But now we said this is the game type that heavily favors Evil Genius, but how are they going to be able to bounce back from this? It wasn't a complete blowout. I believe 50 seconds really is what separated these two teams. And it looks like for a second, the Evil Geniuses might be able to get the majority of the time left on that bike path. And continue on from there but it was all cloud nine in that hard point but now in the search and destroy evil geniuses their backs are against the wall We've seen them in a position like this before sort of similar to yesterday as well they're capable of doing it it's all going to be head by havoc and nagafin yeah i'm glad that you brought those two players up because i was getting ready to say the exact same thing when it comes down to evil geniuses two guys that you want to be looking at are both nagafin and havoc back in black ops 3 for their respective squads at different times and of course joining forces here at infinite warfare they were known for being absolute Dons when it came down to search and destroy, whether it was their clutch ability, whether it was their sniper rifle play, their aggressiveness when it came down to search and destroy. These guys know the game mode, they play it constantly, and they're always someone that's a major threat to walk around the map if you are their opposition. Players are getting loaded in here. Map number two is close to getting underway. It's going to be Cloud9 leading the series one home in a win or go home match against Evil Geniuses. Going to start off this one with the offensive team. I'm going to stay on board with Assault to see what he's going to do. Like we said, this is a man who had a slow start to the tournament on Friday, but ever since Saturday, he's been able to pick it up. See what he's going to do. He has that bomb in hand. I wonder if he saw the players coming from mid. He's going to get the call there. There's at least three players in the middle of the map, but they're still heading towards over to this B site. The flechette is going to come in. It looks like the side of Evil Genius is playing pretty passively for the most part, but of course, making that rush around. And it looks like they're going to kind of flip the spawns in some cases. Of course, this has happened in Search and Destroy, but kind of trading places in some instances. Eggs actually spawning Parasite. And Parasite just trying to make his way back. He actually ended up spawning Eggs toward that back rock side. So Cloud9 forcing their way through. Nameless now going to be on the pinch. None of the opposition players from Cloud9 know this is actually coming through. Nameless trying to find at least one. Tags him up, but can he finish this kill off? First Priest actually has two against him, and now Havoc is actually going to be on the defuse, and I don't think Cloud9 knows that he's there. They're trying to get here in time, and can they do it? No, it's not going to happen. Havoc is able to get the Ninja defuse in. A beautiful bait play coming in from the side of EG. They try and flank around, but Havoc is just too quick for them. A great round there from the side of EG. Heads up play for them as a narrow round goes their way. And that's where you know Nameless was just saying to Havoc, stick to the fuse, stick to the fuse, stick to the fuse. And he did just that, got it by a hair. But nonetheless, it gets them the round win. But give credit to Nameless, too. Stayed alive as long as he could. Havoc was ready on that one as those gunfights were going down and stayed alive just long enough. So now heading into round number two, it's going to be Evil Geniuses on the offensive. Nameless is going to be the bomb carrier here. One player is going to be positioned to back rock. That is going to be Assault with the MV4. It's very difficult to shut this man down when it comes down to this rock. Chest high cover, of course, decides to go and back up, wait for his, few of his teammates to try and retake this one. Nameless currently getting that bomb down, of course, trying to earn toward those score streaks. 
Decides to back up and reevaluate the situation, of course. If you look at the minimap right now. Two players on one side, two players on the other for the side of Cloud9 as they look to try and retake, trying to pinch this hill out. Nogfin's here. EMC in hand. It'd be a difficult gunfight to win. If he can catch him off guard, that would be great, but not going to happen. X quick to shut him down, makes quick work of him, and it looks like more shots beginning to come in. As now it's going to be Nameless left and up in a one versus three. The pinch works out successfully, but Nameless is trying to stay alive, but he can't do it this time. Too many players, too much health, and the fuse there toward Patrick Price as him and the boys from Cloud9 are going to respond back with a round of their own. Nothing Nameless could have done there. He was pinned in either way. He's either his options go to the wall run or try to fight the two players out there by crate. There's no way he would have been able to get out of his life by going into that back live area, as you can see here in the final kill cam. Tries to slide out and contest Exotic, and Exotic is going to come out on top with that one. So now series tied up one to one here in this search and destroy on Crusher. Let's see how the side from Cloud9 is going to be able to add on to this one. Exotic starting 3-0. The rest of the team doing pretty good as well. See Nagafen, he has no sniper on, so we'll jump back over towards Assault. Does have the bomb, the MV4, as per usual. Favoring over towards this B side, you're going to see the constant wraparound from the side of Evil Geniuses here. Bring up the big mini map so you can see where these arrows are going. There's going to be some gunfights coming down here with Player 2. Exotic trying to make his way back. Actually, a team kill there comes in from Havoc on Parasite. That is absolutely monumental when it comes down to this retake. Is there going to be a man down, especially on a flank like that? They give away their position, but Nagafin quick to even the man count back out due to Havoc's mistake. Havoc, familiar with that bomb set, of course, finding that defuse in round number one. A bit more of a difficult situation, but Nagafin continuing to do some damage. He'll actually find a few. That's going to be at least three kills, I believe, found in this round for him. And now Priesta left in a position to clutch one versus one. Priesta versus Havoc. Who's going to win this one? Priesta will come out on top. Beautiful play there from Priesta that's now going to grant Cloud9 and back-to-back -back rounds. A clutching situation, but Priesta is there to file, file through. And a great turn on. Nice ERAD shots there from Priesta. That was just a, a solid head-on-head -head gunfight. Which is won by the side of Cloud9. Swapping back over we go to the boys and evil geniuses. Going off to a pretty slow start. Nagafin currently sitting at 3-3. Three and three. Favoring over towards this A site. Looks like one player from Cloud9 is going to be there to try to contest. That's going to be Ace. The trophy system is going to come in as well as the blast shield notification. But Priest that's going to be able to draw first blood there on Havoc. And Ace gets out with his life. 3v4. EG on offense. They've got some control over A. But it looks like you got to get another flank coming in. And this time from Cloud9. Taking a page out of EG's book, but Nameless actually spots one. Can he get the gunfight? One narrowly is able to find that one on Priesta, but more gunfights are beginning to happen. Exotic and the boys assault as well, starting to respond. Nagafin now left in a one versus two. Player just to his right shuts him down. Nagafin continuing to do damage. Finds three in the last round. Can he find another three here? Another FTL question, jump. Is he look down? No. Player just behind him. And does Eggs actually shut him down? No, Eggs isn't able to find him, but FTL jump gets rocked from Nagafin. Who's going to win? And Eggs comes out on top. See the final play there. Smart choice to try to go with the FTL jump for Nagafin. Gonna maybe look for him to maybe regen his health just a little bit, hit that slow roll, and then come out and try to do that again. But nice shots coming in there from Aix. He's able to finish off what looked to be a little shaky there for a second. It's gonna be Cloud9 with the lead here in Search and Destroy. Three to one as they head back onto offense. We've seen him go to B twice now, but it looks like they might be set up here for an A hit. It's gonna be exotic. He's picking up the bomb this time instead of assault. And you're going to see the four-man push from Evil Geniuses go over to B. So that A site is completely open. Now they have the signal to get that bomb down. And Zonic planning in position for him to most likely try and move forward here. Nameless firing some shots there. Going to take out X for that first blood. So with that bomb is down, like we said, and shots continue to rain from above. Frista finding two there with the ERAD trying to make it another one. Nargafen ends up shutting down Assault, doing a great job in these last few rounds. Fortunately for him, though, not granting the victory when it comes down to the end. Now it's be left up to Priest at one versus two. A tall task and Havoc is there. He will shut him down for the final two, and that's going to be a defuse. So a nice responding ground there for the side of Evil Geniuses. And the two Search and Destroy stars, like we said, both Nagavan and Havoc, both going to be on top after the end of this next round. Yeah, you saw the experience with Search and Destroy from both teams there. As soon as it was in that 2v2 situation, every player tried to link up side by side. So excellent play there from Evil Geniuses coming out on top of those gunfights. And it's all thanks to Havoc's one versus two. They're down at the bottom under Skybridge. See how they attack this offensive round. Let's also look at the defensive setup here for Cloud9. You're going to see a 1-2-1 one, one split. 
One's going to be watching the cross over towards middle. That is going to be Exotic just trying to get the calls to see if anybody crosses over to B. But Assault is now going to get that call to say that these evil geniuses are pushing towards crates. And now you're going to start to see these arrows rotate around. We'll see how Cloud9 and Vince to try and engage this one. We've seen constant times from EG. They love retaking sites, but they also like pushing through them quite a bit. And Exotic making Nagafen pay. More shots continue to follow through. Nameless and Havoc responding for at least a couple. Nameless going to back up and get that bomb down. Aix immediately after, after hearing and seeing that bomb come up. Going to try and engage, but no Havoc coming from the skies. He'll find their final two. And just like that, EG come back yet again. Just when we think that Cloud9 can start to respond and start to get some life forward, EG respond with rounds and back-to-back -back ones as Havoc, speaking of back-to-back, -back, he'll find two kills. Nice little snap there coming from Havoc on that last player. Now it is going to be tied up at three rounds apiece. Guys are just tuning in. This is an elimination match. The loser of this will be eliminated from CWL Anaheim. Right now, things are looking good. It's going to be Cloud9 holding the series lead 1-0. They're looking very good in the search and destroy as well, but it's neck and neck. Two players going to be playing defense, going to be Nagafen and Havoc. All the way there in the back. We're now going to see a three-man hit coming out from the side of Cloud9. You see those arrows rotating for evil geniuses coming around to B. Did you looking to try and retake, but little do they know that Cloud9 is actually flanking right now. Parasite ends up actually killing himself, and before I can even utter the words, the round is over, and Cloud9 immediately sweep this one. EG completely getting caught off guard. I'm not sure exactly what happened to Parasite in that situation. Was actually able to uh, look at what happened. I'm not sure if he fell off the map or what exactly went down, but that was a round that was destined to go Cloud9's way. EG was set up pretty well, but in the end, Cloud9 just way too aggressive. Those ERADs constantly being a nuisance. We also talk about the payload progression inside of Cloud9. Priest currently with that reactive armor, I believe, Exotic as well with his payload. We'll see what EG can vent to do here when it comes down to offense. Parasite this time finding the first blood, making up for that mistake in the prior round. EG rushing right now through A. Salt is going to be there to try to back up with Exotic, but Exotic does fall. So now Salt is left last alive in a one versus three situation. So he gets this. He has the intel of where the player's going to be. He sees two cross over there. So now this is his cue to back up, trying to get positioning over here in A. But it looks like the Evil Genius's players are going to go ahead and wrap around to B, but no, they're going to hit the horseshoe. Assault is being pushed, and Havoc is going to come out with a kill. Now it is going to be tied up at four apiece. Back and forth we go, man. I mean, it's just at times you think, okay, EG is looking pretty solid at the beginning of the game. Cloud9 starts to respond. Maybe Cloud9 can take this game. But here comes EG back again. This just goes to show when it comes in a search and destroy, how even these teams really are, and I think to be honest with you, we also look at Exotic and Priesta from Cloud9, the two recent additions, both doing very well when it comes down to the search and destroy. Priesta currently leading as far as kills, not just for his team, but for the entire lobby at eight and five, and they've definitely made Cloud9 an even better search and destroy team. We'll see if that can grant them a victory and put them up two to zero if Evil Geniuses can respond here at one to one overall. They're going forward now. Priesta is going to be leading the charge. You see the wraparound coming from middle map. There's still one player sitting all the way over by B. That's going to be nameless. Now shots are going to be coming in from the horseshoe. It's going to be Nagafin opening things up with a big two-piece there. Now it's going to be up to Exotic and Assault to try to clutch up here in a two versus four. Exotic gets some shots down. They're able to get that, but the trade comes in from having Assault finds one, Oof. but Parasite is going to be able to clean that up. Looked like a little bit of a misplay there coming in from... The set of Cloud9 there toward you. Of course, the call out kind of comes in a little bit late, but Nagman's able to find two right next to each other. Maybe a little bit of a missed call out potentially from the side of Cloud9. Can't afford to make mistakes now. It's EG. Going to be up five rounds to four. How do Cloud9 Cloud vent to play this exactly as they will be on the defensive? Looks like they are going to be sending pretty much a. Uh, Full line, essentially, looking for A toward B. Of course, you see Nagafin there with that sniper rifle. Nearly takes the head off of Assault. Here's that bullet whistle right past his ear, and he's going to call it to his teammates, letting them know that this push is ready to happen. Nagafin feeling very aggressive right now with that sniper rifle. Has no issue getting in the face of the enemies as he wants to close this round out here and now. Reactive armor gets rocked. Nagafin actually skying above everybody else. Kills start to come in, and now it's going to be left up to Havoc. And a one on three has the reactive armor, but not a probably the greatest situation to try and use it unless he can find a few kills. Trying to escape, trying to go on the wall run. I believe he spots one player toward that side rock area. As this is going to be a very difficult gunfight to engage upon. As they're going to all rush behind him. And just like that, Dirk, we are going to a round 11.
But positive there, you see Havoc, he saved that reactive armor, which can be very big, and now you know that Priesta burned his. So this gives Evil Geniuses that advantage that they need. This could be where Havoc can start to hit those Warmers and lead that charge inside. But we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a round 11 coming up here between both sides of Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses. We'll see how this one goes. Our main player to watch here in this round 11 is 100% going to be Havoc, and they find themselves on the defensive side. Looks like we're going to see a pretty standard B hit, so we're going to come down to gunfights as well as that first blood. Going to play absolutely huge. Gunfights already beginning to happen, starting to engage. We'll see what exactly Cloud9 vents to do here. They're actually going to go and back up. They realize that EG has pushed way too far, way too aggressive. They both know exactly what's going on here. Cloud9 rushing to egg and EG trying to beat them there. This Havoc rotating around. We talked about how important this payload is for him. He needs to make sure he rocks the reactive armor, but he can't die in the situation. Rocks the reactive armor, finds one, but quickly drops. Assault is able to get the bomb down, but Nameless is now left in a position to clutch. And all to do, Nameless, to try and bring your team back into this one. The remaining round. Spotting one player through middle. Can he win the gunfight? Extra shots onto Iggs, but no, can't find that one. Not a whole lot of time, and Cloud9 just really needs to play pretty static. Make him waste time. Nameless has got to make his way forward. He just doesn't have time at this point. This doesn't seem likely anymore. And just like that, Cloud9 in round 11 will clutch it up as they're going to win this one six rounds to five and now be up in the series two games to zero. A rough one for Evil Geniuses losing that one in a round 11. Now they're going to be going into uplink. And we saw how their uplink played yesterday. It wasn't too bad. But one of the things that we have to highlight was that payload usage. They went a lot of the game where players just um, hey, I'm not going to use it. I'm fine. They just waited to the last second to even think about trying to use that, too. In my opinion, I think I see Cloud9 closing this out 3-0. I did, too, man. And one thing I want to kind of talk about through that search and destroy, that round 11, a little bit of a highlight to kind of talk about. Cloud9, of course, on the offensive, definitely not the side that you prefer to be on. It's a great play when it came down to B. They obviously realized the side of EG making a very aggressive play. They have no issue. You know what? As a team, let's make this way forward. Let's rotate to the opposite bomb site. And it obviously works out for them. Yeah, this is win or go home coming up next. We're going to have uplink for you guys between the sides of Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CWL Anaheim 2017, presented by PS4. We have a winner go home match all on the line here. Evil Geniuses needs to have the Miracle Reverse sweep against Cloud9. But with how Cloud9 is playing, it's going to be hard to do. I'm Dirk, joined alongside Landon. We're going to be bringing you guys the action throughout the rest of this series. And what a one it has been so far. Round 11, Search and Destroy, a hard point that came down to the wire as well. It's what we love to see here on Championship Sunday. Oh, absolutely. We love to see close matches. And fortunately, if you are an Evil Geniuses fan, these close matches, they're making you lose your hair at this point. I mean, we've seen, like I said, a round 11, a very close hard point as well. And with that, obviously, we do see Cloud9 up currently 2-0. to zero. But Let's go and take a look, actually, at some of the influencers when it comes down to the remaining of this series. It's currently going to be our, key, or our G Fuel key player matchup, Exotic, going up against Nagafen. Dirk, tell me, what exactly have we seen from these guys so far throughout this weekend? From the side of Exotic, you've seen consistency all around in every single type of game type. I mean, if you want to set the boundary as having a 1.0 is where you need to be in hardpoint, I guess you could say Nagafin is slacking. But just from going and watching the gameplay, he's a very unselfish guy. He's going to be the guy who's a lot of the bait. He leads the charge for the side of Evil Geniuses a lot of the time. He's sitting at a .95. But then you look at the SND KD. That's going to be the one that's leading. And we always know with Nagafin, that is a statistic that is going to be his highest and then an uplink 1.07 something to highlight from yesterday the plays we saw from Nagafin gunning up into the enemy base and slaying out sort of like a Nagafin that a monster Nagafin we'll say that a slaying Nagafin in that sense was doing an excellent job of being the lead block for his team you know one thing that I actually want to point out from Exotic as well is that this time around actually this time nearly last year as well I was actually casting over at Exotic at a local Canadian tournament called EGLX where he was actually kind of becoming a rising star and through that he ended up finding, finding Holler uh, currently a player for the side of ERA, and due to that, he ended up joining alongside of TK. So this guy is a, is a new, he's an up-and-coming up up and coming guy, and now he finds himself on Championship Sunday here at CWL Anaheim, placing, or potentially playing, for top four. Just goes to show, man, if you have gun skill, if you work on your craft and you do it enough, it only takes, I mean, you can do it in just a short period of time. That's exactly what Exotic has done. Yeah, you definitely can. Let's go ahead and break down that whole entire S&D match. We have the lovely box score provided to us here. Going to see that first round went to Evil Geniuses, and then the next three went to the side of Cloud9. Evil Geniuses takes two, and it just kind of bounces back and forth from there. And in the round 11, it was Cloud9 coming up on top. And you see the man Priest that dropping 11 kills, a 1.57 KD. And then Havoc, he was the guy that we were watching a majority of the time. Nine kills for him and a 1.12. He's been doing a lot for his team these past couple series. Indeed he has, and of course, like you said, players we're looking at here at the bottom. Priest at 11 and 7, 1.57 KD, and Havoc as well at 9 and 8. Did as much as he could, but in the end, it just didn't equal out to enough of a result. So with that, EG, you're down 0-2. Neymar's probably trying to do his best to give his team a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, uh, a talk in some cases to try and give them a little bit of momentum when it comes down to this uplink. But when it comes down to Frost, expect a lot of ERAD play. I've seen quite a bit from obviously Nagafin as well as Havoc uh, from the EG side, and of course you got to be looking at Exotic as well as Priest of the new additions to this Cloud9 roster with those ERADs as well. That's one of the things too. They brought in Parasite and place a study to be that vocal leader, be their shot caller in a sense. This is also a guy who can go on tilt pretty quickly once they start losing. Fair to say, yeah. The way I look at Parasite, I mean, anybody watches at home and those eight streams, he's always the guy that's the target for anything. And he has a short fuse when it comes down to it as well. But when he starts to lose and you start to see him sort of fold, I feel like Nameless is more of that guy who brings that group back to try to get to that level head as they say, regain. That's what yeah. they need to try to do here in this uplink. But from what we saw yesterday, we saw that the biggest weakness and one of the biggest things when it comes down to uplink is those payloads, not using them effectively. I mean, we saw Parasite go without using an overdrive for, I think, two minutes there left in the second half, which ultimately kind of costed them the game in a sense as well. So that's going to be one of my things to look out for is how well are they going to utilize those payloads. Yeah, the active, active camo, the overdrive as well, definitely two major influencers when it comes down to the payloads like you just mentioned, Dirk. Those can nearly guarantee you at least a one or two point play when it comes down to it. But like you said, when it comes down to the composition of Evil Geniuses, this new addition of Parasite, how does he kind of, in some cases, influence the roster uh, now, of course, kind of coming in for, for study. And what I was actually able to witness throughout the EG decline in some cases with study being on the team is that they would, like you said, go on tilt pretty easily. It seemed that really it's almost like that Nameless was being a, a great vocal leader and doing his absolute best and Havoc was trying to be as positive as possible but it was just that there wasn't another vocal leader it was like there wasn't another veteran to kind of stay alongside him and say you know what everything's going to be good Parasite of course in the past hasn't had the best 
uh, track record with kind of being in that particular role. But I think being alongside of, of, of course, an old teammate, a friend, and, um, and Nameless as well, kind of going back even to Black Ops 2, previous teammates who've been playing for a very long time, two very long-standing veterans who've played with each other in the past. I think they do work together well when it comes down to that chemistry factor and kind of being, in some cases, the lead veterans, the lead roles uh, to this team. Yeah, I mean, it's worth mentioning, too, Parasite's transformation here in Infinite Warfare. He was one of those players who, at the start of this, was on the hate train. He didn't like playing this game at all, and he let people know it. But now, with the league coming up and everything like that, he started to put a lot of work into this game, and now he's finding himself on the spot on the roster for Evil Geniuses as well. It's going to be definitely a player to watch here, but now, our Evil Genius is going to be able to start here to try to make that reverse sweep happen. We'll find out. We're going to stay on Bora Nagafin, the guy that we looked at in our G Fuel key player matchup. He's going to be pushing over here towards Ice Cliff. It is early. Plays being made toward that drone. Aix shutting down Parasite early on, but Nagafin trying to get involved with the kill feed as well toward that ice side. Drone already going to pick up their pass coming in, and Cloud9 already working on that communication. X goes for the one-point play, and within the first 20 seconds, we've already seen a score on the board. That one going over to C9. Now we talked about Precent Exotic being the young guns and how aggressive these guys play. This is definitely a map that favors them 100%. So look for them to try to abuse that on the side of evil geniuses. Going to get that drone pushed up. Exotic utilizing that high wall run. Should be able to get out here and get the one-point toss, but he's going to get greedy. Go for the two, and it is going to pay off. Three points on the board within the first minute of this match. EG, man, you'd think that they would try to come out with some fire, but Cloud9 has done the exact opposite of that. They have completely come out and surprised. Priest up finding two, finding three. Beautiful plays coming in from the side of Cloud9. That pass getting ready to most likely come in from Assault, or he might use those players as lead blockers. Assault wants to go all the way. Here comes the two-point jam, and there it is. Cloud9 now up five points to zero. EG already starting to show signs of difficulties. And Exotic finally ends up dropping, but just like that, I mean, this is already a three-possession game, and the game just started, Dirk. Yeah, it definitely did. And now Evil Geniuses are going to be pushing onto this drone site. Three kill streak for Nameless. Some man you need to see go off as well in the slaying department. He's pushing straight through blue, but shots are going to be coming from both sides. He will be dropped. But now Parasite picks up that drone, trying to get off the one point toss. Not going to be able to do that. So now Priest and crew are going to be attacking from blue. Well, that rhymed. Uh, they're going to be attacking from this cliff site right here. And now Aix is going to be leading the charge for Cloud9. TD is. Priest that tossing that drone down. Aix ends up falling. Exotic. Still here with the E-Red, able to find that one, but of course the push will be ended pretty quick. EG actually getting some nice spawns there over toward that back red side, and that's actually going to lead to them having a pretty pretty quick scoring opportunity. Question is, is Clennon realize how fast this push is happening? Nagafin finds two, player being extracted is Exotic, can he, can he fire it in? But no, that one just goes over. Wherever's the rebound at, it's actually going to be there for Assault. So a huge misplay from the start of Evil Geniuses. They get blessed with a beautiful spawn toward that side red. They make a push happen, but the scoring opportunity is not there. Cloud9 still up five points to zero. You can see Nagafin starts to get things going, picking up a nice two-piece airman. Now three players are going to be dead. Aix is going to be last alive. And now this is where Evil Geniuses really needs to capitalize on those players being down. You see the drone finally being picked up by Havoc, and they're just tossing it forward for yards. But those individual one-on-one -on -one gunfights are going all in Cloud9's favor. You see the nice little bait and switch coming here, and the pinch comes down to shut Havoc off the cliff. Now Priesta and crew are going to be rallying this drone through red. Currently sitting at 10 and 6 is Priesta. We've already seen some nasty stuff from him oh, in this Priesta. game. 4 and 22 is though it's going to be spamming there, but Priesta does fall off the map. Sad but true. EG now with some signs of life, some positives there coming after Priesta falling off the map. Drone reset. Havoc now with the drone in his hands. He'll quickly drop Parasites there to try and rebound there potentially. And he'll also fall as well. So gunfight's going down inside of blue. Nameless has no teammate support, and this is not looking like a push that's going to happen. But Nameless actually finding one, finding two. Give me those. Tries to find the third. Here comes the beat down, but can he find it? No assault will make him pay for it. Just when we start to think the EG has something going for them, C9 is there for the response. Assault will fall off the map, but it doesn't matter to worth the exchange because the defensive play will come in yet again. Now, such a risky play because Assault tries to get the beat down there on Nameless, knowing he has that extra armor with the drone in hand. And Exotic picks up a two-piece. Assault's going to be there to clean up another player from the side of Evil Geniuses. Patrick Price aches, trying to push that drone up forward. Exotic is going to have some shots tagged up onto him, but now you're starting to see Cloud9 get hot once more. They're getting that aggression going. Assault might be able to get a one-point toss-off here, but no, it is going to be intercepted there by Havoc. Havoc 
known for his volleyball skills, but he's got some basketball skills as well, able to get that block off, and now EG might have a run to go forward with 49 seconds left, and unfortunately that drone ends up dropping off the map, and Nagafin's now left in Cloud9's base, but what does he know? The drone's being moved forward. Priesta might have an opportunity for the one-point play, but can this one be stopped? Havoc yet again, back-to-back -back defensive plays, stopping two points in different occasions from going down. Great plays from Havoc, but can this time EG get a scoring opportunity on the board? 25 seconds left in this first half. Yeah, they're definitely just going to need to at least try to get a one up here. We're on board with Aix. He's going to be able to take out Parasite there. Nameless is going to be the last play for Evil Genius just to try to contest anything going on this drone. He spots Exotic. We see the teammate support slowly starting to come in for the side of Cloud9 as Nagafin is working his way around the wall run. But now it's going to be four players there for Evil Genius. But surely they're not going to be able to get a one point toss off here to close this one. But they might just do that priest that tosses it up and it is going to hit. That's going to be six to zero going into the second half. Great plays there from the side of Cloud9. EG, they had their moments. They had number, a number of different defensive stops, but in the end, we saw the rally of scores that ended up dropping. And of course, occasionally you're going to let a one point toss slide here or there, but Priesta finding the nice buzzer beater toward the end. So, with that, six points to zero. We'll see how EG can respond potentially the last five minutes of their run here at CWL Anaheim. See what Exotic and Crew is going to be able to do. Player eight, right beside him, is going to be Priest. That is duo. Going to be able to find two kills there, make that three. Now Nameless is going to be left last alive. He's able to take out a couple. He finds two, but one player comes from behind, and now he is going to be shut down. It's Assault and Crew. The drone might roll off the map. It looks like it's going to be stationary for the time being. Just waiting to slay out the opponents who are going to be pushing over from this blue side. He spots two, hitting that lower wall run. He's able to take out one, but now Exotic and Aix are going to be there to try to clean up Nameless. But another two-piece coming in. You need Nameless to start wheeling. He's currently on a three-kill streak, sitting at 18 and 13. Nameless has been the factor in a lot of their series, the reasoning why they've had a whole lot of success so far at CWL Anaheim. Havoc now with the drone in his hands. Lead blocker going to be nameless. How long can he stay alive? Actually shuts down Assault. Parasite is there as well. Can a scoring opportunity happen? Can EG finally get on the board? They want the one, but no, they want the two more. And just like that, Havoc will respond, making defensive and offensive plays happen. But that was all due to the play of both nameless and Parasite as well. Nameless now on a seven spree at the moment. Nameless is continuing to go forward, but he is finally going to be shut down. Now it's going to be Nagafin with Parasite and Havoc up to make a push towards his subway. Kills are going to be traded there, so now it's a three versus three. Nagafin going to decide to wrap back all the way over to the ice cliff. The drone is going to be tossed forward. Just needs to make sure that doesn't fall off the map, but now it's time for him to slay. He takes out Exotic. Parasite takes out Assault as well. They're in a good position to try to get a score here, but they're taking so much time trying to pick. Do we want to go through red or are we going to push through subway? It looks like the final choice is definitely going to be sub. It is. Shots coming down through Robot Bay, and it looks like it's going to be an advantage toward the side of Cloud9 for the time. Players being dropped over toward that side ship. One player toward the bottom. That's actually going to be nameless. A little bit of a nice wall run there coming in from Assault. X picks up the drone only for a time to try to toss that one down. A nice melee, actually, coming in there on Havoc. Moving his way forward. X does it yet again. Makes the offensive plays happen. It looks like they are going to have a free two-point play. Cloud9 yet again getting inside EG's base and making them pay for it. And on the overextension, looks like there's also gunfights going down. Priest is here. He wants another play to happen. He actually dropped back the wrong way. And he'll make he'll actually end up dropping in that case. But either way, solid plays coming in from the guys on Cloud9 being aware on both ends of the map. Yeah, you see the difference in play style between these two teams. Cloud9 is perfectly okay with letting that drone sit, slaying out. They have that confidence to win those gunfights, and just like that, another clean sweep of Evil Geniuses. Priesta is going to be rocking that overdrive. The players are going to be spawning up on base, and Mama, there goes that man. He gets the one-point toss in. Score is now 9-2. to two. Beautiful play there from Priesta. 9-2 to two advantage right now from the side of Cloud9. They have taken the lead, and they have not looked back. Exotic now. Drone in his hands. Streaks start to come down to try and help Help with the assistance of that scoring opportunity. One player here, that's going to be Havoc. Priesta shuts him down, and Exotic going to go for the play as well. And Exotic fires in the one-point toss. 10-2, to two, Cloud9 with the advantage, and just under two minutes remaining in this second half. EG, your backs are against the wall. They need to score eight points in the span of one minute and 40 seconds. The streaks are starting to rain in from the heavens. That's coming in from the side of Cloud9. Priesta. Now he's going to opt to use that bump armor and there as well. The drone is going to be tossed all the way back towards Exotic. He's going to be the one to retrieve. Toss it down to Robot Bay. Nagafin's going to come around. He's going to withdraw first blood there. And now two more kills follow that. Pushing this one forward. 
Here they go. Nagathan goes in for the dunk. Mamma Mia, this is where things are going to start to get interesting. One minute and 15 seconds left. EG down, but they're not out as of yet. They still do have a few payloads left to work with. But Parasite now can actually respond for a few. Centurion coming in. Parasite now with the overdrive has to get forward. Run, my friend. You've got to get going, Parasite. You need to actually be act as a lead blocker in some cases. Here comes one. The toss coming through. The assistance is here. Havoc needs to go big, and he'll be able to make that one happen. Here comes the two-point play. Havoc, for a moment, was the only player alive on the map, and they are still in this one. EG, you're not done just yet. 45 seconds remain, and Cloud9 trying to hold on to the slim lead, but here come the streaks. They start to come down. Three drop yet again from Cloud9. Here comes the push from Nameless, needing the assistance of that lead blocker, making his way now through robots. He's got some support, and here comes EG. Here comes the two-point play, and they're able to fire it in. EG now only down by two points. 23 seconds left, but Nagafin actually has the drone come down. He has no teammate support. How does he play this one? Nameless is coming from behind the active camo gets rocked assault might just try to go on the wall run and it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen eg you've got to shut down assault immediately because he's just trying to stay up here comes the drone it's going to come down is there anyone in play for it and it looks like no no one's going to be there and cloud nine will hold on just at the end eg you made it close you did your best but the lead was just too strong as cloud nine will walk away with the 3-0 sweep and exotic Finding the two in the round ending kill. That was another questionable overdrive coming from Parasite. I mean it is, but it's like I don't know. I, I really don't know what else he could have done in that play because of course they get that they get the two point play out of it in the end. But realistically, Cloud9 just does a good job of getting the drone in their hands. Of course, the active camel gets rocked. I think that was a beautiful play from Assault there at the end, just using the active camel. And also a heads-up play, because had Cloud9 not had that lead, or since they do have that lead, he actually gets to save the active camel in some cases for a defensive use. So honestly, active camel, great play there from Assault at the end. But yeah, had Pierce maybe saved that, it could have maybe worked out for a scoring opportunity. Of course, we'll never know, but obviously Cloud9 comes away with the 3-0 three, three sweep. Every series was very, very close. Throwback Hardpoint finished at 250 to 203 in favor of Cloud9. We went to crush their search and destroy. That went all the way to distance to round 11. That one finished 6-5. to five. Then Frost Upling, it looked like Evil Genius was about to send that one into overtime, but Cloud9 was able to come up, and like you said, you highlight the defensive play coming in from the side of Assault, using that camo and hitting that lower wall. But I still think back, I just think Parasite could have had a better use of overdrive. You can pick up that drone and get into Subway just by running by yourself and get there quickly. Usually you want to see that overdrive go through and then just set you up for a scoring time. Because you saw him, he used it. When it was still active, he threw the drone on the ground. You need that overdrive guy to have that drone to try to push in for a dunk or at least a one-point play. Yeah, of course, he tries to get out of that position. Of course, we can try to rewind that one and maybe go back and try to dissect the gameplay. But in some ways, EG, they were on the back foot. And honestly, they did a fantastic job at trying to make the comeback. For a moment, I thought it was going to happen. Nagafin Havoc, they were slaying out. Nameless was doing it uh, prior as well. So with that... Pretty interesting game, but in the end, it's a 3-0 sweep from Cloud9. Cloud9 is going to continue on, and Evil Geniuses falls short, and they will be eliminated from CWO Anaheim. But guys, when we do come back, we'll have another great game. It's going to be Cloud9 taking on Splice. Don't go anywhere.
Right, Cloud9 has made a massive loser's bracket run after underperforming very heavily in the group phase, going one and three. They found themselves having a very tough run, an exhausting run that challenged their stamina. And now they find themselves playing against our CWL Stage 1 victors in the name of Splice, one of the strongest European rosters we've had to offer in the Call of Duty World League for some time now. By no means a beating, but Cloud9 just every time just seemed to have that edge kind of coming over the likes of the guys on EG. But of course, you take a look at the bottom of the bracket as well. Splice just hot off a victory versus the guys over on Enigma 6, who actually got a pretty nice upset versus the guys on Optic Gaming, winning that one in the game five, which I know you actually casted that one as well. Right. So if we know anything, pretty impressive victories from both of these squads. Splice, top team from Europe. Cloud9 looking to try and make them their case as a top team from North America. It should be a very interesting match as we load in here toward our first one. It's going to be Retaliation Hardpoint. Something else i got to point out here for the Cloud9 roster. I mean, Aegis has been looking for a tournament like this for some time now. Finding the roster changes of bringing on Priest and Exotic has brought new life to this Cloud9 roster. They feel as though they've improved match after match throughout this tournament. Uh, Priest is definitely proving himself amongst the pro teams. I mean, in their previous matchup, the three young evil geniuses were nameless had a lot of negative things to say about Cloud9 online. So that has to feel good, and they're going into this series with that on their backs. There are indeed shots already being exchanged as time starting to pop up, as of course Bridge will be our first hard point to be looking at zero, exchanging some shots from afar with that NV4 in hand. But Cloud9 is the team currently getting the points on the board as they've just got over the 12-point mark. So Priest opens up with some positioning with his MV4 on the side of Bridge. Gets a little bit of damage, used as a great zoning tool, but in the end, Spice is still able to bounce back to find some time on the board. Cloud9 now spawning up from Cathedral is actually sending three of their four players straight through Bridge. And it looks like they're going to opt to send the fourth player there as well, straight into the gunfire of Mad Cat and Zero. They don't stand a chance. Excellent shots down there by the team. A great team shot to keep Cloud9 on their back foot. And Splice showing their aggression right now. Zero doing a great job. Jurt as well. Currently both on a two spree. Those quickly end, but however, they do a great job at holding down the last few seconds. The NV4 is coming out to play. Mad Cat and Bance combining for a few, and it looks like that rotation toward Lower Street is also now going to be won by Splice. Bance in a solid position, expecting players to come from market, but it seems as though most of Cloud9 will be coming in from the hotel section of the map. Cloud9 does not have very good presence around Platt here. You can see Bance trying to make a difference after they lose Jur, but the Cloud9 players are flying out, and the aggression is on. The pressure is up. Bance, though, still stays alive throughout it all with great support from Zero and Mad Cat as he plays his life. I want to know really quickly, obviously it is working out for the side of Splice right now, up 54 to 14, but currently we see Splice rocking three NV4s. I want to know in your opinion, Fox, how does it actually work an advantage for them? Do you think it's a smart strategy to have for this squad moving forward? Keeping these players at the distance is something that the NV4 is great at, but when you're in a situation like this where they can come flooding out of, of uh, platform here from hotel, you're going to want someone like Jurd to open things up with that multi-kill. The K-Bar being such a massive threat, both close range and mid range, and that just kind of answers your question there, Landon. Yes, the NV4s help, but the K-Bar still has its place. Indeed it does, and of course rotation now coming in. Cloud9 finally able to get some time off of that first hill. A nearly perfectly held bike street there coming in from the side of Splice, but of course rotation coming in toward Cathedral, and this is when we start to see the money hills come into place, and Cloud9 banking off of that opportunity. We'll see how Splice looks to try and retake. Jert, like we said, that K-Bar in hand. Just trying to find that first blood, trying to find a piece into the setup. Actually, a few start to trade. Jurd and Mad Cat responding for a few. Jurd trying to find the third in the setup. That's actually going to be oh, a kill going big. down on Assault. A huge break, and now it's all going to be left up to Priest trying to stay alive before I can even switch over to him. He drops as well. A successful break coming in from the boys on Splice. King Jurd for these last two hills has been a massive threat and thorn in the side for Cloud9. Splice doing, doing all they can here to hold the remaining time of that hill, but Cloud9 pours straight through, takes it right back, and they're still fighting it, though, but you can see with Cloud9 outnumbering them, Splice realizes they need need to get over to Broken as quickly as possible. That bike path spawn spells trouble because they can be pinched from two different sides on their way to this part of the map. Jeez, rotation coming in now toward destroyed building. Cloud9 building back a little bit of that deficit. Priest, of course, being here early on on the rotation, trying to bank his team, to buy actually his team some time as three do fall. Assault is not going to be in a position to trade quickly. 
as he's gonna have to wait for his teammates to get a little bit more support coming down from that bridge. But Splice getting closer toward that 100 point mark, doing a great job of locking things down. And the one reason why they're doing such a good, or having such success is because of Jerd's early fantastic start, 10 and five for him. And he's about to make it 11, five potentially. And there it is, he's not missing right now. Has to pull out his fist just for good measure as his teammates are gonna pick those up as well. Splice look to be having some early success. And that's all due to the nice plays of both him and Mad Cat. Double positive with the most hill time in the lobby. Jared is contributing quite a bit to this splice possibility of a victory here against Cloud9. We're getting towards the end of this first rotation, though there's still a bit of hard point to be played and enough time for Cloud9 to come back. But this is a terrible deficit to work with, especially with Zero shooting like that. Flying straight up into bedroom for the close range double kill with the NV4. And that gives them even more presence around this hotel hallway and they get the initial time. Indeed, this is going to be some sporadic time you most likely think when it comes in a hotel hallway, but Cloud9 playing this slow, just trying to work every angle. They're almost acting like this is a search and destroy round by how slow they're trying to take this one, but First Blood trying to make those come, trying to break the setup of Splice, but that's not happening at all. Three do drop, and Priesta now left toward the back to wait for his squad. They're going to have to try and reinitiate this one in a different way. Priesta coming on the flank, but Bance is ready and waiting to be here, potentially the Shut him down. Pinch not oh, going to go caught. through, but here comes the Cloud9 players trying to enter in every second going over toward the side of Splice. Up to this point, Jerd wins a huge gunfight. And Hotel Hallway, this isn't a money hill. This is where we should be seeing a lot of sporadic time, but Splice absolutely showing their worth. They are flexing their muscles right now as they have just taken over a 100 second advantage. Priest, even playing this game, man, what's going on? You would think that that victory over Evil Geniuses would have him heated up, would have them with the momentum coming into this series, but right now, Splice is just choking the life out of this team. And of course, you can't take anything away from the stage one playoff champions. These are championship caliber players, and they are showing it right now as they lead Evil Geniuses by 120 seconds. Bance is in a great position with the NV4, acting as the front line and playing off of that information to the rest of his team. Indeed, communication, the gun skill for sure is coming out to play. Jared Bantz responding for a few, almost like they do it on the daily as Bantz absolutely starting to light things up. 13 to nine on a four spree. Jared, 15 and eight, actually just recently dies due to the nice nade coming in from assault, but this one is starting to get out of hand. 40 more seconds needed for the side of Splice to close out this game. And it looks like the side of, side of Cloud9 just need 40 more points just to get closer to that 100 point mark. Honestly, in your opinion, Fox, what does Cloud9 need to do to kind of bring this one back? I know it's not even looking like it's possible, but what do they have to do? It's really just looking like they're losing crucial gunfights. You see that right there. He gets turned on and just taken down so easily. Splice is just outgunning them. Jared was doing it alone at first. That We see Zero sort of coming right back into this game with his KD, and it's just enough for Splice to come out on top here. When you're down to the top four teams, you should not even be seeing stuff like this. Jared on a four spree, potential 100 point club in our midst. Only 20 more seconds needed before this map number one does come to a close. We'll see if the side of Cloud9 can try and bait something. Assault finding to zero with the NV4 toward the back. Shuts down Exotic. And just like that, we'll see if Cloud9 can start to enter in. Here comes the push. 25 seconds left on Lower Street. As Cloud9 are going to need to play nearly perfect if they want to at least get closer toward this game, get closer toward that 100 and 200 second mark. X locking down the remaining time inside of Lower Street, but it is going to be the side of Splice. One player toward the back near that bike street. Definitely disrupt the setup. That's actually going to be zero. Waiting here, it needs to shut down X. Able to make that one happen. Nice win for him. No more time for Cloud9. The rotation comes in. We'll see if Cloud9 can try and break this setup. We've seen something similar to this in the past where Cloud9 actually had a massive lead in a hard point on this very same map and let it slip. I think it was by more than 100 seconds, something like that. But we're seeing Splice just with a commanding lead and a good position to close it out. And maybe it's just Cloud9 having a weakness on this map. I'm not entirely sure, but here it is. Splice is on the offense. They open up with two kills. And again, only Assault is able to find crucial engagements that they need to keep the objective. Cloud9, you're starting to get some positives here and there, but it's just not looking likely anymore oh. at this point. Assault is holding, the, holding down Fort by himself here, Landon. Indeed he is. Him and Exotic on a combined streak of six. 20 seconds left inside of Cathedral. Of course, Cloud9 trying to capture every single point, every single second that they can, but here comes the last push coming in from the side of Splice. Assault, Assault is here. He'll find both of those. Five spree for him, but they've got to get the rotation going. Nobody is here in Destroyed Building, and it looks like it is going to be the side of Jerd. Currently holding down inside of mid-lobby. Shuts down one. Currently looking as he's 
nearly double positive. Rotation comes in and Zero is here. Can anybody from Cloud9 enter in is the question. Yes, one gets through, but Zero is there to shut him down. The side of Splice is looking greater and greater. Only a few more seconds left, and that's going to do it. Splice takes game number one at 250 to 159. Splice bullied Cloud9 all throughout map one. Priesta could not fire back onto the roster. Outside of those opening engagements, he was getting caught on flanks. There was just not much that could be done for many of the players on the side of Cloud9. We saw some crucial kills out of Exotic from time to time, more so from Assault. They were both working together very well when they were on Cathedral, but it just wasn't enough to keep them in the game. And we see Splice just outclassing them that map. That was brutal. Yeah, I think we could say Splice outclassing them and then in quotes, Jur, 21 and 11 to finish off that first map. The man was absolutely starting to destroy with that yeah. K-Bar. Of course, we did talk about the beginning of that game. MV4s to K-Bar. Three MV4s, one K-Bar set up for, of course, the side of Splice. I asked you, would it work out for them? You said yes, and it clearly does. The K-Bar and the MV4s rating true when it came down toward the side of Splice, as we can obviously take a look at what is going to be our next map. Breakout Search and Destroy is going to be our next map. This is one of the newer maps in the Search and Destroy lineup. We're seeing it quite a bit more this weekend throughout the tournament than we got to throughout these uh, the Stage 1 playoffs and such. But these teams have had ample time to look over it, theorycraft some ideas and strategies going into it. So I do look forward to seeing how this how this comes about. I think the cloud I don't think the cloud nine is out of it just yet. I think that if they lose this map, they're definitely out of it because I don't see Splice dropping an uplink to them. However, this map could go either way. I definitely agree with that. Like I said, Breakout Search and Destroy, of course, one of the newer maps added to the uh, CWL rotation. And, uh, you know, we've obviously seen a number of different plays, teams having success, teams not having success due to the overall play rate that they've had of it coming into this particular tournament. So, and, and uh, we also have to mention as well, new Cloud9 guys, how have these guys kind of adapted? How is the chemistry working for them when it comes in a search and destroy? A lot of additives kind of coming into this, and what I was actually able to witness in that search and destroy that Cloud9 recently played versus Evil Geniuses, that came down to a game five, or excuse me, that came down to a round 11, excuse me, got game fives in my mind. I would love to see a game five. However, <laughs> came down to a round 11, and honestly, Cloud9 wasn't looking that great. The new really actually choked the lead toward the side of Evil Geniuses as well. So this isn't really necessarily a mode that they feel the most comfortable in, I think, coming into this. So I don't know. I think I got to go with Splice on this one. Well, while we're getting these players settled for map number two, let's take a look at the box score from that hard point. We saw that uh, Splice kind of ran away with it, as you can see there on two, on uh, the broken hard point is where they got a lot of their time. It wasn't until later on in the game where Cloud9 was able to have the combination of Assault and Exotic contribute and mount up a decent amount of time on the Graveyard Hill. But still, with Splice having such a massive advantage on two other hills on this map, one being Hallway, <laughs> where it shouldn't have been that big of a deficit, wow, man, that's you can see why they took over that map. Yeah, that's absolutely absurd. Hallway, that should be a contest-heavy hill in Cloud9. You only get one second on that one. Oh, Landon. Not Landon. not enough. Not nearly enough. You see what I see next to Jur's name? I do see that. You see, you see that KD right there? I do see that. That that's, is a 1.91. That, right that is that is 21 and 11, that's my a, friend. That's a whole lot of kills and a very little amount of deaths. That is indeed. Nice place, obviously, coming from Jared. And honestly, I was taking a look at the uh, the final scorecard there at the end of the map to take a look at every single player. I think there was, like, Mad Cat, who was, like, I think only had, like, a few engagements. Like, he didn't really have to do too much throughout that entire map. It was almost like the, the coach showed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, hey, guys, is that, okay, that angle is held. Is this, okay, this one's held, too? All right, cool. I'm just going to stay back here. I don't, I'm just going to do my job. I have nothing to worry about. So that's just kind of how it goes when you got teammates like that, like like, like Zero, like Vance, and like Jared. These guys can absolutely slay with yeah. the best. And, and it leaves a lot of free time for you kind of just to twirl your thumbs. And what's going on? I don't, I don't <laughs> there know. were some moments, though, where he was able to provide oh, a great supporting yeah. role, especially when we were down towards the bike shop hill uh, on Lower Street. He was providing some great support for Bance, who was sitting inside the hard point with his NV4, and we mentioned just how crucial those NV4s were as zoning tools to allow Jared to get aggressive and really be that frontline type player. So now we're loading into Search and Destroy on Breakout here, guys. Again, this is an elimination match between two incredibly strong teams this weekend in the tournament. 16,000 differential in dollars that they win if they can get past this stage of the tournament. Top three moving on to top two in the grand finals. Let's see how it goes as Cloud9 is on the offensive. Indeed they will assault with that bomb in his hands. It looks like Cloud9 tries to make their way here over toward B. Well, if anything, Splice is ready. Jerd with a nice little line set currently. It was looking over top on Medbay. Erad shots, just trying to zone out the players from Cloud9. That first blood going to play very influential. Assault nearly getting out of that window, but Jerd's still holding this angle. So at least going to gain some information, some clots for his team let them know guys they're still here they're still trying to push this one but the first blood needs to come in and zero responds there nice sniper rifle shot coming in there from him toward the back lines 
as Cloud9 still with to try and engage in a three versus four. Yeah, this is a, a help me moment for Jared. He knows he can't really go anywhere without being taken down. Luckily for him, though, Zero is in a great position to cover anyone that might want to challenge him. He'll have a little bit of support. Aix finds the NV4 kill onto Bance, and that goes untraded. Cloud9 getting great map presence around the middle of the map here. They could set up for a flank onto Bance, and that decreases the amount of support that Jared has, despite player five, Madcap, being just behind him. And Zero, Jared. Both playing different angles, but both being nearly as effective. Madcat responds with one more exotic. Now the last alive, trying to challenge Zero. Gets up close and personal as, as Hill shut him down. One versus two would be a one versus three if he can clutch this one out. Finds Madcat, but Jer just needs fight. to try and stay alive. Punching his way, realizing that he has just won this round for his squad. Doesn't need to do much. Held that angle very well over top med bay. Gained a lot of information for his teammates and they were able to finish off the kills. It's really funny that Jer did a lot by doing nothing. Exactly. <laughs> for a lot of that round. And that doesn't just, show up on the scoreboard either. Right, just understanding the value of his life right there. Jer definitely playing it very smart and comes out of the round with a win without a kill or a death. So great play out of him in round number one for Splice. Now it's Splice's turn to be on the attacking side. They won the defensive round. Let's see what they decide to do as they work towards showers. Jared playing passive, but only for a moment. Gets very aggressive and shuts down Priest, a player toward the back. It's going to be Aix holding that wall run. Cloud9 still not trying to back up too much, just trying to hold their ground for the most part. Player number one, Exotic, just around the corner. Trying to listen for that potential bomb plant that could come in. Player actually zero, has that sniper rifle still in hand. Nearly misses a shot. Nearly finds a shot on Aix. There he is, right oh, between connects. the window. Nice shot there coming in from Zero. Can he find the second? But no, Assault's going to be there at one versus two. Now another position for a C9 player to clutch. How does Assault try and play this one out? Receiving shots yet again. Vance has picked up that sniper rifle. Trying to tease the likes of Assault a little bit, but not a whole lot of time for Assault. He has to make the way forward. He has to try and clutch this one up for his team. Goals in the wall run. Catches Vance off guard, but no, Vance is going to be there. A nice attempt coming in from Assault, but just couldn't do enough. One versus two ends up in a zero versus two as Cloud9, speaking of that, are now going to be up two rounds to zero. Vance reading that play pretty easily in the two versus one situation. And just want to give credit to Splice for the quick as they take their 2-0 lead at the start of this S&D. We're seeing this European roster make it to Championship Sunday for two major tournaments in a row. That's something you really got to respect them for. So as we move forward here, we want to look to see if Cloud9 can do anything. Because in this matchup, they're definitely the underdog, despite their great performance in the loser's bracket. Splice is uh, typically seen as a much stronger team, and rightfully so, with all the things they've been able to accomplish this past month. First blood to Jerd. Jerd finds that one. Bance also relating to communication. The push going inside of B right now. Or inside of A, excuse me. Players coming around from that B set. Looks like the side of Cloud9. Trying to challenge from a different angle. Zero. Gonna have an opportunity here. Actually has the EMC out, and that's not most likely going to work out for him too well as he'll also drop it in. Unison, Madcap finds one. Priesta finds another. Now he's left in a one versus two and three rounds straight. A C9 player has le have been left in a position to clutch when he hasn't had a man count advantage, and we'll see what Priesta can try and do in this particular spot. Seeing shots from Bantz, but he'll get team killed. Not team killed, excuse me. Gets double teamed there by the likes of Splice as they're now going to be up three rounds to zero. I'm surprised to see Priest slide through the door to chase this kill that he couldn't finish. You would think that you would expect a second Splice player to be there, but he seemed really eager to finish that first one. And, you know, if you're not looking for individual engagements to try and pick them apart there, you're not going to clutch the round. So Splice, of course, is going to bite right down on that, play their man advantage and take him out. Splice finds himself up 3-0. Three and nine combined for Assault, Aix, and Priesta. Four and two right now for Exotic. They definitely need to turn it up when it comes down to the slang. Looks like we're going to see a pretty quick round here. A lot of gunfights starting off already. Exotic, Jared already being involved for their respective squads. Three versus three. Both teams holding their angles right now through mid. They know they have him trapped. They are well aware that he is trapped in that corner and isn't going anywhere. Jerd and Madcat with the pinch, pressuring him enough to close out the round. So you see the coordination from Splice paying off in some major way every single round. Jerd, see what he does here. And the final kill cam finds one. Great use of the FTL jump. That's the that's the definition of what Jerd's career has been as a Call of Duty competitive player, pro player as well, is that aggressiveness that he likes to show, constantly being in the face with that Eran, the only man who hasn't even died in this match. He's currently sitting at 6-0. Got to show him some love. 
He's also getting close, only 100 points away from some streaks. We'll have to see how the likes of Cloud9 tries to play this as they are definitely going to be on the back foot, but it looks like they might have some positives for right now, making a correct <laughs> site choice, making their way here over toward B. We'll see how it works out for them as it most likely try to get Assault on the bomb right now. If you're just tuning in, an excellent team effort has brought Splice up 4-0 in map number two of this series. Jared is reaping most of the benefits from it as he has yet to die. But a lot of credit definitely needs to be given to the rest of the roster as well as they're coordinating this beautifully. But now they're set for a retake, and it's a four versus four retake as no one from Cloud9 has given up first blood yet. Zero. Spawning the back line of Cloud9, referring that one to his teammates. And here come some of the kills. Assault, Jerd, both being involved. Madcap on that bomb right now. Aches toward the backside. Exchanging some shots forward. Jerk continuing to try and rush in some instances. How do the kills go? Zero finds one. Madcap finds another. It's now left up to Aix. And a one versus two running his way around the tank. Can he stay alive? Able to maybe find one, but no, it's not going to be oh, home. A zero no. finds that one with the EMC. And Madcap is just going to have enough time to get the defuse off. Five to zero for Splice and Cloud9. Absolutely not having any response whatsoever. The pistol dive from zero onto Aix, and he comes out of it, I think only being hit one time out of all of that hip fire, to which you gotta be fair, the NV4 is a long range weapon, but still, that close and you're able to put down that many shots, you gotta connect with more than one. Splice is looking demoralized at this point in time. The only redeeming factor is that we're seeing Exotic has access to the FTL jump, but that's not nearly as impactful as a 7 and one jerk <laughs> on the enemy team of Splice. What can you do here, Landon? It's a question to be asking right now. I think it's fair to say, what can you do when you've got these guys going off like they are? Bants. Let me get this bomb down here, but here come some of the streaks. See yeah, how this ends up rock working out. FTL jump I think ends up getting rocked. Exotic actually finding 2 0 there with. The pistol work as well. Two versus three. Man count advantage and a retake needed for the likes of Cloud9 to at least get one round on the board. Of course, it's first to six. This could be the final round of this map number two. If Splice can get their way, but Priesta is here. Jerd now, one versus three. Thankfully, he does have the time on his side, but we'll see how he vends to play this one. E-Red in hand spots one. Trigger discipline not going to be there just due to the fact of how many players are there, and he will drop. So just like that, that is finally going to be Cloud9 getting a round on the board as this one's now going to be still in favor of a splice, but this time five rounds to one. Cloud9 has to be very happy with Exotic right there. He's the one that opened up that window of opportunity for the team in the face of score streaks. He gets the he sees the call on his mini map that the Trinity Rocket is coming down. So he decides to dive in and look for that player that's stuck behind his computer calling in the Rockets. He finds a double kill before being taken down by zero, but that makes the retake that much easier for his team. They have to come through and find a three versus two engagement rather than what could have been them being outnumbered in opposition. Talk about Exotic, his great play in that last round. He's currently sitting at 7-5 and five overall. Tied with Jerd for the most kills in the lobby. We'll see how this round does start to play out. Round number 7 coming up. Splice still with a huge advantage. C9 need to be perfect if they want to take this map number 2. Jerd continuing to hold that angle that we talked about even in the first round. Instances of that assault actually able to shut him down with the nice nade. And it looks like it's all going to be left up to assault. Where are my teammates at? And how can I try and stay alive? One versus three. Assault, you need to play this smart. He's got the bomb in his hands. That's the only positive he's going to have as he gets shut down. And just like that, that's going to be Splice, who take map number two in dominant fashion, winning this search and destroy on breakout. Six rounds. Just cloud nines. One. This has to hurt for a lot of the fans at home that are waiting for Aix to just have that shining moment again, right? He comes into championship sun Sunday, takes down so many big teams in that loser's bracket run, only to get beaten this badly by Splice. And yes, we hold Splice to an incredibly high standard, but this is just brutal for a team that made it to championship Sunday. And this just looks like a totally different team as far as Cloud9 is considered from that last series versus EG, now looking at them versus Splice. And that's not necessarily due to Cloud9's play. That's just due to the level of competition that gets raised when it comes down to a team like Splice. I mean, getting this roster together, getting Zero and Bants in the same team, in some cases, kind of like the EU Bash Brothers, along with the great slung of Jurd and the great leadership that Madcap provides. I mean, this is the definition of a European all-star team, and they are performing like it right now as they're going to be up two games to zero and at this point cloud nine 
I mean, it's just hard to predict what they can do at this point. I mean, it's just it's, it just gets to the point where you see a certain roster who just looks as good as this, and you just you really don't have an answer as to how to respond. You just got to play your game, I guess. Right. I mean, they, they lose those first two maps to Splice, and then they're going up against them what is arguably their best game mode. That's not going to be an easy victory for sure. But, guys, we're going to cut to a commercial break, and when we come back, we will find the conclusion of this elimination matchup between Cloud9 and Splice at Call of Duty World League Anaheim. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone back for potentially the final time here on the Bravo Station. We've currently got a matchup going on between Splice and Cloud9. Splice currently leading up 2-0 to zero after a dominant search and destroy Victory Fox. Of course, this next uplink could play differently, but based on our predictions, based on how everything is looking, it is looking to go all in favor of Splice. But of course, we do have a few players that we need to be looking at heading into this next uplink. Right, so we can take a look at our key player matchup if you want to see the players you would expect to contribute meaningfully in this series here. We mentioned Priesta quite a bit, one of the newcomers to this Cloud9 roster. Both some pretty impressive stats, definitely noteworthy in the hard point, S and D and uplink. And on the opposite side, we have Madcat doing just the same, except he's just a little bit higher in uplink there. And I feel like that has to be part of the reason of Splice's dominance in that game mode. So in this G Fuel key player matchup, let's look to see Priesta wake up in this uplink here because he has been slacking in both the hard point and search and destroy and I have to imagine that that's what Cloud9 has had to bring him this far in the tournament. As far as Madcap, him and the rest of the Splice roster just needs to continue doing what they're doing and this should be a swift 3-0. Yeah, this is what we talked about honestly with a lot of the Cloud9 players is that the addition of both Priesta and Exotic was to try and provide more fire, firepower to this team yeah. to try and you know kind of align themselves along with Ix to try and get a better team along with him. So with that, it seems that he really wasn't able to show up versus the amount of Slayers that Splice does, prov Splice does provide. So 
I don't know. We definitely need to see a big performance. I definitely agree with you on that. Priesta, and to me, also Exotic, needs to show up big if we expect to see Cloud9 at least force in that number four. Yeah, and if we look at the Spice roster, I mean, these guys easily match up so well against North American teams. They're in an excellent international roster, and picking up zero only pushed them over that edge into championship caliber players. So, well, a roster, a championship caliber roster. Let's take a look at the box score for Breakout Search and Destroy here. Jurd putting up the most noteworthy performance out of everyone in the lobby opening up the first round without any interactions whatsoever he was able to clutch it up and win in the end and then he just continued to body everyone from <laughs> cloud nine in front of him throughout the map look at that score line cloud nine got one round just before splice closed it out yeah it was just definitely not looking good it was a 5-0 start for the guys on splice and c9 just nearly able to get at least one of those rounds but of course we do talk about exotic did have a decent performance when it comes down to his lineup seven and six 1.17 overall kd for his lineup but in the end obviously not enough and didn't really lead to a whole lot of rounds if you are the boys on cloud nine so if you are if you are aches right now of course you've got three younger guys with you of course assault competing since advanced warfare but more more recently uh, you know exotic and priest are kind of coming up in the competitive scene what does it say to his teammates at this point? You know, how does the communication go? How does he act as that, that as that, that leader in some cases coming into this map when their backs are against the wall? It's happened quite a bit so far throughout the losers bracket. They know they can do it. It's just versus this, you know, I don't want to kind of put, you know, organizations that in past, but the final boss that Splice currently is, I just I don't know, man. I don't know what he can say to kind of bring his team back when the slime power just has that, to be there. I would imagine that right now this is where you see one of the values of Aches really shine is that he knows how to talk to his teammates in tournament in tournament situations when they're down. Not so well in practice where he's, you know, a little bit more hard headed, a little bit more aggressive. It's these moments where he understands how delicate, you know, a player's mind might be, especially the new up and coming players. So this is just a situation where he tells them, let's calm down, complete the reverse sweep. We didn't come this far just to get blown out like this. And they just really got to do what should be an incredibly difficult task for a lot of the teams that are even still in this tournament. Absolutely. Of course, let's kind of focus our attention toward this next map, exactly what the motivational speeches of Aix are, are kind of being. Is it will be left up, and we'll obviously see how the gameplay does add on to that once we get into the lobby. But it is going to be uplink on Precinct. If we know anything about this map, expect to see a lot of MV4 play as well. But we did talk about the major performances from Cloud9 that need to kind of show up. Who are we going to be looking at from Splice? Because I know we're going to see a dominant performance, but who is that going to be from, you think? One of our two key player matchups that we saw was Mad Cat, and that's someone that contributes in respawn game mode time and time again. On the side of Cloud9, though, I feel like if Priest can wake up here, that he can, his aggression, his pressure, will be enough to let the rest of Cloud9 play around him and at least put some points on the board. But still, Mad Cat, I think, is going to be more than enough for Splice to just close it out here. We'll have to see how it goes. Indeed, we will. So as the players get ready to load up in the lobby for potentially the final time in this series, can Cloud9 bring it back to at least force and map number four, or will Splice close it out is the question. I mean, we can kind of go over predictions. I think we both know what we're going to say. I'm <laughs> personally going probably Splice to close this one out in a 3-0 fashion. I think we're going to see a pretty dominant victory yeah. when it comes down to this uplink. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Is there any reason to vote against Splice here in this uplink? I mean, the, the, the writing's on the wall. They bodied them both the hard point and the search and destroy. Jurd seems like he's just having the time of his life every engagement he finds, winning so many gun engagements that are just one-sided in, in every regard. And, I mean, Cloud9 just doesn't look like they're ready to shoot back, especially with Priest underperforming the way he is. I just don't see much of a chance on the side of the blue players. We talked about Priest that needs to show up. We're going to hop on board with him to start off this first half of some uplink. Priest up making his way early on into this middle side. Of course, it's a pretty typical play from the, from the guys on Cloud9's side. Shots being exchanged early on as Exotic finds two, Assault finding another, and Zero also drops as well. A quick and a very brief four down for the side of Splice. It looks like C9 tries to make their way forward. Shots being exchanged from different angles. It looks like a couple, a little bit of a team kill coming in there from Exotic on Aix. He's going to realize, I need to pick up the drone. I need to make something happen. Forcing that one back here toward that alley. Eight and six for the oh, side assault. of Cloud9, Aix and Priest are trying to make Ooh. their way forward. And Assault is able to find two. Exotic with the play. The dunk comes in from Cloud9. That's all due to the nice bleed blocking coming in from Assault. Assault right here leading a lot of what came from that drone play after Exotic team killed Aix. It should have been a lot easier, but thankfully they have a powerful slayer in the form of Assault, who has established himself as one of the best Assault Rifle players in Call of Duty over the past two years. Now, let's take a look at Splice. As they clear the Cloud9 players out of their base after those two points are put on the board, and look to set up an offensive front towards gas station. Dejured with the drone in his hands. Shots being exchanged oh, actually fans. from 
over in construction. And Bance oh, makes Bance. quick work of all four of them. Jerd going to toss that drone down. Says, Bance, you deserve the score, my friend. You found the four. Here's the two-point play. A nice and great response coming in from Splice. But immediately, three go down. We'll see how Cloud9 actually tries to respond. Offensive play after offensive play. We'll see if Cloud9 can actually try and get a point on the board. Assault now with the drone in his hands. Can they get it forward? Priest to being the lead blocker this time. And just like that, Cloud9 respond with a two-point play of their own. I thought for sure we were going to see Vance on his five streak go towards the objective right there, but then wrapping that drone over away from him. He's completely out of the fight, removing him from all of the engagements, and now he finds himself shut down by a tactical and an assault double kill. We see Cloud9 with two points on the board and some map positioning. If they can grab the drone and make something of it, this can be huge, but assault has been the best escort on the team, and he's the one with the drone in his hands. That's why you see the manual pass come in. As you do on a force spree right now is Assault. Priest was on a force spree as well, but here comes the push. Cloud9 not able to make much work of it, and Bance is there grabbing that drone. Coming at a ticket, players just toward the right of that orange angle is going to be Priesta. Decides to back up, and it looks like you're going to see Bance actually rock. Potentially a few of the score streaks there. Scorchers coming down, making quick work of Assault. So one of the defensive players from Cloud9 being dropped. Drone being reset as now we're going to see that one be put back in Bance's hand. We saw what he was able to do as a lead blocker. We'll see if he can maybe try to get this one point toss off. Here it comes. Can he fire through? And yes, a very difficult toss made to look very easy there from Bance's. Now it's going to be Splice, who only is only down by one point. Sinking the one point play right there. This is a much more back and forth uplink match than I expected here. We got Mad Cat in position with the NV4, though. Not much of a response from Cloud9, except the response that they have is going on respawn. The status around here on Statue is not looking good for Cloud9 as Jordan Mad Cat runs straight through it. No one's shooting back. He's just able to do as he pleases. And so Zero is going to take full advantage with these score streaks leading the charge and try and get some points on the board. Indeed, Bance at least able to find one with those. Here comes the push. Mad Cat ends up getting dropped from behind. Bance is here, but no, he's not able to find the kill with that. Drone now going to be put in Jerd's hands. Needs to try to go for at least a one-point play. Can he get this one up? But no, the stop is there. Assault is there for the defensive play, and he just needs to escape with that one. And it looks like it will be a successful defensive play. At least able to escape with that one for the time. But three go down. We'll see that drone be pushed forward yet again from this China side. Mad Cat now. Oh, drone no. in his hands. Zero leading the way, and it looks like this is going to be a two-point play, so a nice rebound, a play made for the guys on Splice, and if they can maybe get this drone out through middle, this could be another two-point play. Cloud9 failed to reset the drone. Instead, they wrapped it towards gas station into the face of a wipe that was incoming from Splice, and now this puts Splice in a great position to try and continue that, because Mad Cat has statue and only one player in the way. He should be able to win this gunfight, should they challenge. Indeed, able to win that one on X player just toward his right, nearly shuts down Assault as well, but thankfully, he will hold his life only for just a few more seconds. Priesta now coming off the respawn. 40 seconds left in this first half of uplink. And Cloud9 definitely has held their own for right now. Priesta, positive one, 10 and 9 right now. Quite a few engagements for him. But on the other side, a side of Splice now trying to get the objective move forward. They all fall. Three go down. Zero still holding this angle near stairs. And X will shut him down there in the end. So with that, 20 seconds left to work with. We'll see if Splice can try and get a buzzer beater off. It's going to be Jordan now with that drone in his hands, making his way here toward that side construction. Has a few lead blockers to kind of guide the way, but he'll also drop. Player now, zero. Jordan in his hands. Can he make a play happen? Here comes the toss. Is that one good? Yes! A great scoring opportunity there from Splice at the end of zero. Nails in the buzzer beater, as that's now going to be Splice at the half. Up six points. Yeah, this four. is still looking pretty good for the side of Cloud9. The fact that they're keeping up this much against such a strong uplink team has to be has to be pretty impressive to them as they get into the second half. I think this is a very winnable game for them. I'm feeling much more inclined to give them the win here than I was before this game started. But still, I think that Splice is going to remain consistent and they should be able to pour it on and increase that deficit as the sides switch. As we also take a look at that payload progression, Mad Cat, we talk about him being our... G Fuel key player from the side of Splice. Very close to that overdrive. A very major payload when it comes down to uplink. Holding a nice side angle there for the guys on Splice to try to make that push forward. Bant actually escapes past one player. Here comes the drone, potential toss, and yes, that one flies through pretty quick. An early scoring opportunity in this second half coming in from Splice as they're now going to be up three points. Clear out the base, but Jared still has statue positioning. He's still going to be outnumbered by two players that have a height advantage. So as soon as he pushes up, you can expect Zag to win that gunfight every single time. And now Cloud9 is awarded statue and L-Wall control. 
As you see Mad Cat cowering in the corner because he knows that he can't challenge alone. Aix catches him, though, before he can get away and regroup with Splice. Bans at zero, try to respond. Assault is doing assault things with the NV4 before Jurd promptly responds. A lot of early aggression coming in toward the second half. Four minutes remain, and potentially the last four minutes of Cloud9's life when it comes down to CWL Anaheim. Three go down for Splice. Jurd now the last alive after Priest is nice two-piece. Exotic as well on a two-piece, excuse me, on a two-spree. Both the young guns doing exactly what they need to. We'll see if this can maybe turn into a scoring opportunity from the guys on Cloud9. It should be at least a one-point toss. And then Nine Zero has anything to say about it, but the nice one-point score will come in there from Assault. Granted, all four will drop, but it's a worthy exchange because the scoring opportunity will come from it. Now only a one-possession, two-point game in favor still of Splice. Cloud9 fans, you can exhale. They're looking much better in this map than they did in the first two. Even though Splice is so dominant in this game mode and respawns in general, they might be able to put up a fight and take a map here. They're slaying so well. Priest has finally come online. He's 15 and 15, but I think that he's had much more impactful kills so far in this map. Now, we see Zero, Bance, and Mad Cat trying to make some moves up the middle of the street. This is where they've gotten a lot of their points this half. And here comes Zero just above and a beautiful dunk coming in yet again for Splice as they're now going to take another two-point play by a nice front coming in from the great slaying as well added on to that. The great teamwork coming in is actually Jurd going to spot all three coming in from that side street. He's going to call that one out to his teammates. Two drop, now make it three drop. Here Ooh, comes FTL jumping. Oh no. Jurd continues to destroy as that's now going to be a four spree for him, a five spree, <laughs> along with a two-point play for Bantz. A number of different numbers going in Splice's way, but the most important one is the fact that they are now up six points. Mad Cat's trying to increase that one. Here comes the overdrive, the seventh spree for Bantz. Everything looking good for Splice, How along does this with the happen? kill as well. Mad Cat finds that one, and now it's 13 to five in favor of Splice. The moment that things are looking over, Okay, Cloud9 is looking competitive. All of Splice just mounts these ridiculous kill streaks and chaining in those dunks over and over again, burying the Cloud9 efforts here in this uplink. Zero looking to force the issue as Assault is trapped in this corner by himself, and this is looking scary. It's, it's crazy what can happen in around 45 seconds to a minute with this Splice roster. A matter of moments, you can see what this European squad can do. Mad Cat, yet again, making his way with the drone. One player right in front of him, zero. Of course, you can see seven spree for him. They're going to give that drone to Jerd because he'll put in the two-point play just when he needs to. Zero, rocking the reactive armor. He's got some streaks. He's on an eight spree. We have to stay on board with him off of the streak usage. He'll find two. Mad Cat finds the third. Bance now with the drone. He has active camo, but he might not even need it for this play. 17 to 5. In a matter of moments, this Splice roster can come alive. This is exactly what makes them one of the best teams in the world, as they are now only a minute and nine seconds away from closing out this series in a hot 3-0. A white flag is waving from the Cloud9 side. This is not looking good at all. 12 points in around a minute. It's not going to happen. Oh, there goes another play. <laughs> this is just, it started off so well for Cloud9. At the beginning of this half, they, it's like this is doable for Cloud9. I want to see how many points. It wasn't Splice looking great. They were still got. losing, but it looked like they stood a chance more so than the first two maps. And we're just seeing, we're just, we're just going to watch Cloud9 increase that scoreline over and over again, pad those stats in the kill column as if they already needed, as if they even need to do it more. This is absolute destruction, an incredible sequence of kills, a number of different streaks. The numbers definitely in favor of Splice, but the most important number is the fact that they are now going to be in co full control of this map, winning this one at least 18 to 5. I'm not even sure if they'll even add on more to this. Jurd is not happy with 18. He wants at least 20 points. Here comes the final scoring opportunity. Will it go in? And no, but that's okay. It's totally fine as we're going to see Splice come out with the 3-0 victory over the likes of Cloud9 as Splice continue to stay alive. Splice once again bodies Cloud9 in the end scoreline. That was over after the first half ended. I thought for sure that Cloud9 was going to make it competitive as they were able to keep up a little bit with what Splice was doing. And in the end, Splice just buried them and crushed them. And now they move on to their next opponent. And it looks to be Epsilon. LG was able to 3-0 Epsilon. And they're going to be meeting them for what looks like a little bit of a rematch from what we saw at CWL Birmingham. Yeah, rematch of CW Birmingham, as well as also a rematch coming from this tournament as well. Of course, already faced off against each other, but you got to imagine Splice having a load of confidence coming 
from this matchup versus Cloud9. We're going to take a quick look here at the final ending scorecard here from our Bravo station. Of course, Splice taking out Cloud9 in the 3-0 fashion, winning that retaliation hard point, 250 to 159. Breakout Search and Destroy, another dominant win. They win that one at six rounds to one, and then the uplink out of nowhere came a number of different kills, a number of different streaks, and they closed that one out 18 to five, an overall dominant series from the guys over on Splice. Yeah, that was just not close at any point in time up until the first half of Uplink where Splice just ran away with the game. So excellent roster coming from Europe here under the Splice organization. Look for them to do some damage over the next few hours in this tournament on Championship Sunday. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Call of Duty World League Anaheim. This has been Fox and Landon. Make sure you tune into the Alpha stream where you can catch the remainder of the action and see how this excellent tournament concludes. Thank you very much and have a great day.